Hey guys, Gaz TV here with another Path of Exile video. In this one, we're going to have a pretty long session. It will basically be me doing this intro, and then I will continue to stream like I always do. And then I'm going to do a little bit of an outro at the end, I guess. And that's going to be this entire video. So it's going to be a couple of hours long. Stay tuned for it. It is a play with me dominating blow, where we're going to follow my build guide for 3.21 Crucible League for dominating blow. The gear and everything that I will be using will be... League start approached. The only difference is that I will want to try out the Vol version of Dominating Blow. Um, so we're going to go through a couple of preparations that you can do before we start this. I will only be using this as my initial starting item. And that is the Vol Domination, which is new for this specific league at the time of this recording. You can buy this for a Chaos, maybe an Alpha Corp when you start. You can find Vol side areas as you level to even find one. It's not something that you need, but I will be trying it out for fun. However, if you want to prepare some leveling gear, if this is not your first character of the league, what you can do then is go through this little list. Vault Dominating Blow will be the first one. Then you could get yourself a Ring Vault's Crest. Now, what the hell is a Ring Vault's Crest? Ring Vault's Crest is a ring that goes for an entire Chaos Orb. We're not talking about like a, you know, normal ass fucking Chaos Shards. It's an entire Chaos Orb. Super expensive. This is probably one of the most broken minion leveling items in the entire game because they do so much damage, you'll laugh at how much damage they're doing. One of these rings and you're pretty much golden throughout the entire campaign. Wanderlust is a great option to level with. It gives you freeze immunity and movement speed boost from the very start. Try those out. And then you can go for a gold rim. It's just to cap your resistances or help with resistances so you don't have to think about them as you're playing through the campaign. And for this build, Bright Beak is a great option, which is looking like this, which goes for an Alcorb. They have very high attack speed, which is very comfortable and nice when it comes to the Dominating Blow specifically, but it also gives some resistances. There are tons of other options that these are the generic, super low-budget versions that you can go for. Um, so that's, as mentioned there, but I think these are the most important ones. And then obviously the Tabula version. So that's basically the TLDR of gear preparation that you can do to level this character up as a tweak. Now, next up, uh, like I mentioned, I will only be using this. We're going to take a look at the build guide. There are, in this specific guide, there are two versions. All of my build guides, which you can find in the guide hub listed in the description below. There is all my build guides, the old build guides. There's tons of other guides such as crafting, gearing, money-making strategies, even anime guardian guide, for example, as well. So in this list, there is the dominating blow necromancer. Now, in this specific version, there are two low-budget styles. All of my build guides focuses on low budget, and there are two low-budget versions. Now, one of those versions is a uh, low body poison style, and the other one is a physical style. One of them is tackled in detailed description in the guide, whereas the other one only has the PUB links. We will be following the physical version. Here is the PUB for the physical low budget necromancer. And in here, you will have the six link, which is the links you'd want to use if you use a uh, tabula. Do keep in mind that with these amount of links, you're going to have a pretty high mana cost. So balancing how many links you have versus how much mana you have unreserved is a pretty much a balance act. Getting a Gemini Claw will allow you to get mana on hit later, but this is not something you'll have throughout the campaign. So we're not going to tackle those things. So gear is something we'll be disregarding completely. <laughs> Thank you, Bringer Spess, for the Welcome prime. So appreciate that, sir. So what we'll be looking for is the leveling style. Uh, in this information, there's a couple things you can go through, and this is tackled in the guide, but more in detail here in the PUB. This is saying that you can have some extra, such as Holy Flame Totem with some of Phantasms, or add a Coal, out of Fire, out of Lightning, whatever you have access to. Frostbank Flame Bash are the one of the two from Mobility. Um, and then there's the main damage. Uh, it could be Freezing Pulse, Arcing Surge, Frost Bomb, as you get uh, to the point of level 8, which you could start using SRS with either Melee Splash or Infernal Legion. Depends on the colors you have access to. Level 12, you can start using Absolution. And then level 28, we can go Dominating Blow. I know, thanks so much for 10 months. So this will be a stream. I'm I'm live during this recording. So there's going to be some conversation with the chat. There's going to be, uh, you know, people like uh, Einar and Bringer Spass coming in with subs. Uh, but if you'd like to level up the Dominating Blow, you can do so in this video together with me. We're just going to crack into it. And we can also make a note that the uh, act leveling stuff's in here. All the gems and all the information you have here is available or us and whatnot that can help you it's up to you how you want to play it it's available and then on the tree you have a very easy way of progressing where you're going to go with the tree throughout the actual skill tree Buren with the five months five gifts even thanks so much dude and devon here with nine months all right let's crack into it 
First things first. Welcome Leveling tree here. Great. We go to skills. Here we Act go 1. Again. Again. Now I know what I'm looking at. Put that on the other side of the screen, and then we are going to level up or create a new character. <laughs> Lemon Key with the Prime Sub, thanks so much, sir. Appreciate well, that as well, man. Is this going to be a two, three, four hour session of just saying thank you for subs? Or what are you guys up to? Uh, domination. This is possible to play as a guardian as well. I just prefer to play as a uh, necromancer for these type of builds personally. I think that the layer's defense is just way more stable. Yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. <clears throat> the dead will soon rise for me, not against me. Kind of awkward, uh, making a recording like this, but uh, we'll see. I'll try to comment a little bit more than I normally do of what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, to help the people out to level as effectively and as smooth as possible. I think that would be a good way to do it. Obviously, if you have like Rigvol's Crest or any of the other leveling items, you'll be leveling way faster than what I will be doing, obviously. Versus a normal league, you can face tank uh, this guy. So what I normally do is I run all the way up to the um, to the doorway. Not that it matters too much. And then I'm just face tanking mana flask when I'm almost zoom. Wait for two hits of damage before you pop the life flask. And rinse or pray till he's dead, basically. Second hit, life flask. Second hit, life flask. And that's it. Normally you loot everything, and the reason you loot everything on the leak search scenario is to get more scroll fragments and other types of currency to work with. My tree is telling me to spec this way out here from the side. There are some variations to that that you could do. We will not be doing that. And then you just vendor everything. You could keep one of those ones if you so choose to. And then we're looking at buying a one. In this case, we have red, red, and a blue with for two scrolls that's a bit expensive however that is the right colors to get melee splash going for um the srs at level uh eight however we're not gonna do that instead i will just equip this wand and then we check the skills in the actual pub and it's telling me to use freezing pulse arc and search frost bomb oh, we, have, we, have we don't have access to all of that right now which Fine. means that i will take out uh let's see freezing pulse from here and then I will do a search with I type MN November November. The reason we do that is because the lowest tier movement speed boots is called runners. And if they are sellable or sold by the vendor, they will show up. Now that I have that, I can put in the arcing sorry, the freezing pulls. There are different ways you can level, by the way, with these skills, but I'm just gonna take this very easily and very slow. Yeah, well. There's for example the frost the, the storm blast mines you can utilize as well, works perfectly fine with that as well. Now, in this case, we have a freezing pulse with Arcane Surge Link. I'm not really going to bother much more than that, just to show you the generic approach to this. We will be using zombies when we're leveling with this, though, as soon as we're able to keep them alive. Another quick note you can uh, learn from this is that uh, when you get to the point of um, level 40, 45, somewhere around there, that is the highest level your character can be uh to purchase gems from the vendors that are leveled at the same level they would be if you had them equipped after that the vendors uh, gems will be lower experience than if you had leveled them yourself so if you want to have some extra gems or leveling some extras on the side once you're level 40 45 you want to make sure you have those already equipped if 40 or 45 i think it is yeah uh should be down here right <clears throat> Uh, this, this entire playthrough will be uploaded to YouTube, guys. All of it. So I'm just trying to comment a little bit more than I normally do when I'm leveling to help people out uh, that wants to play this build. Normally, most minion builds are leveled with Absolution if you want to have the highest speed. Uh, but builds that can level with the ability they're supposed to use to the end game, I prefer to do it with. Because it's more fun, in my opinion, to level with something that I'm actually supposed to be playing personally. That's just my take on, the, on that little topic. As you can see, with the uh, projectile behavior of um, Racing Pulse, you want to make sure that you hit as many targets as possible if you want to be, um, if you want to optimize uh, the approach um, of this. Normally, you try not to kill everything. If you can avoid killing everything, that would be preferable because you don't really need to. 
So if you can gather a pack like that, so you hit several targets at the same time, that in most cases would be a, a better approach for leveling. And as always, just try to see where all of these um, charging uh, Roa starts, because uh, the Act 1 buff made them kind of rough, but as long as you actually sidestep them or never work in a, uh, walk in a straight line like this, like try to always like walk in, in arcs, if you will. Uh, so we're taking the tree as the guide tells us to go on the side here. Here's a lot of these and since oh, I might die here actually Oh, there you see straight line. You're dead um, So with that said, it's really important They always work in an arc and try to be careful when you choose to attack It's the same thing here is if I walk like this they will never hit me There's a quick display of that. They will never hit me if I'm walking like this and uh, Try to combine that with trying to hit as many of them as possible and nice with freezing pulses, obviously, that you might freeze the enemies. Same thing here. Try to keep a little bit of distance. As there were so many, there's a blue pack in there. I tend to avoid killing blue. Um, mainly because they... Some of the modifiers they might have can be a bit rough to deal with. So we couldn't really deal with that. So what I did is I walk in an arc there. As you can see, if you get hit, you might get stunned, and that's going to be troublesome. So again, if you're having troubles with them, all you do is walk in an arc, and you'll be fine. That's a straight line, therefore I get hit. Jesus Christ. Don't kill me now. Thank you. Act 1 is kind of rough. Kind of rough. Not a lot. So in here, uh, we go to the coast, and we go and pick up the um, medicine chest. Same thing here, there's enough enemies for me to actually bother killing. So try to always try to kill big packs of enemies. This is if you want to optimize your clear speed, not something that you you have to do. It's just a general rule of thumb, if you will. That's about it. I actually died, I feel so bad for that one. Same thing here, you see this? You gather a pack of enemies, there's no Roa, so I can walk in a straight line. You just do it like this, you walk, you walk. And put that point in, not that it matters too much. Try to hit as many enemies as possible with the freezing pulse. Again, there are many different ways you can do this with different abilities. This is just a, a lazy way to do it. I decided to level this way to minimize the amount of pressure and things you need to think of uh, when you're a new player. And I hope this will serve as a uh, good leveling. So as you can see, this guy tries to lead his shots. He must have been around during the PUBG era. So if you're if you're sidestepping, you'll see that he's trying to target somewhere else. So if you just do sidestep like this, he will most of the times try to hit something else um, than where you're standing. So it's very easy to just sidestep it like this between each shot, and then he will die. Same thing here. Pick up all the blue items, log out, log in, and now things are going to pick up its pace quite a lot. Level the gems up. First, we take out Frost Bomb from here, not SRS. Frost Bomb, Frost Blink. Check those movement speed boots. Still nothing for us. This game hates us. Sell the shit we don't need. Could identify the boots if you really want to be picky. See if you can get some, minimum, some movement speed there. We didn't. If not, we vendor everything. Stay sharp out there. And then we check out what we get from here. Our Quicksilver. And here we can take some Phantasm. It's a nice little bonus. Looking at the wands, we again have access to the two double blue red wand. In this case, we're not going to buy that either. However, what I will do here is I'll check what I can purchase. Uh, we could look into a heavy belt, which I don't have access to. Any strength amulets, too expensive. Then we could use Holy Flame Totem as long as you have enough, um, enough um, strength to use it. So in this case, I will buy this wand. Now, because of this wand, we can then put some, the Holy Flame Totem and Summon Phantasm, as the guide is saying and put that in there. Put a nice keybind on it, and then we can have uh, a uh, Frost Bomb in there, and we need a Frost Blink, and now I will remove Arcane Surge. We don't need it anymore, and uh, we do it this way. And the reason for this is because Frost Bomb, in combination with Frost Blink, is in more often than not enough to kill most enemies. Goodbye. So with this covered, we go forward. And that is Submerged Passage. Have I dropped the portal scroll? I have one. Okay. Uh, right. Really important. If you have empty access, always use them because it looks beautiful. So as you can see here, we don't really have to do much. 
uh, to kill everything. We just leave, need to drop a frost bomb and flame dash. Oh, sorry, frost blink. And if that's not enough, you can always leave a, a holy flame totem next to it. And you will get some phantasmal uh, minions of doing that as well. That's a dead end. I'm talking too much. Great. And that's literally it. And as you can see, the area we're in is level 5. And we are level 4. So we do want to uh, spend a little bit of kills in here at least. Don't have to think too much. Oh, hello, Mr. Rich. You don't have to think too much about uh, the levels. What we're looking for here is a set of stairs. This is a set of stairs. If you have a portal scroll, leave the portal there. Uh, if you don't have a portal scroll, you're going to want to look for the, uh, for the depth area here. Now, we did have a portal scroll, so normally, as soon as I find the stairs, I will leave the portal there. The reason for that is because our next step is to get to the ledge. And in the ledge, we will get to a waypoint. That waypoint will bring me back to town. I can then take the uh, portal back here, which allows us to get the extra skill point quest that is gated behind this area. So that is why most of us are doing it that way. There are a couple different ways you can do that, but that is the way I prefer to do it. So that's how I'll be showing it. Let's see what I'm missing chat here. Yeah, a high budget version uh, on the PoE Vault. For this, there should be a PoB in the in the guide, yes. There should be. Here's a blue pack of enemies. I tend to prefer to kill blue packs of enemies when I can. Good amount of experience, but also some uh, off chance for some rare items. That's your leveling. Another blue pack. Hallelujah. Interesting. Interesting. So as you can see, my gear, I only have two ones equipped right now. So you don't really need much more than that. We're not going to use Frostbear Spectres either. Uh, so looking at my level 1 tree right now, it's telling me to go to the left for these nodes, which I want to for the uh, for the SRS. It's also telling me to go here and here, and then over to life. So I will take the Strength node, since we're actually utilizing Holy Flame Totem, and I don't have a Heavy Belt. That's something you're going to want to look at to get for the attribute requirements when possible. If you only could play one character class, SSF, or Conda, what would that character be? Uh, probably Dark Pact, actually. Or I would, well, I would start with maybe Domain Blow or something. Just, actually, it doesn't really matter. Whatever I feel like. Most of the, like, minion release builds, like Domain Blow, Spectres, all those things, are really fun. Because uh, they're very straightforward uh, gearing progression on them. Oh. Now we got the waypoint. Now we go back to town. Like I mentioned, this is why we dropped that portal. And I can take the portal back. But before we do so, we could pick up uh, some gems if you'd like to. So. Gotta keep in mind that we did level, uh, which makes it attractive for us to check for movement speed boots, which we well, didn't well. get. Another thing we can do is look for some new ones. Perhaps we got that. We Fair didn't. Well. Uh, however, in this case, I do want to start preparing for my SRS, so we don't have the sockets for it, so we're just going to move on. This is where it would have been wise for me to equip the boots we found earlier, or even the gloves, for example, if they would have given me some extra sockets to work with. So now we're back here, and we're looking for the depth, which we have on one of the sides here. That's it. We have the flooded depths, and I'm going to drink my coffee. Cheers. Before it gets cold. Oh. Never used an almost faster project before. This shit is so fun. Our is thanks for a great guide. It's my pleasure, man. I'm glad, glad you're enjoying it, dude. I am glad you're enjoying it. it means that my my time and work hasn't been wasted. Whoop! That's a life blast. Hello, mama. Pick that up. Points. As you can see now, we are working towards getting um, the minion nodes, which is the enduring bond nodes over there. Blue pack of enemy. As long as they're like more than three or something, I will actually go out of my way to kill them. Again, like I mentioned, good experience, but also loot. We got two blue items. Okay. Maybe not what I was hoping for, but whatever. Uh, not that it matters too much. And then we continue. Most minion builds will level in this fashion they get level 8 to go SRS. And then most of those will switch to Absolution level 12. We will be doing this as well. And then they stay to, with Absolution till whatever point they can move into their regular build. We will be doing that from level 28. In some cases, it would be uh, faster to level with keeping Absolution. Absolutely. Uh, that is not what we're aiming to do here. We are not trying to practice or teach you guys how to race 
is that will demand so much information and knowledge and experience with this game. And instead, we're trying to focus on making sure that you have a comfortable and, ex and an enjoyable leveling experience with the build you're supposed to be playing. Uh, yeah, you have a high body version on PvP. I guess it will be up there when you play up. No, there is a high body version in Midgard already. Check it out. It's uh, way cooler than uh, than what you listed. Trust me on that. Way cooler than that. Well, Again, we're looking for those movement speed boots, which seems to refuse to exist. Point wise, we spec in here. Now it's time for us to try to get some of the sockets going. Because we do need those uh, sorted. We can almost get that melee splash. We have two transmutations Goodbye. thanks to us vendoring a bunch of items. But since well, I did stupidly sell those uh, gloves I had earlier, I will just try to purchase like a normal shit for links. In this case, I'm taking a three blue helmet. And is there any gloves uh, that would be worth bothering? For two wisdoms? Eh. Yeah, well. If you're running low on wisdom scrolls, yeah. vendor things like transmutations. Don't do this, but you can later. But you can vendor the armor scraps or whetstones. Effective way to get yourself some extra uh, wisdom scrolls early in the game. Now we're moving over to the ledge and continuing from there. Uh, very likely, in co I'm comment, yes, very likely. Very, very likely. Blue pack, three enemies. I will actually kill this because now we're level seven. And next area is one of the harder ones, uh, similar to Mud Flats in Act One. The um, molten shell from, the, um, from these goats uh, can be pretty rough. Uh, in the next area. Outside of that, it's mostly about uh, the charging guys and just try to stay clear of them. Be a little bit cautious where you frost blink. I have a tendency now that I'm playing soft lately to not give a shit. And that most often, more often than not, ends up with me literally flame dashing or in this case frost blinking straight into a pack of those and exploding. So uh, if you uh, want to be a little bit careful, that would be the play there. Uh, this boss, Kuduku, try to stay away from it. There's no reason to kill it whatsoever. So normally we just hug one of the side walls and we put out our frost bomb, our totem, and use our uh, frost blink. And that's literally it. It's not much more special than that. Do try to pick up the armor scraps since they're worth more to click on than lo looting a wisdom scroll, which you should click as well to avoid running low on portals and uh, most importantly wisdom scrolls. Arena Master thought it was used above like uh, every 10 seconds, so I was sitting in hideouts. No, they made it stop doing that in the hideout. Thank God for that. Because that shit was annoying to listen to, dude. It was really good with the Holy Flame Totem is uh, a couple things to point out with it. Most important note is that you definitely don't need to use it. You really don't need to use it. That's my pleasure, man. Thank you so much, dude. Appreciate the kind words. Uh, you definitely don't need to use Holy Flame Totem. But the main reason I do use it uh, has more to do with the fact that it acts as a decoy target. It makes enemies target my totem with attacks or leap slams and stuff like that rather than hitting me. And that is something I value quite a lot. So as you can see here, these are the uh, Molten Shell guys I was talking about. And instead of being scared of them, uh, I use my Flame Nat or Frost Blink properly. And I use my Holy Flame Totem as a decoy to like, get me past there without too much problems. Now we're level 8, and as we access the lower prison, we get access to Infernal Legion as well as Melee Splash. And according to the guide, I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to take a look at it. So, according to the guide, we are currently in here with our tree, which means that I'll be taking the damage nodes or going over here, because once we have these nodes, we can start using zombies as beat shields. However, in the skill section, it tells me that I now can use from level 8 Melee Splash or Infernal Legion with minion damage and summon raging spirits. We get access to this in this act. So we go here. The Tale of Brutus was a popular one in the schools of the upper And we get minion damage. We look for the search. We don't have any ones. We have three blue in here. So what we could do now is we can put the Radiant Spirits, Minion Damage, and then I can get the Infernal Legion, which is right there. We could have used the two blue and a red and have Melee Splash instead of Infernal Legion, uh, but we don't need Frost Bomb or Holy Flame Totem that much right now. I will use them anyways because I think it's pretty chill. But now we're going to use Submarine Spirits and we no longer will be using Freezing Pools whatsoever. So I will take that away. Well, we and yeah. obviously, very importantly, and if you have MTXs, goddamn use them, baby. They're so good. 
They're such good looking. Uh, check this guy. And again, does he have movement speed boots? Nope. He hates us. Fuck you, Tarkley. <laughs> Bitch. Uh, and then we move on. Prison. Now, this is what we'll stay with all the way till the... Not the end, but uh, all the way till... Um... Ooh, portal scroll. We'll stay with this all the way till uh, level 12, which is the very end of Act 1, which we'll be going with uh, Absolution instead. Now, it says rest limited uh, with limited support. Uh, if you want to play Ruthless with minions, I would actually strongly... Actually, when you're here, do these lab trials if you haven't done them in the league yet. Big, big strong recommendation right there. Uh, if you want to play minions and ruthless, I would recommend leveling with uh, both uh, SRS and Absolution. And use Absolution, uh, and then whenever you get a melee support gem, you switch to SRS. If you get a caster support gem, you switch to Absolution. That's basically how you would do it in ruthless, in my opinion. Uh, so like we said, we can get some spell damage in here. We don't really need that. We can get damage over here as well. I don't really need the HP because we're playing softcore. Instead, when we're casting SRS, that can hurt our mana. So I will take these three life notes and then go straight in here so I can enable my zombies and then go down here before I take these notes. The blue pack of enemies, Frost Bomb, Holy Flame Totem to get those things out and put those SRS to work. Level the gems up and keep moving. We are now level 9, which is equivalent to this area's level. You want to be around level 10 at least before you go to Brutus. The fight itself is very easy with this uh, setup, simply because all you'll do is put a Holy Flame Totem up as a decoy so that he will attack that instead, and then you will just cast SRS. Another cool thing we mentioned is that uh, your SRS can't be targeted, but sometimes he does an ability that he slams the ground, does some uh, AoE collateral damage. Uh, when that happens, try to be a little careful uh, with summoning too much, so you be a little bit more mana conservative, if you will. Uh, this is because those AOEs will still hit your uh, minions, even though they can't be they can't be tanking. They will still hit, so be a little bit cautious with that information. Thanks. Now I'm level ten. I'm happy to move on. Let's kill this. Maybe we get a rare item, or we get fucked. Oh Jesus! Hello, hello, mama. We're not gonna use any of it, but. If you have yourself a chest piece at this point, you could equip that just to get some extra layer of defense. Now, this was too high dexterity for us, so we're not going to be able to do it unless I spec into that one, which is still not enough. So we take the mana region notes. Ignorance brought you here, sister. Reported trying to be helpful on Twitch. Yeah, I'm trying, man. I'm trying. I'm trying, dude. Uh, what's the ideal level you want to be compared to, uh, to stone level? And ideally, you want to be under leveled. But it kind of depends on which abilities you're using, how experienced you are with the game, uh, what gear you have equipped. So normally I recommend you players to be around the same level, uh, if not even higher. Like I'm level 10 now as a bare minimum recommendation before I go into uh, to this guy, right? Because the area is level 9 and this guy can be a bit annoying. So in here, we'll try to walk in an arc. If you walk in an arc like this, all of his abilities will miss at all times. And we're going to wait for him to do the explosion. Let's do the attack, come on. I want to show it without having minions. Okay. 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 Take some damage then. Hello? Okay. So this is the cascade one. Let's just stand on the other side of it to avoid it. Uh, so we're going to see when he does the other abilities. Always try to walk in arc when he does that. That's the ability. So when he does this, don't summon your totem. Don't summon your... Um, don't summon your uh, SRS in there because they will die most likely to save your mana. So instead, just wait till he's done with that and then you can summon it. And as you can see, he's targeting my totem with um, he's targeting my totem with a with a hook ability, which means I never really have to worry about dodging that too much. You see how easy this fight looks like. All you have to do is just sidestep and he will die. Wait a little bit for the loot to pop. See if there's anything you give a shit about. I will identify the boost because we still haven't gotten movement speed and we still don't. So it's very simple. You can actually log out at this point to make this fast. Actually, we will be logging out either way because... Um, um, well, now it's too late. Because we can get... Um, instead of Frost Blink, we can now use uh, Flame Dash. It's a matter of personal preference. I like Flame Dash. I like Flame Dash. Uh, so we get Flame Dash, and I can do this, and this, 
sell any rares or blues. I've been pretty bad at picking them up, as you might have noticed. Look for movement speed boots. There's nothing. Check with Nessa. Nessa tells us that we should go fuck ourselves, and we will then cry and say, well, why would you say that? That's, that's kind of rude. Uh, at this point, I will prepare to have a race zombie gem. We're not really going to use them that much, because they're going to die. Um, I could include a vitality support, but I'm racking some sockets. So in this case, I know what kind of extras I'd like to run. And we know for a fact that Absolution will require a red and two blue. We do have that already. So what I can do now is we can look into the possibility of how we're going to run the zombies and maybe run a vitality or if we would like to. It's not a must. So at this point, we could equip something like this. I found this one and just yeah, equip well. it without doing anything else. I'll just put my race zombie in there. I know for a fact that uh, according to the guide, we're going to use add a coal or add a lightning later. And we have transportation left over, but we can buy the vitality. So in this case, I will buy the Vitality Aura for that last round of transportation because it's a nice little bonus to keep my minions alive. While we live, we and then we're going to move on. All of this will be uploaded on YouTube later. And now we're just running and taking it step by step. As you see, there's a rare guy over there. Be a little bit careful. Let me just jump down the ledge. Ooh, look at that. An entire alteration. We're actually rich. And that's it. I like the crucible uh treats. I like the trees. I'm I'm not very happy with it with how the mechanic works, but I do like the trees. And I really hope that they uh make it core. I really do. I just didn't think that it was good enough for a standalone Lee mechanic. I think it's a great addition to the game, just not as a standalone Lee. That's my opinion on that one. Because the idea is great. It really is. Just needs some fine tuning, and but as a standalone Lee, uh, there's a triple blue one there. Actually, I'm gonna take this simply because I already have um, another triple blue wand that uh, doesn't do anything. So now I just gained a socket for free. You can do that if you have enough uh, wisdom scrolls to identify. You can always do that with uh, blue ones as well. Maybe you get some extra mods and whatnot. Sadly, with minions, you don't actually get to change your weapon very often when you're leveling in the campaign. Which makes it a lot easier to understand and what you're going to do when you're leveling, of course. But it's kind of boring. Uh, the There's three different versions of a minion wand. They're called convening, calling, and convoking wands. Those are the only ones in the game that can roll minion damage modifiers. Anything else will be level of specific uh, elements, such as, in our case, we're using SRS right now, uh, right there. They have spell minion duration of fire, so getting a wand with plus level of fire skills would actually be beneficial. Sadly, we don't have access to that right now. But if you find it, you'll know what to look for. Absolution will be able to do the same thing with physical and, um, uh, physical and uh, lightning. Ooh, augmentation. Normally, Mr. Fairgraves in this area is uh, located uh, very close to the waypoints. So what I normally do here is that if I didn't see him, I don't really m care that much. If I do see him and I run up to or close to him, I tend to drop a portal if I have spare. Outside of that, I'm, we're looking for the, uh, the cove, right? Uh, to pick up the flame. Um... So if that's very close to where he is, I tend to run back and just do the quest because it gives a uh, the skill point. If it's not close to him, I actually will go all the way to the next ca the caverns of anger, right? Of the caverns, and then I will uh, take the waypoint that is located directly inside back to uh, to this area to then do the quest. So in this case, we found the ship uh, graveyard cave. I'll go in here, and when I'm done, I will look for the cavern instead and take the waypoint back for the quest. As an example. As you might have noticed, I've not used my zombies yet. The reason for this is uh, very simple. They don't survive until you have the sacrifice notable. So there's something that you can add as an extra layer of defense at a later point. It's also why we're going to run with Absolution. Uh, does the same thing. We're, why we're going to run with uh, Herald of Purity. It is uh, from Act 2. It is not the best way to do it, but it provides the best layers of defense for the player, player playing. So if, if you're a new and newer player, 
definitely follow the, the guide as uh, stated and uh, use that because it makes it so much smoother even if you'll have a little bit lower damage output than what you could have done it's all about creating a comfortable leveling experience for you playing dominating blood necromancer i wonder uh, when do i change stone golem to carrion golem uh whenever you want actually in here you can put a totem so that he will shoot his uh uh cold snap on the totem instead sometimes he'll hit you instead and it will freeze you so this time he hit me now we have uh, le flame but instead of uh running uh, back to fairgraves we're gonna go for the cavern oh, that's a nice blue pack of enemies here hello a scepter don't really need that we can vendor it the gates Thank you, advice. Uh, any thoughts? Thoughts to what? Sorry. If I miss a question, just ask again and um, tag at, tag at Castle TV so I see it. So as you can see, we took the waypoint back instead of going back to town, and now we're right next to Fergus because it's always close to the waypoint. We do this, and then that's it. We can always try to summon zombies, see if they survive. They just need some corpses, right? I normally wouldn't recommend it, but Vitality can help them stay alive to some degree. So in our case, we can have four of them right now. So we'll summon four. I've actually forgotten to put empty access on this. I'm very sorry. I, I know I said that that was very important before. So let's use the project ones. They're pretty cool. So as you can see, the damage is beautiful. All the blue items, all the rares looted. We head back to town. We hand the quest in, we get a skill point, we talk to this girl, we can now get Flesh Offering, which is what I would recommend picking up. It's not really that important when you're leveling, as most people probably will forget to use it most of the times. I don't have any Wisdom Scrolls, I will sell my Armor Scraps, so I can identify. I'm not going to sell them identified though. And then we do this. I will check the vendors, there's a Heavy Belt. I will be equipping this, and because I know we're going to use it. I have a transmutation, but I have not, no desire to buy any other gems outside of the Absolution. So I will be spending my hard-earned transmutation on Absolution. And this is because now, according to the guide, we are at this stage of go going into Act 2. This means that we'll be using Absolution with minion damage, add a cold or add a lightning. That means Absolution goes in here. We will be using minion damage. And we'll be using add a cold red lightning. So we'll check that. That's the transportation, which I do not have access to right now. So we're going to wait for this. However, we can then keep using our summon phantasms instead. At this point, Holy Flame Totem goes away. We could use it if you'd like to. Uh, and Frost Bomb gets to move to the side. We do this. And uh, I just realized that I never used minion damage on my Radiant Spirits, did I? No, I did, actually. My bad. Um, and then if you have sockets open, you can put the flesh offering. This requires corpses, and it will increase the speed of your minions. Very good, but requires corpses on the field, which we can't get access to until we're level in Act 2. Uh, normally, I keep the flame totem around in case I drop some items that I can use for the sake of the sockets. Welcome. And then we check the movement speed boots. And that's it. Very All right, well. so now we have Absolution. We're no longer going to use SRS anymore, so we will take that away. Uh, I like the level Infernal Legion because there's a couple cool things you can do with it if you want to. Um, but in this case, I'm not going to use it at all. Just to... Holy shit, that woke me up. Woo! Good morning. Just to stay true to how the guide is looking right now. So... We have zombies, we have an uh, offering skill, we have our frost bomb, and we have a flame dash, and we have absolution. The frost bomb can actually go at this point. I won't really need the frost bomb at this point either. Abs the absolution requires me to do a killing blow, which will summon something, or the enemy needs to die soon after being hit by it. The reason we're keeping frost bomb is if you have the sockets, it can be a bit helpful. However, we're going to be spending a lot more mana than before. So at this point, it would be wise to have two mana flasks. So if you find one, pick one up and equip it. I will identify the boots, trying to get a movement speed boots. Then now we are actually moving into the sacrifice node so I can keep my zombies realistically alive. And that's basically the gist of things in the current state of uh, the leveling. And how it works. Come on, can I get, get the movement speed now? 
Come on, come on, come on. That's it. Kill these guys. Kill those as well, thank you. That's yeah, very simple. In Act 3, we're going to get something called Convocation later, which will actually make this so much smoother to level with. When you switch to DB, we will be showcasing the switch to DB as soon as you can, which will be a little slower, but way more fun if you're going to play Dominating Blow later. It's way more interesting to do that, in my opinion. So, with that said, Absolution is one of the best, if not the best way to level minion builds in the Necromancers right now. We will not be doing that because this is a Dominating Blow build, and I actually prefer to play as Dominating Blow when I'm going to play a Dominating Blow build. If I can level with it, I will. It's all about having fun. People need to remember that this is a game. You're supposed to have fun when you're playing it. Now, if you have fun doing the meta leveling and all of those stuffs, absolutely go for it. I think this is very enjoyable. So this is what I'll be doing. As you can see, we're using Frostbomb every now and then. Most uh, importantly is the use of this just to keep enemies off you by slowing them down a little bit. Outside of that, uh, the zombies still haven't died, actually, which actually tells me that the vitality was enough that early to keep them alive, which is a good thing before you even get access to sacrifice. They will very likely die in this specific fight. Now, I recommend to be at least 12 or 13 when you go in here, at the very least. Use the portals to go back to town if you have to. And this is where the damage will be showing. Now, the absolution requires a 25% chance on hitting a unique rare target to summon their minions. And that's it. And as we remember, I didn't have access to... Um, I didn't have access to um, the added lightning or added cold. Uh, so because of that, we are using the um, uh, summon phantasm set. Keep a little distance here in the first phase. And uh, literally just uh, sidestep when he's shooting the, those spikes at you. That's all you have to think about. As you saw, my zombies tanked one of those beams and they all died in one hit. So this is why we don't use zombies that often in Act 1. Alright, this is getting a little bit annoying, but thanks to the Summon Phantasm and my Absolutions, they're actually being uh, tanking most of these enemies anyways. This face, stay close to the fight, so she doesn't shoot the uh, beam, uh, the projectile on you. If that happens, make sure you get that. As you might have noticed, these, this guy is hurting a lot. The solution to that is uh, sidestep a little bit, and most importantly, um, as you were leveling, Getting something like a cold resistance ring, the sapphire ring, uh, it makes this fight a complete joke. Now, I wanted to avoid that, using that, simply because I think most new and new player will not be using that uh, or thinking about it. So this is how the fight looks without it. As you can see, piss easy, no problem. Normally, we would use cold resistance rings to make this fight look like a joke. And we didn't this time. Thank you so much, Average Chronos, for the 17 months resum. I appreciate that, dude. Frostbear build, I have the option of second curse condition Frostbite. I can choose between Sniper's Mark and Elemental Weakness. Any thoughts? Elemental Weakness on the Anime Guardian is what I would use. It's in the guide, actually. It's in the guide. Pretty sure at least. So, in here, we will go straight up because we have pretty good damage. I don't feel like I should prioritize taking that node below. So, the reason we go for this is to let my zombies now stay alive. So we're going to summon our zombies. Check it out. We can have four. Great. So we can actually use an offering here. As you can see, we now got a flesh offering running. Another I'm shield. Oh, should loot it kill. just to sell. And then we're moving on. So again, this showcase, I do want to point out, I am not looking to race. I am looking to show you a leveling progression of this in a smooth and effective way without having a uh, bunch of twink gear, right? I don't remember when we started. How much have we played, actually? We played for 37 minutes, so it's a little slower than I normally do when League starts. But honestly, level 14, Act 2 in 37 minutes, I guess that's okay. For a casual approach to the game, that's actually pretty decent. I think most people would agree. Um, so again, not a racing experience, but a steady and decent flow. Alright, so I don't have enough stat mats to identify everything so instead i will only identify something i'll plan on using so in case this one absolute trash Round for me five. so we're gonna keep moving because it gives us a little bit of stats anyways and he, uh, ignores your curse limit he has his own counter that's not true either for them 
He works as a second player, yes. So, yeah. The, the, the guide covers it. The guide covers it. He, he, he's not separated. Or they're not combined. He just counts as another player. So, those rules apply. That's, that's absolutely correct. So, again, I'm trying to avoid killing too many enemies that would waste my time. Uh, so, instead, I'm only looking to kill packs of enemies. So, see these three? I will ignore those. Something that's really cool when you're playing minion builds is that even when you're ignoring packs of enemies and you're only killing the big ones, uh, the situation is um, uh, pretty straightforward. Your minions will accidentally and occasionally kill things on the side. The reason I'm killing those is to get my minions because of that specific thing happening. <clears throat> so keep using your mobility skill and move forward. I normally start by going up to the chamber. The reason I do that is very simple. I get some auras for doing so. And the guide is going to tell us to use... Um, the guide is going to tell us to use uh, Herald of Purity and Skitter Bots. The reason for this is uh, not because it's the best. Because it definitely is not. What it does is gives us Herald of Purity, a little bit of damage from our own cast, but not our minions. But it gives us more minions acting as mean shields, which makes us not need to spend points or investment into the defensive layers that much. It's very comfortable. And the Skitter boss provides enemies with um, chill and shock, which makes us deal more damage. Same thing here. Get my first initial kills, resummon one of my zombies. And uh, we keep moving. I still have the lowest level mana flask there. So I wouldn't mind finding a new mana flask, actually. Wouldn't say no to that. And your guardian will be able to uh, apply it at a minimum of one. Of course, you report uh, I think I read that on wiki. Well, I've tested and confirmed. The way it works, if you do a curse AG... Um, a curse AG is designed in a way where you apply one curse and you can apply one curse and then the AG will apply one curse but he can apply two curses yet only applies one that makes him apply the second curse if you will and then they will stack that, that's how the curse AG works if you're playing the same thing if you're playing with another friend and you do that same approach unless they change something undocumented that should still work and I haven't heard any anything about that not being the case All right, so as you can see here, I'm not killing everything. I am only killing packs of enemies, like I mentioned before. We want to get around level 16 in the in here, preferably before we go down to chamber level 2. So I try to get to the sides here, uh, because that's where the blue packs of enemies here there are. Topaz rings are great at this stage of the league, or sorry, the game, because of the extra lightning damage a lot of enemies here are doing. So now I got the sacrifice node, which will allow me to do... To keep my zombies more realistically and reliably alive. I can still only have four. So we'll see if that changes with the next level. And now we are looking into getting more damage. Notice and our own HP. Yep, still only four. So we head over here. We're level 16. So we just need to go to the next area. Why no Tabula Rasa? I'm only going to use Vol Domination. This is to showcase this in a super low budget. Of how it feels to level this specific build. So in here, we pop this. Watch out for your HP here when you pop things. I see a life plus there that I would like. Thank you. Would be good if I could loot it properly as well. No, oh, come on, kill this thing. Anything good? No mana flask, nothing. Okay. Okay. Again, keep in mind that you want to get the um, lab, the uh, sanity trials. There is one in prison that we saw earlier in Act 1. There's one in here, and there's one in here, and uh, that's Act 2. And for the sake of it, um, we're not going to go through the trials, but that is something you would prefer to do. So if you're falling behind on levels, in this case, you can just head down to Feltrine Ruins to get the, the trial done there, which will catch your, yourself up in levels in case you feel like you're falling behind. Vol domination is dom is uh, dominating blow, right? Yes, sir, it is. I never apologize for asking questions. Quite the opposite. If you have questions, always ask. You'll never get the answer if you don't ask. So do yourself that favor.
Bimok, good afternoon. Girls are okay. Um, my daughter or our daughter Lily is fine. Uh, Hannah got uh, post birth depression apparently. Uh, so she's getting some help for that. Um, she's currently staying at her uh, parents' place right now. So I, I, it's completely new, new waters for me as well. I have no idea what's happening, but um, she's not doing very well right now. But there she is. She's getting help for it. Apparently, it's very common. So I, I don't know. This shit's so new to me, man. All of that is so new to me. <clears throat> Is Shield Charge better than Flame Dash? Uh, I think so, yes, without a doubt. But you're not you're gonna want fast attacks with it. Will she get better soon? Yeah, I hope so as well. So she's staying there so she can get um, company with them every day, and every time I'm done streaming, I'm heading over there. That's why I'm so tired and I look like a fucking zombie right now. Because every time I'm done streaming, I'm heading over to her her, her parents' place and spending time with the uh, with the family there. And then I go home again to continue working and then I hopefully get to sleep a few hours before the next stream. So it's been like this for a few days and will be for the unforeseeable or for the foreseeable future at least. Still no movement speed though. Holy. Pick up the shit and log out, log back in so you don't waste your portals. Very good tip, by the way, to not waste your portals. Now we're going to run Hero of Purity. We also would like to pick up a Desecrate in here if you want to. It's a bonus thing. You don't really have to do it. Um, and then in here... Uh, we're seeing if there's any movement speed boots. There is not. I'm gonna keep the currency on me. However, for alteration orbs, we can now purchase uh, Herald of Purity as well as Skitter boots. And now we can drop the frost bomb entirely. We're not gonna need it, so let's just avoid that. The reason we disable that has more to do with opening up sockets, so there are less things for us to try to squeeze in. But we have a transmutation orb. In this case, we have two choices. Keep the phantasm, or three choices. Keep the phantasm supports, or head back to Act 1 and buy Add a Lightning, or kill the Weaver in Act 2 and get another support in instead. I am going to do this, and I'm going to take a Add a Lightning and skip the summon phantasm and smack that out. Farewell. And whilst I'm here, since we still don't have movement yeah. speed boots, I will check for movement speed boots, which Farewell. still doesn't exist. However, uh, I do need some more sockets now. We have a white helmet. I can even move that away. So what we are looking for is a helmet or gloves or boots with a red color. So I'm just going to take this this time for a wisdom scroll. And I'm out of wisdoms now. But now it allows me to put the Herald of Purity. Something to keep in mind with Herald of Purity is, uh, and the aura reservations in general is that we are in a position where we don't have any reservation mastery or points invested. We will be going for these nodes very soon. I'll be specking into two life nodes or mana life nodes here, and then I'll go straight out through Spirit of Command into these nodes and these damage nodes. Before that, reserving these ours can be very daunting on your mana pool, as you can see, because my cost is 16, I only have 29 mana. This is where I tend to disable the vitality and the reason we disable it is because we have sacrifice nodes from the tree, which should keep the zombies alive. And then I will re-enable my vitality in a couple levels where I get more mana, and I will not level the, dem the vitality gem up uh, further. And by doing that is when the gem levels, when it shows up here, right-click it. Instead of leveling it, it will hide that level up notification, and it will be shown in this section of the inventory instead. Now the build 70 now pretty much got all basic AD gear playing soul cell phone. Um, just scared to lose the AD and the tips keep the bugger alive. I just made a, a video about that, of how to keep the AD alive on my YouTube channel. So type this for YouTube or go to my AD guide if you type this for guide and check it out. See uh, if there's anything uh, you missed there or some extra tips and tricks and information is available there. So in this case, we will kill this guy and look at the zombie's HP and uh, my uh, absolution minions. This guy is immune to lightning. Okay, so let's just ignore him. Now we can clearly see how the mana is becoming slightly an issue. And that has to do with the small mana flask uh, from level one is not really being able to keep up as well as we'd hope for. So in this case, um, what I will be doing is I will now spec into these nodes because it gives me more mana. So that's what I'll be looking to do. Outside of that, as you can see, 
We are now getting Herald of Purity minions on top of... Um, uh, we are getting zombies and we're getting the, um, the Herald of Purity minions. And all of these, they are attackable, which makes it so that enemies are attacking them rather than ourselves, which creates a very, very nice layer of safety. Now, again, you don't need to. It is not the most optimal way of doing it, but it is one of the most smoothest way of doing it. Say the map view is bad. Uh, yeah, I kind of agree with that, actually. So, again, normally I would go to the Felshrine Ruins to level up, but I'm level 17, so I'm kind of comfortable with that. So I wouldn't do that because I have already done the uh, Ascendancy trial down there. First time you go through here, I think Einar is here every time, right? So you can get some extra help in the early stage, making this area, if you feel like you're a little bit uncomfortable, you're still getting used to it, you can start with going to the left side. I would recommend starting right side because of the auras that we're getting. As you can see, we have Herald of Purity, we have Zombies, we have the Skater Bots for damage output, and uh, we have our Absolution Minions. It's just minions everywhere, and uh, all of these are being attacked by enemies rather than ourselves. I only have the Mana Region and HP Node Spect on the tree that gives me life right now. Obviously, you could do something better than that. I would like some freaking movement speed boots, though. Holy shit, man. Christ. So, now I will, like I said, I will go in here to get some extra mana, because I'm getting a bit annoyed with my mana reservation, or sorry, my mana state at the moment. And if I don't find a mana flask as I'm playing, I will just buy one from the vendors if I have to. Because right now, this mana flask does literally, you know, fuck all. No frost bomb, nothing. We're just powering through the content at this point, even without movement speed boots, which is really annoying that we haven't found. Dark Pack still working? Absolutely. Dark Pack got one of the best quality of life uh, cha uh, changes in the game ever. It's insane. Might actually play it uh, later in this league just to, just for the sake of trying the quality of life stuffs because it's so nuts. Reduce damage per curse on you, reduce the effect of your curses, lower my specter's damage, reduce the effect on uh, curses on you. No. No, I mean, if you have reduced curse effects, then your curses you're doing is uh, is worse. But if the curses have lower effect on you, that's a defensive scaling modifier. So no, you don't have to worry. Uh, life. Oh, that's an upgrade. Let's take that. And now there's a blue, a green, red socket. So I could socket the Holy Flame Totem in here if I'd like to. But at this point, we have Herald of Purity, we have zombies. Oh, actually, one zombie managed to, managed to die. Holy. But as you can see, we don't need to have another decoy because of our, our minions through Herald of Purity and our zombies. They're all doing that for us. So we really don't have to worry. Yeah, Vol Absolution is uh, crazy good. Get some updates on the Life Flask. Uh, don't log out here. Instead, we're going for killing all of the bandits. Uh, because of the Vol Soul Prevention, uh, when you activate it, it prevents you from gaining souls for a very long time. Thus, you can't have it active uh, very easily 24-7. It's essentially the, the purpose behind uh, the soul gain prevention on uh, Vol skills. So as you can see here, those might die. Yep, we lost a couple of Hero Purity minions and we lost two Zombronis from that AoE explosion. Not very tanky versus that type of damage, but we did need a mana flask actually, so that's good. Uh, perfect. And now we're gonna go kill the Weaver. Does double damage a full life now do anything for poisonous rust? Yes, but you have to go to the configuration and check the box that your minions are on full life for that to actually uh, to actually show up. Crooksy, thank you so much for 13 months, man. Appreciate it. Okay, man. Okay. Okay. I'm going the wrong way, aren't I? I am. So what you're looking for here is uh, spider web on the trees. Spider web. Uh, mana. Thank you. So here we have spider webs. So that means I'm going the right way. So it will be down here. Perfect. Brilliant. Let me see what Hannah wrote. Mm -hmm. 
all of this will be uploaded to YouTube. As a way to speed up that. Speed up what part? Sorry. Oh, that part. Sorry. Uh, I mean, there's the flasks and whatnot, right? I know it's, I, I, I never done it, but I know that uh, there are some vault skills, like vault spark and whatnot used to use that, right? Soul catcher or whatever it's called. It's a really niche approach to it, but uh, it's fun. You could do that. I just don't think it's worth it for absolution. I really don't think it's worth it. Another mana flask. Uh, we can take that. And uh, see here, this guy you want to stand kind of close to, because if you're further away from him, and then he will shoot a projectile. That projectile hurts like a motherfucker. So it's better to stand close to him and just tank his hits. All right, quality of life up because dark pad. So I'm uh, this lady, I'm loving it. So the mana cost uh, taking his life instead on the life mastery is one thing, and then the instant leech and the leech mastery uh, change was a massive for as well. Also, the changes to Arcane Sword gave it cast speed instead of the extra damage, which is a massive clear speed increase for the build. And uh, that also made it better for us to bother scaling um, the Arcane Sword to the nodes of the Arcane Capacitor on the left-hand side of the tree. Pretty dope. So, rip and I have all absolution now, like 80% of the time. Yeah, there you go. Speak. Uh, let's see. Selling these so I can get some. Oh, please tell me there's movement speed boots for the love of fuck. Oh, Jesus Christ. Sometimes uh, shit just doesn't go your way, man. Still no movement speed boots. Uh, so at this point, we are going to go back to Act 1. Never forget, once you're done with the left hand side, go back here, talk to Bestial to get that extra skill point. Done. We get this. Boom, more mana. I will now reinitiate my vitality aura. And by doing so, I have 54 mana now. But I will not be leveling it up any further. Thanks, so I missed go for the 17 months. Bam, sub. Appreciate that. You think, thank you. All of this will be uploaded to YouTube, by the way. The entire video. So that's why I don't want to stop. I'm just going, 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 going. I'm not speeding, but I'd rather just keep the pace up a little bit. Movement speed craft. Uh, ooh, I don't remember. Normally I have a 10% or 15% by now, but uh, that doesn't seem to be happening right now. Reaper, not a big fan of the Reaper because of the lack of efficiency and the amount of currency you need to invest to make the build actually good, in my opinion. Uh, we still don't have a green socket for our Desecrate. We're still not wearing boots because this game hates us. The corpses here, when you're killing them, you can use those for the offering. Uh, allowing you to uh, get that extra speed when you're killing. In this case, I could skip the gloves I have and use these without life if I want to, but we're lacking dexterity uh, to use Desecrate. The solution to that is very simple. It's called a Jade Amulet, which gives you dexterity. So I was stupid enough to double use my aura, so I didn't have my... Um, sorry, my uh, mana class. I ran out of mana class. This is a minion wand, and as you can see here, we got uh, fuck all. The, however, it does have an implicit minion damage, so we could use this at level 20 anyways. Uh, because it gives us a little bit of damage. Very, very, very minor. Vendor sometimes sells these, so it is worth looking at if you want to check it out. Go back to town either way, simply because you not killed all of the bandits, you get a reward from that by talking to Aramir. And you need to bring that item with you anyways. Now we're doing this. And the reason we're doing this is because we're going to bum rush our way through the Fury Flush into the big damage nodes over here. Then we're taking life nodes, extra zombie nodes and whatnot. But that's basically the way I prefer to uh, level the tree. Going. <laughs> uh, do you have movement speed boots for me? No. Travel far. I'm not sure if I like the changes they did to the vendors. Because in the past, vendors refresh their uh, their stock every time you level. That's not happening in the same way anymore. So getting movement speed early seems to be harder, in my opinion. My channels you get to get specters. It's my own global channel in game. 6666. Woo! Extra damage and exposure. Hello. So as you can see here, these guys hurt. But because of the amount of uh, mutuals I have through zombies, through um, Herald of Purity... 
and uh, Fantas in some cases as well, but not anymore. Uh, they actually just tanks everything for me, and I can just take a step back and just relax. Very comfortable. Way to change that. Yeah, I keep checking every level as well. I'm not, I actually forgot which intervals they changed the vendors. Um, but it, it is actually rather frustrating. If you're having issues with uh, mana, by the way, as you can see, I'm running low on mana quite often. Just turn off the vitality. That's, that's literally the solution. And what's going to happen is your zombies will very likely die until they're a little bit higher level. And if you can live with that, it's fine. Here's a calling wand. That's actually pretty nice. If you have an alcor, you can do that, for example. In this case, we got a little bit of stats on that. So, you know what? Let's, let's just equip it. Not that it matters too much. We do this. Toss those out. We can equip that as well. It's just a tiny bit of damage, and that's it. Every five levels, full reset, I believe. They uh, still change a few items per level. Yeah, I think it was something like that, right? That's, uh, that, that sounds um, familiar. So still worth checking every level either way. I do find it quite frustrating though. No enemies here. Level 20, what's my played? One hour already and we're towards the end of Act 2. Pace is going to be picked up quite a lot as the, the further we go. So keep that in mind as well. And like I said before, we're not racing. We're showing how to do this in a comfortable way. And I'm pausing quite often to show you steps that I'm taking as we're going. Put rig walls on? No, no, no. <laughs> oh, no. We'd be in uh, at the end of Act 3 if I had that. <laughs> Holy shit. It is. Rig Rigwald is insane. It is so good. I'd probably just use like um, Jade Hatchet, the screaming ones, uh, for extra movement speed and then seven leak steps and just run with uh, that ring. It's so stupid how much damage those wolves are doing. It's the free ride that pays you. Yeah, basically. It's disgusting. I get it. Is. Oh, all right. Oh, nice. Yeah, spill water everywhere. Oh, GG. Nice. That's the most optimal game weapon base for dominating blow, Gemini Claw. The reason we use Gemini Claw for it is uh, because it gives us mana on hit. And man on hit is very, very nice because it just sustains everything we're doing. All you have to do is hit an enemy. But you get access to your loot filter to this character. I'm just using Neversync's base loot filter. Again, just to not confuse people. Type is made for filter. The website's called filter. Um, filter blade, right? Dot XYZ. Filter blade. Remember what I said about vitality? If I right click the plus sign, it will not level it up. So I will do so. I will level the rest up instead. What's going to happen now is the vitality will show up down here in my inventory and I don't have to think about it. We do need to get a dexterity sorry, uh, amulet so we can equip our desecrate. The good thing with desecrate though is that we don't need to level that gem either. Therefore, we can leave that at level 1 and have um, less pressure of dexterity early on on ourselves. You can type exclamation mark filter tactical to um, get access to the website as well. <clears throat> Alright, let's see. What do we need for these? We just need level 23. And moving on. As you can see now, our zombies are actually staying more and more realistically and reliably alive. Thanks to the sacrifice node on the tree and our vitality aura. It's literally all we needed to keep them alive as we're leveling. And they work very effectively as meat shields for us to just keep ourselves safe because we barely invested in anything into life. Shadow, thanks so much for 20 months, Prime. I appreciate that, dude. Well, thanks so much, man. I appreciate that, dude. 
we are actually aiming for sub records right now. It's pretty crazy. Pretty, pretty fucking crazy. 640 is better than that plus, so let's just change. Thank you so much, man. Pretty comfortable. So this video, we'll have all of this posted on YouTube in one go. Barely any editing. Maybe in the intro and outro, it's Kiki's gonna fix that. But it's like, it's just gonna be our the stream, essentially. Where I'm leveling with this character, just to show how it's done. And what I'm doing. Some tips and tricks. And all of this is covered in the guidance anyways. So this door here is closed, unless you talk to Aramir for handing in the bandit kill. So that's why we did that earlier. Oops. We are going to reach a point where resistances and HP are going to become more and more important. The reason I haven't really cared too much about it is because we don't need it. My rest right now is dog. But lightning resistance is going to be the most pressing rest from now on forward. So if I can find items that has lightning rest, for example, a topaz ring, preferably two, that would be preferable. From Act 3, if you find two stone rings that gives uh, rest to two different elements, that would also be good to have because both lightning and, um, um, and fire would be very good. And then towards Act 4, Act 5, that's when you, you want to start actually caring more about your rest. Because once you're done with Act 5, you will lose 30% to all elemental rest. Uh, and on top of that, and Chaos Rest actually. Uh, but after that, what happens is that uh, from Act 6 and forward, you're going to take a lot of elemental damage. Especially fire and um, fire and cold starting in Act 6. Because after that, there's just so much elemental damage. And having the rest capped or close to it at that point is the best suggestion. Chaos Rest is something you can completely disregard during the campaign. It is preferable to have... But not something you should uh, focus on getting uh, in the early stage of the game. When you start mapping, however, uh, Chaos Resistance becomes more and more valuable. The highest priority is the other stats. And in the gear section of the build guide, there is um, modifier priority list added in the guide. So you know what stats to prioritize. That's the end goal. Uh, the campaign. For this video will be the campaign. Because all of this will be uploaded to YouTube in, uh, in one go. So it's going to be a couple of hours that we're going to do this. And I'm going to try to talk as much as I can. We're leaving some comments about what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, how I'm doing it. So as you can see here, we need corpses for our zombies. But since we don't have a green socket or the dexterity to equip desecrates, the only corpse we're going to get is the ones available from enemies we're killing. And I keep using both my mana plus, but I only need to use one. So we'll see if my mana will sustain. As you can see, we have so many minions hitting. It's just very comfortable to do. Act 3 is a little special for minion builds in general, which I'm going to show you. Uh, please, please. Yes! We have movement speed! Hallelujah! All right, log out here. It's faster than waiting for the door to open. And then we can vendor some shit like this. And now what we could do is we could change our support gem. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna talk to this guy. Now, uh, we could change something like our um, uh, added lighting for something like a control destruction, elemental focus. Uh, in my case, I will do elemental focus instead of the added lightning uh, because I get it from the quest reward. You don't really have to. And I tend to completely disregard it because the damage difference is so small. And the reason we're not going to care too much about it is simply because when we go into Act 3, there's two things happening. One, we're going to go Dominating Blow. And we get that level 28 after killing General Revicious. Uh, however, we will be um, doing the library quest normally. And we're going to do that with this build as well. The library quest is at the end of this act. That is a character called Siosa. Uh, this ghost luck uh, guy will provide us with uh, the availability to purchase gems. Similar to that of um, Act 6 and uh, Lily Roth, for example, in your hideout later. That is selling level 1 gems. You can get those gems. Ooh, two stone ring. 
Don't say no to that. I have an Alex. Let's use that. That was terrible, but we're going to use it. Um, so basically what's going to happen is that uh, we get access to gems. But the important gems we're going to pick up from there are gems we wouldn't have access to until later. And those would be for Absolution builds, for example. We use Physical to Lightning support. For this build, we're going to use uh, Feeding Frenzy. This is a support we're going to put to our Zombie Sand or Golem. Uh, another thing we can do is um, start changing our auras to be more in line with how the end game is supposed to look like. Uh, trying to mix and match the auras depending on how much reservation you have access to. Uh, another thing you can do is if you're using a shield and you have the sockets, you can now have your flame dash uh, separately linked somewhere or socketed somewhere and get a faster attacks together with shield charge. That is a very nice mobility skill and definitely recommend doing that. Uh, will require to have a shield equipped, just keep that in mind, and it will require, it would be preferable if you have a green and a red socket, so you can have the fast attacks in there to make it a comfortable experience as well. I'm glad you're enjoying it, dude. Thanks for the kind words, man. In this case, we are most likely going in a circle right now. We are looking for the sewer gates, but we need to get the key first, which means we have to find Tolman and kill Piety. So we're going to go on the left-hand side and check this out. We're looking for the chamber, right? Whatever it's called. Blue pack of enemies. Worth staying to kill. Your minions will deal with it. They don't have to be gathered in a pack like we had with Freezing Pulse early. Because our minions will just shoot at them anyways. If they're grouped up, it's better. But not something we focus on. So I will stand for, stay still for blue packs. Because they will die quite fast with Absolution. It's going to be a little bit different when it's time for us to go with Dominating Blow. It's going to be a fun transition to do. Crematorium. Got a Dorian has the Institute in my temple. A gem is best to try to do running FB Spectres. Probably the Spectre gem. Or Zombies or Golem. I mean, all of them is used by that build. Or even Skeletons for that matter. For Skeletons, you can buy a 21 uh, Vault Summon Skeletons through the Divination card called... Uh, uh, the bones, I think. Preservation for me being being incorrect there, but there's a divination card for that. We can still only have four zombies, and our Herald of Purity is putting in a lot of work in here. In Act 3, there are three lab sentency trials. There's one in Crematorium. There's one in the place called the Marketplace, which I'll show you because we're going to run by it. Again, utilize the Marketplace, similar to the Fell Shrine Ruin in Act 2, if you feel like you're behind in levels, then you run it, even if you've already done the Ascendancy. If you feel like you're comfortable, skip it entirely, unless you need the uh, trial. And the last one is in the gardens before the Dominus uh, area. We are level 24 right now, so we're actually pretty good on uh, par with levels right now. 24 and a half in the 25 area. I'm there okay with that. My work so we're going to kill this one. Let's see if we Ray will want to get that Exterity Amulet, because soon we're going to want to have the availability to generate corpses versus boss fights. So getting that early is kind of comfortable. Talent, uh, so here's a rare helmet. We can go for this. Uh, what do we have here? There's some life. I can take that and put that pure to purity in my glove instead. So as you can see, a lot of lightning damage, but we're pretty decent on the lightning rest right now. So it's not too bad. Take this, log out, log in. Always log out, log in if you don't need to go back to the same area. Because when you log out, you remove your portals. But this is to save a portal scrolls. Once this is done, we can pick up a gem. We're taking Convocation. And now the real play style actually starts happening before we go Absolution to this. And this style uh, is uh, all about... Ooh. Never mind. Um, this style is all about uh, aggressive Convocation. So Convocation is really cool in the sense that it teleports your minions to you. That means you just need to summon them. And my next job is to run into packs of enemies, clicking Convocation, and they will all just die. And that's it. Now we're looking for the, the gates. Then you can see here, instead of casting, I'm going to do this instead and just Convocate and everything will just die. Now this, in combination with the Shield Charge, makes it even more smooth. Uh, bought Serena Shield from Amesia now. It feels awesome. I'm glad you're enjoying it, dude. It's a fun build. It's definitely not a meta build. It performs better than it did lastly, but it's very fun to play. So I'm glad you're enjoying it. 
Essences are great when you're leveling because you can utilize them as an Alcor on rare gear. Say we find a... Don't stand close to Essences, by the way. Um, so you can use those as an extra layer of uh, getting a rare item that is... Uh, a white item that is four-linked, for example, into a rare state and probably get some good mods. So that's one way of doing it. Um, Orb Binding is even better. You use them on an item to make it four-linked, for example. So you see here, I just convocated there, and all of these minions die without me... Well, all about one, apparently. Without me ever casting Absolution. You do have to cast Absolution uh, every now and then, because you refresh the duration of your minions, of course. So don't neglect it, obviously. But you don't have to spam it. So what we're going to do next time we go to town is look into that Desecrate uh, situation. We don't have a green socket yet, but we do want to get that uh, Dexterity in case we do find one. Here's a 250 mana. That is uh, better than that one. Two double blue pack. Nice. We do like that. That's a good life blast. Moving on. Do I have all three busts? I do. So we're going to go to the top left side. As you can see, we're just aggressively convocating our minions at this point because we don't really need to refresh them. It's a very comfortable playstyle playing it like this. That's a rare. Not gonna bother. And we go up here. See the videos of Volab's Solution? Apparently, it turns into a really good clear build. Yeah, my build guide has it. My build guide has it. So we're going to in, in, encounter um, now all the moves the boots are showing, of course. Now we're going to encounter that second. Um, we're going to encounter the second area where you can find the lab ascendancy trial. We are currently level 25, which is what I would like to be at least before I enter the docks. And the marketplace is right after the waypoint, which you'll find after this passage here. It's going to be on left or right side. This time it's right side, as you can see over here. So if you're behind the levels, you can go into the catacombs to get the trial and extra experience. Again, I'm 25. I'm not going to bother. And we already have the, um, the trials. We don't need to do it. We don't need to do it. Check my tree real quick. If you have any questions when you're leveling this, you can always check out the tree. Always check the tree or the guide, and then if it's not there or if you can't find it, you can always ask. Here's a four link, for example, but the wrong colors. We're not going to need that. We are going to need uh, uh, two red uh, for uh, absolution. Sorry, for dominating blow and melee splash when we're clearing. And we also are going to need... Um, minion damage and then we could use something in the lines of um uh in the lines of ruthless melee physical those are all red and not a second blue so three red and a blue is what we're looking for preferably with this now keep in mind that the guide i have in the pub they will recommend that you use uh, absolution all the way so we're going to deviate a little bit from that and show you how you can level with dominating blow all the way well welcome in chasos welcome in sir make sure you pick up the waypoint here by the way very important nodes we are bum rushing over here so we're gonna check that out keep that in mind In about la, la, in Act Four, we're gonna do the first lab, and the first lab is gonna give us Commander Darkness. The reason for that is that it gives ourselves and our minions some extra resistances, which alleviates a lot of pressure on our gearing. Very comfortable. Uh, in which order they're linked? No, it does not. It does not matter in Dark Pride which order they're linked. No. Dominating Blow can be used from level twenty-eight. Keep that in mind. And for those of you who are playing with me now on stream, if you are using something like Rigvolt's Curse, you're very likely very far ahead of me right now. 
I do want to use a shield because uh, I want to get a shield charge later onto this character. So now I will be lo looking into shields. If you can find something with a half decent life roll, I'll be happy. In this case, if we're some resistances on a life base, I might actually just keep that for the sake of it. If you don't have it, you can always just buy one from the vendor uh, with like minion, like a ES base shield that can roll minion stats. If you find one of those, and then also just uh, smack an essence on it, or if you have an Alcor spare, you can use that as well. Not a must, it's just to optimize your gearing a little bit, or make it improve it rather than optimizing. As you can see here, I don't really care too much about killing all the rares unless they die very quickly. I am staying for the blue packs of enemies, and I'm only staying for bigger packs of enemies in general. The reason for this is to make sure that my time spent killing things is uh, optimal rather than sorting down everything, because then I'll spend so many hours in every act, and let's keep that down, shall we? So the rare I do just saw up there, I'm going to skip that and log out, log in. The reason for this is to save portal scrolls again. Now we're going to vendor these things and hand in the quest. Need something. So in this case, we're going to vendor those. Same and way. I'm limited on backspace because I don't want to use a currency. I have my stash for this. I want to show a leak start first to it. So I take the skill point. We do this. Don't forget to spec the nodes. We're going to go for the left hand side first because those are worth more damage for us. And now we are going to. Uh, right. We have to go to. Um... Battlefront and go to the right side. Echo build? Yes, sir. As you can see, we still haven't leveled our vitality. And the reason for that is very simple. We don't need it, and our zombies are almost averse as any type of con is staying alive right now. Once we've gotten these nodes, I will then take the damage and uh, the other leftover nodes we've skipped so far. Not too important. But as you can see, I've barely specced into any life nodes, and the reason for that is I don't need it. My minions are literally tanking everything for me. If they manage to hit me, I will always run a big risk of dying because of lack of actual life nodes, of course. But this build is designed to be very comfortable where you don't have to worry too much about that even happening in the first place. And even if it does, you're not guaranteed to get on shots. So you can still take a beat. I'd love to see the insides of this Pretty straightforward. I can't abide housework. Blue pack of enemies, get my minions out, and they're dead. And we move on. Convocation, they will die without me touching them. And keep moving. I should have looted that portal scroll, that's my bad. I tend to not really care about running back for scrolls, but if I see the scrolls, I will try to make sure I loot it. Another blue pack of enemies, I do want to make sure they're dead. Moving on. No, 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 we're gonna level with, like, Absolution already have a video like this, uh, the entire leveling approach, and a TLDR video of it on uh, my YouTube channel. Uh, this will also be uploaded entirely to YouTube, but I wanted to show uh, how you can actually level with Dominating Blow. It's really fun uh, to play, and it gives me an excuse to uh, to play with Evolve version, because I haven't tried it out myself. I've only seen it in action. I really want to play with it. It's gonna be fun. We take the waypoint, and we keep moving. We're going for the Cockroach Lady. And that's it. So these are uniques. I have a tendency of surging these down because they die pretty quickly. And unique enemies have a higher chance of dropping uh, rarer items. So I can give you some rares or even uniques if you're lucky. Little higher probability, which is why I bother killing them since they die fast. It's all about trying to optimize how much time you're spending attacking something. If that's worth your time invested, if you want to speed this up. Because most people, myself included... Absolutely hate running and leveling through the campaign. It's boring. It's dull. So for me, it's all about making that that uh, experience uh, two things: either as fast as possible by practicing it, or making it as fun as possible by playing whatever build I'm supposed to be playing, even if it might not be the meta. So this is evasion energy shield base. I'm not going to loot that because we already determined that the sockets I need is red, 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 and a blue. Which means that anything that is armor and of energy shield, or preferably pure armor base, will be easier to use chromatics for color, should it come to that. I have not found any binding orbs yet, so we're going to be a little bit careful. We are also in a point where we can start looking at our vendors to see if the armor vendor sells a four link. Very important to do that as well, and we're going to do that right now, rather than heading back to the other area. Now we get our dexterity amulet, which is why we never purchased it. Go. So we do this. Uh, okay, that was absolute dog shit. It doesn't matter. We do have a green socket, so I will socket it by desecrate. And obviously, again, 
put a goddamn MTX on it. You got to make that shit look good. Look at that. Sexy. So, uh, actually, I do have for skater butts. I have a cool one for that. Nice. Now we go back to town. And that is to sell anything you need to sell. We don't have that situation happening right now, but we will check the Hargan for a red, 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 blue four link uh, or armor energy shield base. This is an armor energy shield base for one transmutation, which we have. Armor energy shield is easy to color, but preferably it would be better to have a four link in a pure armor. We don't have access to that on any pieces. The reason we're avoiding the boots is because we do need those to have movement speed. I will buy this because I have two chromes right here and we can see if we can hit it. Um, and use some chromes unless we find something else for it. Green. So that's what I'm going to be doing now. I'll be spending some chromes on that. I'm not going to roll it with anything until we hit the colors that we need. Good morning, Coats. How you doing, dude? So I can call him as a ones with a trigger. Uh, yes, I made a video about that as well. Uh, type this on YouTube and check it out. It explains the mechanic of it, where to get it, how to get it, and how it works and everything. Everything around it. The trigger crafts. Moving on, and now we have this. That rare's taking too long. And we are level 28. We can now use Dominating Blow. However, before we do so, we're going to want to go to a shield. We also need to kill General Gravy Sauce, or Gravicious, and he is up here. We're going to kill this guy, and we are going to do this. Spec the damage. And now, what you'll do is we've reached the point where you can start looking at the end game skill tree in the PUB. There are some general pointers of what you can do beforehand, uh, but in this case, we will be a aiming to um, to get ourselves. Um, we'll be aiming to get ourselves the um, the end game links whenever we have the availability for it. So as you can see here, now that we have Desecrate available, we will be casting Absolution when we need to summon them, and we will also be resummoning zombies when we have all our Absolution minions. Always prioritize the Absolution minions when you're leveling like this. I'm level 28, so just one level below. I'm not going to stop unless the packs are big enough, because I feel comfortable. This is a little bit different from the Act 1, where I would prefer to be a level or two higher. Now, I'm rather want to be a level below or on the level of the area in general from here to make it as optimal as possible for me. And this is all based on how comfortable you are. So this rare seems to be dying fast enough for me to bother killing. And with corpses, you can use your flesh offering if you have that equipped. And now we are going to be looking into getting a green and a red link somewhere. And the reason we're going to be looking for that... Uh, thunderstorm outside. Jesus. The reason we're looking for that is that uh, once we are done with this area and we get to the Act 3 library quest, we're going to want to do that so we can equip ourselves with um, Fast Attack Shield Charge. I accidentally leveled my Desecrate there. That just makes my Desecrate require more dexterity and cost more mana, so try to avoid that. That's a mistake. It happens. Mistakes do happen. Never kill this guy. It takes forever to kill, and he uh, runs the risk of dying. There, we got redemption for the damage nodes. And the more we do this, the more damage we'll be doing. And what I'm doing now is I am looking for the colors I need so I can switch to Dominating Blow. I'm literally looking to do that. I don't care about optimizing the absolution or anything like that. The only goal right now is get the colors I need so I can play um, so I can play the Dominating Blow. No scared about combustion. Uh, not needed. Not needed. Yeah, moving on. We don't need to identify that either. So as you can see now, we're mostly just aggressively convocating onto enemies. And that's literally it. Every time we convocate, the enemies will just literally fall over. And Dominating Blow play style is very similar to that. Blue pack, make sure you kill them. They're worth the experience. Look for the long stairs. That's how you progress faster in these areas. Or get to the next area. This unique dies very fast, as you can see. That's a dead end. Probably up here. Yes, sir. 
Once you get to this stage, there's two carts on one side and one cart on the other. Go to the side there's one cart in Act uh, 7, I think it is. Uh, I think it's 7. Uh, or Act 8. No, 7. 8. The other area where this is version is in cold later in the campaign, there will be flower pots. Go to the area where there is one flower pot. The other, one, other side is a dead end. There are these small indicators in most, if not all, zones that will tell you which area you should decide you should go to to continue your progression. That is one of the tells in this area. Is Vol DB better than uh, Quality DB? Uh, yes, 100% cer certain of that. But you can get a Vol version of that as well, though. Keep that in mind. So apparently we're going for full clear here. Go to the next zone. Uh, in here. And we don't really need anything else. We just need to get some chromatics to color it. You can buy items from the vendors that have three linked sockets that have one of each color or more. But one of each color uh, will give you a uh, chromatic orb back. That's one way during the early stage of a league start. Get chromatic orbs. So that you can color that item. In our case, it would be easier to hit our colors on a pure armor base. So what we're looking to do right now is check the vendors when we are ready for it. Go back and kill those because that's a blue pack. We're going to check the vendors when we're done here and see if we can actually squeeze the out the colors we need for the sake of going in. Don't need long. Power wasted on a feeble imagination. Do, do. Okay, so if she goes blue face here, this uh, archer face, always try to stay away from her because she hurts a lot in that face. She did it again. Normally, I try to stay on the opposite side of my minions. That way, she'll be shooting my minions rather than me. Get some corpses out so I can utilize... Um, so I can utilize... Um, Everything else. Damn you. Uh, that has life and all resistance. That is better than the other shield I saved. So let's steal way, that one. Yeah. Don't forget the vendor recipe up here. Sorry, the benchcraft recipe up here. When you're playing. Um, now we're going to hand in the quest. This is one of the quests I actually tend to forget to hand in. Because you have to talk to this guy. Get the book. Do that. Hello. Sell everything that we need Watch to sell. Name. And now we can check the vendor. Do you have a re recipe? Chrome recipe? Watch no. I'm going to take these nodes. Mara Moa, you can uh, pick up whatever you need here for your endgame tree, if there's anything you can uh, need. In this case, there's no Deeran. Thanks so much for three months, man. Appreciate that, dude. Thank you, sir. Same thing here. Uh, we check for chromes. This is one transportation, which we have. I'll get a chromatic orb for that one. Three linked of each color. Anything else? Any pure armor four linked? I don't see any. Unless I'm blind, I might be. And that's it. So then we sell this one and we'll now have a chromatic orb and we can do this. We still haven't gotten the colors we need. And in that case, I will stick to absolution till I do. We got the K, the uh, laboratory, uh, lab senesi nodes, sorry, trial nodes are in crematorium, the uh, catacombs, and the next one is up in the garden. And that is where we're going to head right now. Playing Teens Commander and trying to understand why he uses Dancing Dervies. They don't appear to trigger Rampage or Summon the Dervies with the AG hold a weapon. That is correct, but we're using it because the Dancing Dervies is a very effective weapon in terms of the damage and attack speed mostly, which is why it is used by uh, in that guide, because it's better to do that than trying to get a rare, because a rare equivalent of that would be much, much more expensive. So we're not using it for the trigger of the Rampage. We're using it to have those as actual damaging minions. So now we'll be resummoning our minions, because they died. Uh, four zombies still. Follow the, uh, I was about to say yellow brick road, but follow the, uh, the road here. This will lead you to the waypoint. Now, if I go right here, I'll get to, the, uh, to Dominus. If I go left, I will go to the library. If you need the trial, also go left and then break off to the right when you see the doorway. We are going to follow the road and get into the library. Simply because we need to get Feeding Frenzy. This is an extremely good buff to have on your utility minions. In our case, the Zombies for a minion build. This can be equipped at level 31. So in here, we need to get to Killing the Essence, for example. Hello, Mama. 
Uh, we are looking for a, um, a lower level area and in which we will find an NPC called Siosa who will tell us to pick up some uh, scrolls in a, another level further down. We'll be going there. Don't level desecrate so it shows up down here instead. And we won. Aggressive convocation. Shouldn't need to cast my abilities that often now. This is basically it. <clears throat> Colossal Mana Flask. Okay, that's a nice dead end. As you can see, I haven't really cast my Absolution that much. I'm only Convocating because the duration of my minions is pretty solid. And my minions will still kill everything anyways. Bomb Elite Starter. I'm not, I've am not. never been a big fan of Bomb Abilts in general. As you can see, my Absolution minions are now gone. So with the help of our Utility minions, I will now hit... Uh, the first pack of enemies I see to get some new absolution minions out. Here's the waypoint. Now, if you want to be fast, you don't have to talk to her, but I will talk to him now. And he tells oh, me to pick up four golden pages. So we're going to go find that area. Uh, let's skip that. It takes too long. Instead, we'll kill these. Now I have my absolution minions again, and I will just run around and aggressively convocate again. This is how absolution levels throughout the entire campaign. It's, it's how the builds actually played in the end game as well. So it's. This is just Absolution showing off. We will kill this one. It didn't die that slow. Let's get something nice. We got a Strength Amulet. Is it worth looking at? There's Dexterity. You know what? We will take it. That's dead end though. Absolution is the best way to level minion builds. It's just that it gets kind of dull doing a build that you have to switch the ability you're playing with after you're done with a campaign and never liked it so if i can play a build with the ability i'm supposed to use in the end game i will i find that more enjoyable even if it can be a bit slower this is more about getting used to the play style right and so now that i've taken the big damage notes here on the left hand side i have two choices i can go for damage in here and more zombies uh, and I can also go for more life notes, or I can take the reservation. So what I'll be doing, I feel kind of comfortable with as many meat shield minions tanking for me. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is... Did I really miss the path downwards, or am I going crazy? I might... Am I going crazy? Did I miss it? Am I just getting unlucky doing a full clear in here? What's happening? Interesting. Yeah, but we're not looking at the uh, leveling. So we're going to look at the loose candle. Look for this one. And uh, heading into the archives. This is where we find the golden pages. This is not enemy weapon. This is dominating blow. And I'm showcasing the leveling from start to finish with this. Throughout the campaign to start with in today's stream and this will be uploaded entirely onto youtube but uh yeah how you doing wolf you're good to see man we uh we will be um not doing the only twink i'm using is uh a level 20 uh, level one vol dominating blow skill gem that's the only thing i'm gonna take start of the stream in this video we um talked about different gear you could use to level with uh but we are all targeting those gear pieces to level with the dominating blow again if you want to be super fast Level with something else. Rig Vulture Crest and Absolution. You're done till yellow tier maps. With just that alone. It's absolutely insane. But um, it's not as fun as the level with the build you're supposed to be using. And in the end, it's a game. You're supposed to have fun with it. We got two golden pages. We need uh, two more. Get that corner out. Kill these. That is a chromatic recipe. We'll take that because we are going to need that to get the colors right. Hopefully, we'll have the colors for this before uh, we are done with this area. Because we're going to be moving some gems around when we're done here. Full tail library, I know, right? Yet to try absolution for leveling. Oh, absolution leveling is... Whew. Especially if you have all absolution. The vault skill is so good for clearing. It's insane. So now we've uh, gotten all the pages. Since we did take the um, waypoint, we can log out to save a portal scroll and take the waypoint back. Now, what's really important with this is that, you first off, I will sell everything here. 
and then see if there's any chromatic recipes i'll use that nope that's not what we need we need three freaking um red no pure armor piece no binding orb getting a little bit unlucky here so what we're looking for is chromatic recipes still haven't found any so we will sell this and move on now what's really important here is that you bring yourself the currency with you from your stash because when you buy gems from this quest area it will not use your stash however the quest rewards gives us feeding frenzy that's what we were looking for so we will take that into our zombies this allows us to have raised zombie with feeding frenzy and allow that buff to scale everything in here we can buy things like a shield charge as a transportation right there there's faster attacks which cost a transportation which i can't afford so i can chill with that so i can just level that up and put shield charge in i could equip the shield right now moving flame dash away i don't have a green socket spare anywhere so i can't really do that so we're gonna wait with the shield for now and then we spec into aura reservation i think we'll do actually and uh, then we move on that's about it now we're gonna take that right hand side path and I still can't use shield choice because I don't have a shield equipped. So we do need to get some colors sorted. And as you can see, we're going to use Absolution till we have the colors to go into Dominion Low. And then we will do that. <laughs> I hit it with Quack One. Remember, Dominus, what goes up must come down. <clears throat> I think that for the people that are playing with us right now, that if you use the twink gear, you're very likely pretty far ahead of me right now. I had a bit unlucky uh, take with it comes to the movement speed boots, and uh, we've been spending some time showing things around. So far, so good. Twinking is fine. A lot of, uh, not gonna, not gonna lie. I mean, it's definitely, definitely enjoyable for sure. The amount of speed you can pick up with things like Rigvolt's first, for example, or. You know, bright beak and uh, running around uh, 70 steps and whatnot. It's just powers through the campaign so fast. Campaign is um, annoying as fuck. So we got a transportation here that allows us to get that faster attacks. But we do need a green and a red link for that to work. So till then, I don't really care too much. We also have to keep in mind that when we do this transition into dominating blow, we are unable to use wands. So I now I need to make sure that not only am I looking for having a shield equipped, I'm also looking for a weapon, but we can buy any claw from the vendor and be done with it. So that's less of an issue. What is the problem, though, is that I'd rather make sure that I switch to this when I have a four link. And the reason for that is very simple. We want to make sure that we do good damage instead of slowing ourselves down even more than, than needed, because that's going to feel very bad. So it will be a slightly slower than Absolution in general to level with. So again, we need to get this three red and a blue. Obviously, like I said before, a pure armor piece would have been much easier to color than this. How much of a change um, enemy weapon did for the Spectre build? How much it took to change it? Very little. Very little. Very little, I would say. As a pair of red gauntlets, actually, we don't even need that. Uh, we can go through here. Refresh my minions a little bit by hitting them. And if not, then we just convocate. And it's okay not to have Dominion Blow in Act 3. We can switch later if it's so. If that's the case. We're looking for chromatics. So we're checking our vendors. We're checking out what the loot we get from uh, uh, from killing. And we're trying to get ourselves that uh, the color sword, basically. It gave me a lot of damage and means of ability. Yeah. As long as you're having fun or you're enjoying it, that's what matters in the end. Played with that before. Fair enough. Never played Dominion Blow is like. It's uh it's hard to put words on how it feels, in my opinion. It, it's very enjoyable. Ooh, look at that. Hello, Dark Seer. I'm not gonna use it, it doesn't matter um let's see we gotta go over here refresh our minions i 
don't think I would use uh, animate weapon for the Spectre build personally. I think that it's just way too socket starved to use both combined. Personally. Oh, I'm frozen. Monka. You have it in your guide? In my pure Spectre build? No. Bumby, my pure Spectre guy does not use animate weapon. But an the animate guardian, like change of command, can't use Spectres. The, the pure the the anime yes, weapon yes, build yes. has utility specters yes but not not doing damage with the specter stuff which when the mini builds is tankiest Oof. that completely depends i mean like poison srs with spell suppression is hilariously tanky most of my high body mini builds with block go ci and it's hilariously tanky as well face of God, like super tanky that's a nice ring let's use that and you see my resistances my are getting prevails. better. So here I try to use Convocation to get my minions out of that explosion. Um, so right now I don't have all my absolution. Now I do. Now I will resummon my zombies if they've died. Die in awe. Ouch. Ouch. The touch of God. Convocate the minions out of that explosion. And that's it. And now he's dead. Phase two. This world is an illusion, Exile. Oh, you mean anime guardian inside of it? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's crazy good. Yes, absolutely. Let's see. We serve this guy down. Just holding down right click. Stay away from the cleave if you can dodge it. It provides poison. Uh, sorry, bleed. Uh, if you're running out of mana, which happens quite often in this fight, if you miss like. You can get charged by killing the adds. Uh, if not, just use a portal scroll and port back to town. But you should have so much damage that this guy will die either way. Uh, so in this case, we can look at a, a weapon here. Net some attack speed, 157 APS is not bad. Uh, we do need a red and a green link, but this is not four link. But I will take this in case we can find another four link. Outside of that, we can look into another shield if we find a better one. It wasn't, so we're going to move on. You should take these things to vendor, but since I have all my currency in my, in my inventory, just to make sure I don't use my uh, stash currency, it's um, a little bit tight for me. Let's see where it comes from. Well, you guys now get bored of redoing the story by practicing and making it go faster. The faster you go through it, the better. And that's the purpose of, uh, of this video that we're uploading entirely on YouTube now, is to help people get better at it. So the good thing with getting into Act 4 is two things. One, we're going to do the, um, we're going to be doing the lab as soon as I switch over to Dominating Blow. And the other part is now we have two different vendors to look for another other four links and the chromatic orbs or recipes. And we're taking the left hand side around there. And now it's also time for us to start getting some more life nodes. Like the better you practice at going through this, the the faster you'll be able to play it, and the less annoying the campaign becomes. Do flesh offering. You can kill that rare since we have so much damage there. Diamond flask. White herald of purity. Uh, it is not optimal to use, but what it does, it provides layers of defense, which is very comfortable for new and newer players. And this is the damage up of single target right now. And that's thanks to all the minions we're using. Definitely not optimal to use, but it helps a lot to have decoys for enemies to hit rather than you. So for new and newer players, I actually recommend using Absolution together with Herald Purity when you're leveling. It's just very comfortable. Let's see. Now we're looking for that four link. We can get one here. <clears throat> I 
Next stage, check in Kira. What do you have for us? Any Chrome's recipes? I don't see any. I don't see any four links either. There is one right there, but wrong basis. We're not going to use it. Here's a claw, for example. But we do have a dagger right now, so we're fine. This claw would be even better, so I will take that instead. The reason for that is that it has 1.6 attack speed. This has 1.57 with an attack speed rule. So that's already better in that sense. That means we could put something like this. Uh, or we can put something like this. Not that it matters too much, but in this case, uh, I will use an Alcorb on it. And we got complete jack shit. It doesn't matter. Thanks so much. More Z for the two months prime. Appreciate that, man. Thank you, sir. We will check the vendor again in Sarn Encampment. Real quick. Reason for this is if we can find Chrome recipes or another four link to do a quick check on the vendors to get this done. Uh, I did not find any. Uh, so we're going to move on. So now we've reached a point where I am literally just waiting for me to be able to go into Dominic Blow with the sockets. Where can I stick, uh, catch the frost bears? You can come to my global channel in game. Slash global 6666. So we do this, get some minions out. Convocation, looking for crow. Ooh, here we go. Now I can throw this armor out. This is much easier to color. Right there. All I need is one blue out of it. Hybrid uh, pieces are a bit more expensive and annoying to color in general. So a four red linked. Good to go. We just need chromes now. And a little bit of luck. You see how fast this guy dies? It's just crazy how much damage you can do with a build like this. That's your lovely. And nothing we care about. We take that. Save your portal scrolls by logging out, logging in. Oh, is that hybrid evasion? Oh, it was. That's my bad. <laughs> I thought it was pure, man. And I tossed the other one out. Oh my god. We're not going to use the five link, though. May fear guide you. We're not going to use the five link, okay? We're not going to use the five link, but sometimes that can happen. <laughs> happen when you... Oh, God, okay. Anyways, we have what we need to play um, Dominating Blown Eyes. We're going to do that. Uh, first, we're going to choose an essence to use. This one gives cold rest, and uh, this one gives me avoid being shocked. We're going to use the cold rest. Do that. That's all right. We'll take this. And then we're going to decide our support chimps and what we need. Vitality is no longer needed. This is no longer needed. We don't need that. We will vendor that. Yes. Uh, so we sell that one. We're going to use the claw. We're going to use the shield. And we're going to sell those for more wisdom scrolls. You will be remembered. We will take this. We need a weapon which requires us to have way more dexterity. Which means that in this case, it might be wise for us to get to a plus 30 dexterity node. That can be a bit tough. So in our case, we might want to buy another one uh, weapon meanwhile. So, for example, uh, any daggers, stuff like that, that has a good attack speed, uh, which we sold earlier, for example. That could have done uh, done really well in this case. Here's one a sword for 145 eight attacks per second. That's perfectly fine to use as well. Um, so we could use this if we wanted to. However, I would rather make us have that dexterity covered. We're lacking 10 dexterity. So if we're looking at the tree uh, of where we're getting dexterity, we have taken everything we're supposed to right now. So what you could do then is take these two nodes to get that if you'd like to. So that is a possibility early on, not really needed later. This allows me to equip this, and now we're going to fix the gems and see what we're actually going to be using. Now, as I mentioned before, I will be utilizing a vol version of this uh, right there. Um... And we'll take that, and we will use a regular, and we will have not this checked. And this one is just buffing it, uh, so we will take that. And now we are going to set up the rest of this. It was Plague Shard. Uh, it was this one. Um, and then we're going to be playing it that way. Ooh. 
we want zombies and we want them linked with feeding frenzy we want dominating blow according to the end game links we'll check the build tree right now we're going to use minion damage we want to use melee splash for clearing and then we have two more um uh, two more sockets. Sorry, sorry. Dominating blow, mini damage, melee splash, and then we can use melee physical, for example, or ruthless. We'll be using melee physical in this case. Um, and uh, that means we want those two linked. We want mini damage in this. We're not going to use that fifth link. We don't need absolution anymore. We don't need elemental focus. We would prefer to have desecrate somewhere, so we'll use that. We also want flesh offering somewhere, so we'll use that. We don't need these. Uh, so I need two blue linked, which I can fit in the helmet. And the thing we're lacking the most right now is a green and a red linked socket. The reason for that is for the shield charge, which we have down here right now. So I could color this because it's armor evasion and see if we get lucky. I don't have a chrome though, so I'll be doing that at a later stage. First off, Act 1 sells melee splash. Act 2 sells melee physical. If you can't get them from vendors, you can always check the library request in Act 3 like we did. Because of these things. I mean, here, we'll pick up the melee splash. And then we want the melee physical. There was a chrome in the shop. I'll check it out. And in here, we'll check for Yina. And melee physical. Boom. I'm not going to use the five link because we got lucky with that. Since we're here, we could check for those chrome recipes again. Uh, don't see any here. There's, oh, there's one right there. We'll take that as an example. We sell this. We can then use that chrome. Double green is not what we needed. We can actually even try using a chrome on it. See if a jeweler, see if we get lucky. We didn't. It doesn't really matter. What do you want? Uh, was there a chrome I missed in here? It's not super important. There's a there's a shield with the correct colors though. That's a that is a chrome for an alteration. That's pretty expensive early on, but definitely an option if you like. So chrome, double green. All right, doesn't really matter. Then we can check the Ferratas and Vanya. They sell jewelers for your alteration. So I'll do that, and we'll do this. We'll buy one more. Not that it matters. Oh my god, I double click. Sorry. Fuck it. Oh, for fuck's sake. Anyways, uh, that is an option that you can do. Um, and the faster attacks, I'm pretty sure you can't get that um, as a um, as a witch. But I'll double check it. Yes. Uh, you do not, so you have to go into town to uh, to library to buy it. I don't want to use that many sockets because um, I stole a jeweler for myself. Uh, so we'll buy that over here. And another thing to keep in mind now is that now we are going to be wanting to run this uh, with uh, the auras for the end game. So we check the tree for end game and look at the auras. We're going to run Tempest Shield, Precision, we're going to run Pride, Determination. So it's not just doing pure physical damage. And we're right now, we're using Herald of Purity uh, and we're running uh, with uh, Skitter Bots. We will then take a look at if we're going to need those in this version. The guide is telling us that we're going to run a stone golem with Mame. Now, we could pick up Mame uh, very easily here uh, for a transmutation, which we don't have right now, and socket and our shield because we're going to get a golem very soon. And then that's covered. That means that the next stuff we're looking at the uh, skill is pride. Do we have access to a pride? That's an alteration, which I can't afford right now. So we'll be buying a pride aura. I do need another red color for that, though. So right now, we're not going to do much. Then we can always check, is there any spells that I don't need at all right now? Uh, we can put the skater bots down there. It doesn't really matter. Again, it's a lot about a mix and match at this point. Let's see what you can fit. How do you hide your desk level up? By right-clicking the plus sign rather than uh, left-clicking it. Level 35 will be able to equip this uh, golem, and the golem will be taken in the early stage. It's going to be a stone golem for defensive purposes. Later, you can run a. Um, later, you can run a. Um, carrying golem for more damage. It's uh, all up to you. And now we are playing Dominating Blow. 
And the way it looks is this. Let's get my auras active. Uh, keybinds, keybinds. Let's do it this way. We want to get some zombies out. We can have four. We get them out and they will do help us with the initial kill. And as you can see now with shield charge, we're going in and then we're aggressively convocating and our minions are essentially going to kill everything for us. And this is the play style of dominating blow as your lovely. Now with absolution, you could have done the shield charge strategy as well, of course, and it would be pretty fast to go with. And as you can see, it's a little bit of a speed difference with shield charging than what we did before, right? And this is thanks to the faster attacks supported with them as well. Requires a shield though. That's a decent ass helmet. We'll be uh, rolling that one momentarily. And we're going to do the first lab as well, which will speed us up and give us better defenses. But most importantly, some stats that's going to cover our minions resistances as well. And uh, get the golem out as well. Thanks for the reminder chats. Appreciate it. So we do this. We smack these guys. Come on, get my minions out. I'm going to start using the vol version now as well. Let's see how that feels. We can use an essence. Uh, we'll fuck it. All right, that's really bad, but we'll use it. So we have these up here. We can even have. I uh, can throw that one out. Now we need it to vendor actually, and moving on. Oh, that hurts. Oh, man. That is one big ass fucking minion, dude. Yeesh. Oh, I have a mana siphoner. <laughs> uh, so what's really cool with Dominating Blow is that the rares that you get, they are... Um, they're taking the modifiers from the enemy that you kill. So if you kill a mana siphoner, the blue area here, now that's, that's your minion has that now. And the vault version is so <laughs> cool. <laughs> oh, that's the jeweler. I will toss that out because I used another one from uh, my own stash earlier. So this is uh, this is leveling with uh, dominating blow. Not much is gonna change from here on till we're done with the entire campaign. So I'll go through the list because we're gonna change the auras a little bit because we're not using the correct auras right now, and that's basically it. This is it. This is dominating blow now. We're going to do the lab, actually, as soon as we get to the next waypoint, I think. <laughs> it's so big! <laughs> oh, man. I like it. So the important part here is if you see your minions dying, like your zombies, that they died here in my case, I'll just resummon them. And that's it. Aggressive convocation, hit the enemies uh, one or two times because your minions are going to kill them anyways. And the reason we don't check the button here is so that our character is forced to actually move up to hit something. And what's really important now is to um, make sure that we get ourselves um, resolute techniques. It's a keystone on the middle left side of the tree. The, uh, that will basically give us the possibility of never missing our attacks. Since our damage is completely useless, we want to go down there. So I will finish my auras and then I'm going to run down for resolute techniques. And then I'll take the starting nose on the right hand side as well. It's a matter of personal preference there. You can do both, both styles. My weapon gives me no damage. The only thing my weapon is doing is giving me um, attack speed, which is why I purchased a claw. And made sure that we have enough dexterity for it. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do the labyrinth. Don't blow MTX. I believe I have one actually. Good thing you mentioned. I don't. I'm going to buy it. Fuck it. Uh, so we have that. I have a golem. MT I don't. I'm using those on the other character actually. A shield charge. I'm going to use this. Gotta look ugly. 
Y se dice que hoy Necromancer baby. Before the gates of the Lord's labyrinth. Within And we're going to the normal lab. What's really important here is that you can always utilize the best website in the game for this to help, which is pwlab.com. However, for a normal lab, you don't need it. And the reason for that is very simple. Always go top right and you will you will hit the right spots. It's very easy to tell. Again, skipping rares. If they're not dying too easily or easy, then I'm just gonna do this. Use my ball absolute. <laughs> Dude, I love the effect of how he summoned, man. This big portal shows up and he just steps out of it. Love it, dude. It's actually pretty enjoyable. And right, move in here. That's it. Oh, the weary traveler draws an emperor is only as efficient as those he commands. I'm lacking the maim support. We have an alteration to buy that. Uh, I needed a transmutation for something as well. <laughs> that guy, man. Now we can use Desecrate to generate corpses for us to use Flesh Offering to give ourselves even bigger damage Why outputs. Goddess, what he ambition. looks fucking dope, man. 24 second duration for the soul game prevention, though. Maybe it's worth Only stacking three charges before you use it. Ascendant. You're the biggest! Nice. We've already reached the point now, being in Act 4, that we could start looking into going towards the endgame tree instead. The minion lasts 50 seconds, by the way. The big guy lasts 50 seconds. And the regular small ones last 32.8 seconds with uh, my current uh, tree. And that is just aggressive convocation. Teleport our minions to us. And that's about it. We do want to sell that. Level it up. Move on. Double check so that we're going the right way. We are not. So we can go back and then take the other side. In this case, that would be on the left hand side. I can see, actually, I see that this one's going to be annoying. So let's just do it that way. Doesn't matter. I've been able to summon three, they time out, then uh well, then resummon three. That seems reasonable. For all the help you providing less than three. I guess I broke in for the uh two months, but I appreciate that you think. So this guy will now become a rare guy in my army. Some of these guys actually provides auras. Those auras will obviously be applied to me as well. We'll do this. I don't think you'll get three when you're um, when you're leveling like this in areas. I think in maps you'll very easily get that though. So now we go to the trial. And if you want to be picky, you can always switch your um, when the time comes to slash from multi strike for single targets specifically if you so choose. The emperor entertained out and the world attends. It's all about just hitting this guy. It's all about just hitting him. <laughs> oh my god, man. That's how big! Leadership is a life sentence. <laughs> oh, man. You were born for this. So yeah, you're just filling the screen uh, with minions. It's a fire that spreads quickly if the forest is dry. <laughs> So big! Alright, next. I like this. This is really enjoyable. This build is a very, very enjoyable build to play in general. So we're gonna check our resistances a little bit. As you can see, we're kind of good on fire, but the rest is kind of ass right now. This will be something we need to look at more and more now as we progress through the rest of the campaign. Because we are in Act 4, we're gonna need to fix that. This is a note that we're taking up right now. Uh, is going to fix large portions of that alone. So 
So that's a passage. It's not the right way, so we go to the other side this time. Which should be over there. Over here. Thoughts on the staff variant of the build? I don't think that the staff variant will be good because you want to have the shield charge. The speed you get using shield charge is insanely effective. Kill some enemies and move on is what we're doing. And uh, we're going to go for the next area. Use convocation aggressively to get all your minions in play. As per usual. There's another rare guy. Oops, I got stuck there. This is basically it. That's the wrong way. We need to go to the right hand side. Here it is. Yep. And that's it. An aspirant can afford to be promising. An emperor must kill you must navigate your empire. That's basically it. Not much more is gonna change. Now, if you had something like a six link or something, obviously it would do even more damage. These big fuckers, dude. Holy. Love it. Triumphant at last. Triumphant. Uh, not really gonna bother going through the gears. Um, so we level up. We are going to take life notes, and the reason we do that is because we already have a lot. But before that, I will take this note. The reason for this is damage, but we get an extra zombie, which is another layer of defense for us. Before the goddess of justice, you and then we check worthy. this. Uh, Receive care. our blessing. We go for Necromancer, and the very first node for the physical version is Commander of Darkness. Our minions get 30% elemental rest, I get 30% elemental rest. And that puts me on capped fire, almost capped cold, and I'm pretty behind on lightning. Because once we're done with Act 5, we're going to lose 30% all resistance, or elemental rest, rather. So that is happening. We are going to vendor our rare scrap items we don't need anymore and then we're gonna move on and from here on out it's all about speed but we have the enough uh, stats to uh, currency to purchase the ores we talked about <clears throat> um not rescue techniques i will be going for rescue techniques as well so we're gonna pick up pride i need a red socket for this we have that check i'll put that in there this is currently reserving a lot more mana than we can um so we're not gonna be able to run it and the other gem I was going to buy was a maim support. And we put that with our golem. And that's oh, it. Now I can disable my skitter bots and run pride instead. Because we no longer need to run the skitter bots. Because that's not supposed to be in our endgame tree. Which you can verify by checking out this. We have bone offering instead of flesh offering. Which we can change later. We're supposed to use a vulnerability curse for later on. Uh, we are supposed to use Determination, Pride, and a Precision and Tempest Shield, and then the Zombie AG, Spectre, Stone Golem with the Maim, Convocation. We have most of the things sorted, so I'm just going to stick to this tree. So what I want now is a little bit of extra life nodes in these nodes. So I'll take this node, and I'll take this node, and this node as we move towards uh, Resolute Techniques. And that's basically the play. So now we move on. It's busy. Very straightforward. And from here on out, it's just about trying to squeeze in more and more of what you have in the end game uh, into the build. We can now have still four zombies. Next level, we'll be able to have five. And what's going to happen now is that our golem is going to apply, apply a debuff with maim, which will increase the damage output of the rest of our minions as well. This is all covered in the build guide, of course. This is going to be such a long video on YouTube, dude. Holy shit. Very fun, though. And 
help me like, yeah for character until the mouse is swapping points too much currency wasted for a game that is completely irrelevant especially for software at least in my opinion so we do this and then we get some big boys in here Oh my god. It's pretty straightforward. Oh my god. They look fucking dope, man. Vol DB better than old quality DB? Uh, yes, but you want the Vol old quality if you want to go big dick with it. that damage that is comfortable so what pride is doing is that it, as long as the enemies are close to you you they will take increased amount of physical damage as they stand close to you and uh, since we're doing pure fist in this specific version we will be utilizing that quite extensively since we are going to be in melee range of our enemies at all times, this is obviously not going to be a problem. There we go, another level. We are taking that node. We get a fifth zombie from that. They look hella dope though, holy shit. Next. People of the gutters, steal your planet. <laughs> oh man. I, I'm kinda curious if we're gonna do like a higher budget version of these guys guys on stream later on. This is hella nice. Left side by the way after this waypoint to get faster to the end. So as you can see, we're not doing much damage. It's basically just our zombies and our golem that is helping us kill. Later, we'll have specters and uh, enemy guardian as well. They're just the ones helping you to get that initial kill. So you'd rather avoid in a map later to start off by hitting like a juicy essence mob or a rare. Like you'd rather have like a blue or white pack of enemies to uh, to hit. In maps later, you're going to have a much higher uptime of your evolved skills for sure. Absolutely. And I would recommend waiting till that number on Vol Absolution has... Uh, so not Absolution, I mean Dominating Blow. Having uh, three uh, stacks. Once I have three, you summon all of them because the soul gain prevention uh, is applied either way. So now I get three out and now I'm going to be able to get souls after 24 seconds have passed. But till then, we just go crazy. Yeah, they, they hit pretty hard. That's a chrome. No chance, sorry. So you, as you can see on the my action bar, my uh, vol absolute sorry vol dominating low still hasn't getting it, it is still prevented from getting souls. And now I'm getting souls, and I already filled up uh, one charge there. So it goes pretty fast, and I still have my minions out for another 15 seconds or so. Um, before they go away. I think they're gonna go away before this fight starts, though, Dazzy. Oh, I got to keep them for a little bit. They're gonna disappear soon, and yeah, there, there they go. Now they go away. And now I can use one to get another one. Because I don't think it's worth waiting for the rest. All that matters here is that you have a 25% chance on hits on a unique rare enemy to summon more weapons. Or, sorry, dominating blow minions sentinels so what i'm doing here is i'm not stopping to attack this is why things like um uh, a gemini claw that gives you life and mana on hit is so good and some of the innocents uh, with vol absolution yes but that's the normal ghosted way of leveling minions we are not doing that we are leveling with dominating blow for this specific build guide 
Tiny mill, uh, BD budget incoming. I'm definitely gonna look into it. I gotta check what Prevy had, uh, we're doing with his, uh, his DV build as well. It's gonna be fun. There's some tests that needs to be confirmed, so this though. Is what the of the King's head looks like. But that's without the vault versioning uh, calculator, though. Definitely a fun build to play, especially for clearing. Yeah, it does mean I might have to sell my poison enemy weapon build though. Uh, not sure how we're gonna do that. Because if I'm gonna do that, I'd rather sell it all in one. But uh, maybe if someone wants to purchase that entire gear or character, then I could probably do it. Get my vault skills out. Step by step. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this in low budget first. Because I want to show people that you don't need to have super high budget to do everything in the game. If you have a solid build guide that you can follow, that's all you need. That's literally all you need. There's no reason to try to squeeze out more than you'll need out of the build. That makes no sense. Firewall Obama. Was that Preview who did that? Sounds like a Prevy thing. This Prevy is the mastermind on Bomber. Does Behead work in Absolution Guardians? Uh, not Absolution, no. Should keep that rendering, I guess. That's actually a decent helmet. So as you can see, we're most likely or more or less only shield charging around whilst our minions are killing everything. So it's a very comfortable playstyle. And as soon as I find a pack of enemies, that's when I'm swinging. And as I'm shield charging like this, you can see that my minions are actually killing things, even though I'm not hitting anything. So just by me shield charging around like this, I'm still getting um, uh, experience versus enemies that I would normally have skipped. And that's one of the cool things with a build like this. The funnier Suitmaster guy while leveling, which gems to use if I'm missing something, should be in the PUB. Similar to this. If you go to skills, so you check this out like here. Same thing with the tree. Should all be in the Suitmaster as well. Readily available for you. And there's a leveling section in the build guide as well, if you in the fr front page as well. First page of the guide. At the very bottom somewhere. An entire segment with it, actually. Version of Fast 2 3 mil uh, damage with cheap gear. This build on super, super low budget wearing a tabula rasa uh, will do about 3 million EPS. That's without counting the Vol version, so it's actually quite a bit more than that. But just the regular Dominion Blow minions will do uh, 3 million. Only the white Sentinels. That's no rares, no blue, nothing. That's instant single target boss fights like a pinnacle boss. Level station is not there checked. It should be. I'm assuming you're looking at the low budget Hellboy. Because my higher budget ones do not have a leveling section. Because they're not supposed to be used to level with. It's only in the low budget ones. Which is the ones you should be looking at if you're following the guide. The guide is only covering low budgets. And then there is higher budget PUBs. But the PUBs are not the guide. It's low budget. Double check it again. Because it should be there. Welcome to the crew, lad. Solution build using your guide. Thanks for the thorough guides. My pleasure, man. I'm glad you're enjoying it, dude. Thanks so much for the support, dude. Thank you. We're gonna run down to the devotion life notes on the left hand side now, and that is on our way to get the resolute techniques. What items on the AD? Uh, type exclamation mark guide. Check out the uh, rate the guide I have for anime guard. Covers everything you need. We see how fast this guy dies. It's just. Whew. Log out, log in. Sumancer. Low budget, it's there. It is in there. We are doing dominating blow, low budget, physical. 
Don't need that. What is it? What is this juicer build? This is not a juicer build. I am that? literally doing giga low budget in this. Uh, so now we go over here. Crafting video anywhere. The best way to craft plus two minion helmets. Nearby enemies have minus coal rust. I could not find one. It's just been harvest crafting free. If it can't be changed, hoping to hit with minus coal. You get to hit. Just wondering if there's a better way of doing this. Uh, Welcome. Prefix can't be changed with a plus two already. Uh, yes, that is the way to do it. That's literally the only way to realistically do it. Static implosion with a 13 month resub. Thanks so much for support, man. Seems like everyone's is showing off their big dicks that when we're uh, when they know this is gonna be on YouTube. Holy shit! Thanks so much for support, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. This entire section that we're doing now, leveling uh, throughout the entire campaign, all of this will be on YouTube, by the way. I will literally just upload it. As a play with me thing so people can play this and follow along as we play. So essentially, I'm just taking this entire stream and uploading it. I'm doing, I'm doing all right. Just extremely tired with the, um, the baby stuff and whatnot. And Hannah managed to... Um, get uh post uh, what do you call it postpartum depression thingy it's apparently really common so she's uh staying with our daughter with her parents um so i can stream just hope she gets better soon over yes yeah, she's getting uh, professional help as well for it hopefully that ends sooner rather than later Postpartum is really rough on moms. Yeah, like I have no idea how it is or what it is or no clue whatsoever, but she uh she's not good. She's not good. No. When it comes to mental health stuff and whatnot, I'm always very open. Like I myself, I have um a manic depression. It's also called uh, bipolar these days. There are three different stages of it. I have what's called undefined. I'm very open when it comes to mental health stuff. So I think it's really important to, to talk about the normal normalize that it's actually a thing. Anyways, that's the case. I'm, I'm just tired. I'm just tired. J-Rock. Like I said, all the big dicks are coming in now. Holy shit. Tier 3 stuff, 18 months. I heard big dick and had to get in on that action. Uh, I bet you did. I bet you did. Thanks so much for the tier 3, man. I appreciate that, dude. Thank you. Christ. Right, everyone just like, oh, this shit's going up on YouTube. Oh my god, let's just uh, let's just show off. Fucking boilers and professional hitmen on the stream right now. Thank you guys. I do appreciate the support though. I want to say thanks to the guides. Uh, Bill, so I kind of break my legs that I'm loving DARPA. I know so I'm not sure for me, but in the, the campaign it feels tanky as hell. Ah, oh, you're gonna love it in maps then. Just be careful with chaos damage since it is using petrified blood. Chaos dots can be very annoying until you get used to how to operate around it. Uh, let's have a look at this. We, we get some big ass fucking minions, dude. We get to erase our I can't see anything. Which is a good thing, actually. It's a very good thing. Because in this game, the less you see on the screen, the better your build is. It's true. Dude, they are so tanky. Our mistakes can be our greatest. What? Man, they just fucking took that. The beam. Christ. I gotta change the battery in my headset. Give me a second, guys. Zoom has a build uh, good for all content. Uh, yes. If you want to do higher end Good. game content with that build, you're surprising. gonna have to invest a bit more currency into it. But it definitely works great for it. But there will be a, uh, a demand for investment uh, at a certain point with that build. But up until red tier maps, it basically means nothing. In around red tier maps, you're gonna need to uh, need to invest a bit more. Your voice super less. Sorry, I was uh, leaning away from the mic. Um, what I was saying was that uh, the uh, you, you can have almost no investment whatsoever and clearly it, it's smoothly clear up to your to your red, uh, red tier maps but after that you're gonna have to invest uh, into the build it's more than capable of doing everything in the game even higher body version smacks up uber bosses and whatnot but they're gonna cost a bit of currency to get going so as long as you're fine with that 
It's a great build to play. Excellent leak start. Did those uh, the presidents two times? I'm so sorry to hear that. I, like, I have no idea how it is, but luckily we uh, live very close to uh, her parents. So um, since we're in league launch right now, I'm, um, she said that she'd go to her parents' place and I'll come visit after the streams and I, I can just stream without without any worries. At least that's what she said. The only thing I'm doing is worrying, so... <laughs> but yeah, here we are. It'll be fun. God damn, these guys are cool, man. Look at them. Boom. Love it. They're pretty slow, though, but they look cool. Why they so huge? That's from the Vol version of the ability. It's really cool, actually. Uh, how long have we played right now? It's, we're kind of taking it slow and showing things off. But two, three hours, two and a half hours, and we're almost halfway through. I think we're going to look at about a five-hour playthrough. I think that's what I'm uh, going to expect out of this. About a five-hour playthrough, and that's with me stopping to show things for people. I think that's pretty good, actually. That's uh, not a bad thing. About a five-hour playthrough uh, while showing everyone the steps I'm doing and tips and tricks. And that's taking it slow. This, this is literally taking it slow. Dissection time. And without Twink here. We did go through the list of gear you could use if you wanted to Twink your build out when you're leveling, like Rigvolt's Crest. Insane. In Scaler attack speed, Flesh Offering, uh, Nose on the Tree, Cluster Jewels, stuff like that. Oh, you get one with Soul Eater? Oh. <laughs> Which you and I are about to create a soul eater vol absolution. Will you go to bed now, little girl? Or do I need to tuck you in? Now, exile. That sounds fun. You see this damage output? You have to keep in mind we are actually using melee splash when we're doing this. And we only have a four link. So it's a four link with melee splash, and this is pretty damn good damage. It's actually pretty goddamn good damage. The ball boy truly understand what it means to be nightmare. Nightmare. Drunk. Jesus. The gift of immortality. <laughs> oh Except my god, dude. Wait, why do you guys teleport over there? Chunk. Nightmare is the true eternal. Why are you so in love with death? <laughs> Holy shit, I like this. Oh man. Bang bang. Oh, this song is so good. Anyways, um Necros is better all around. Poor Malachi. It's so more bad. reliable. So we have multi-strike here. I'm going to save that on the side because it's supposed to be used for single target for the build instead of melee splash. I don't have this fifth link on my chest because we get lucky in that one. We're not going to not gonna use it, obviously. Same thing here. We start a new pack of enemies. The first thing we do is uh, get some minions out. Blue packs, great. We like that. We like that a lot. Next up. And as you can see, thanks to shield charge, the, the build's pretty goddamn fast now. This is still slower than leveling with, like, Absolution, but it's, in my opinion, can be a much more enjoyable. But the best part about it is you don't need shit to get this up and running, and that is so nice. Mm. 
Next up. Redeemer Sword, we're better may uh, better base for it. Better base before you do that. Pre-made minions, lovely filters. Uh, I do not know. I just use Neversync's base filter. Like the thing is with minions, they don't need much at all to level. That's one of the things that makes them so smooth to lead start with. Don't need a specific loot filter for it. You don't have to worry. Like you don't even need a minion weapon. This build, for example, I use a claw. I purchased a claw from the vendors. I smacked an Alcorb on it and I said, yeah, this looks good. And I kept it. I will use this weapon. Till I buy a Gemini Claw at the very high end game, like yellow tier maps. This weapon that is used from what? Level 36. I will use that till red tier maps. It's absolutely insane. That's how cheap you can make this build. It's crazy. The PUB link for Sumancer. If you go to the bill guy, the PUB links are in there. Was well, there anything wrong with them? Yes, I literally double checked it right now, and the leveling trees are there. And I'd rather not break off from now, but double check the PUBs in the guide. PUB link is not valid. Okay. Your roots, are you still around? Could you verify that? Could you double check it for me? Yeah, I'm thinking it might be an um, import issue and not just... Can someone else double check the PUBs from the Zoomancer guy? Because I, I don't want to stop that when I'm doing this recording. Because all of this will be uploaded on YouTube. So I, I can't stop going right now. I'd like people that are watching this to only go through the gameplay experience of it. Not watch me go through a guide in the middle of the run. I'll check one sec. Thank you. I had to take yesterday off. Family doing okay? Uh, not really. Well, the, our daughter is great. That's fine. Uh, my, um, my fiance, she, uh, Hannah, she, um, she got uh, postpartum uh, depression, apparently. So she's not doing very well. Uh, luckily, we have uh, her amazing parents uh, helping out. So she's staying with them, uh, and I'm going to visit them after every stream, basically. Thanks for asking. Did you take the PUB from the site, um, Hellboy? Hope she gets better soon. Thank you. Both two amounts of PUBs are fine. Oh, well, the Hellboy, are you taking the PUB from the actual build guide? On the PUB vault? Because everyone's saying that the PUBs are fine. They should be. Thanks for taking, guys. Let's help him out. You guys know how we do this. Y'all know how we do things around here. Someone's having issues with it. What do we do? We help him out and make sure he gets things right. Right? Point and laugh? No. No. No No rudeness allowed. Come on, boys. Be nice. Be nice. Someone's having issues with it. We're going to make sure they get things sorted. Okay? Let's be rude. Uh, Hellboy, I apologize for the trolls in the chats. So what you want to do is make sure that you take the correct links from the build guys, right? And then copy them to imports. So make sure there's no spaces, that there's no no issues there. Uh, it's very important that you do that. So double check again the import when you copy the link from the build guide. To make sure there's no problems with it. I would have showed you, but like I said before, I don't want to interrupt this since we're uploading all of this to YouTube right now. So I want to go with a decent pace. Oh, Roots will help you out. Thanks, Roots. Roots will help you out with it. All right. So as you can see, we're not really doing much with this build right now. I have Herald of Purity as an aura still in play. We don't need Herald of Purity anymore. So if you check at the end game links on the tree for leveling, what we're going to do is we're going to be looking into uh, what other auras we'll be running. And for offensive reasons, that's only like a low level precision aura, which we don't really need, but we're going to add one because of it. Uh, gives extra hit chance, which is nice. We definitely don't really need it. So it's not a priority. 
And then it's just going to be Determination as well as Tempest Shield. So what I'll do is once I've gotten Resolute Techniques and the Life Node here, because it's a big Life Node, what I'll then do is I will take these nodes for Reservation and I'm going to skip the uh, Herald of Purity and I'm going to add Determination. It gives me and my minions a lot of armor. And I'm going to use that as a defensive aura instead. Or reservation nodes. What do you mean? That's the leg so far? What do you mean with leg? What do you mean with leg? The leg? I am so confused right now. Oh, the league. I was like, what the fuck have I said now? Jesus. Uh, the league, well, the league mechanic. Okay, the, the, the skill trees on the weapon and shield. I love it and I hope they make a core mechanic out of it. I think that the mechanic itself is dog shit in the way it's designed. I think that it, the the design they've made it is not just troublesome, but it also creates uh, problems in, in for the sake of uh, longevity. So I feel like it's it's very detrimental for the replayability, and therefore I also deem that this Lee really doesn't feel like a standalone Lee mechanic. So, because I feel like I'm playing uh, standard, and then I got to experience this new Lee mechanic a tiny, tiny bit a couple of times. And then when I'm done with that, I will now no longer engage with the Lee mechanic, and I'm playing standard Lee. That's how it feels. Right? Th that's where I'm at. And I don't like it. On the other hand, we got Diablo 4 coming up in June. Pretty sure Torchlight have something in the makings for um, next month as well, actually. And then, uh, then it's Exile Con into next few Ely. But I really hope that they make um, that they make a um, some fine tunes to this. And I really hope they're gonna include this in the core game because outside of a standalone lead mechanic, I love the lead, I love this effect to it. I think that's really cool. I really do. Luckily, there's a lot of Vol skills for me to play around with, so I'm still having fun playing the game. But I think that if it wasn't for the Vol skills, I would probably be pretty fucking bored of this game. Uh, with, uh, with the current state of the league. And I also think that that's what a lot of people are complaining about. We edit it before YouTube? Nope. Can we be stupid or we have to behave? Uh, you always have to behave, Rick. That's how we always do it in here. Alright. And it makes a crucible mirror weapon or shield? Nope. No, no, no. Like, I'm, I'm protesting against the high-end crafting changes they've done to Pee-wee. My protest is in the way that I will not be crafting a mirror item. It's gonna take something really fucking big to make me craft a mirror helmet. Or mirror item again. I've done it every league for the longest of time, for many, many years. And I... Now... When the average craft cost was about three to 5,000 Exaltus, that was fine. That was expensive, but fine. When that average craft cost is now... Um, is now up to 10,000 plus divines. Mm, no. No, no. Now I'm done. I'm done. I am so done with it. I feel like there's not much respect for the time invested to reach that. For us to pull that off in a week or 10 days already required zero sleep and a stupid amount of work and an entire team behind us to pull it off. And it was still really hard. And now they want us to do that three to four times more uh, harder. I'm not going to sit there and not sleep for a month. I'd die before that happens. That's just stupid. 
So no, I'm not very happy with the uh, crafting changes they've done for high end. I mean, crafting is still great, don't get me wrong. It's just that certain crafts have really lost its touch. We are three to four times better though. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. And don't get me wrong as well. I love doing it. It's just I don't have any direct plans to do it. Must be cleansed of impurity. That's a lot of damage. All right, we're going to go for resolute techniques. And then I already forgot what notes I was taking. I think it was aura reservation. So for determination, right? Uh, specifically, the change to triple the cost, uh, average cost. Uh, the specific change was the removal of Reforged Keep Prefix and Reforged Keep Suffix. Because of those, uh, when you are done with the high end stage of one side of an item, uh, we are in most cases forced to craft items in, uh, in a way that is uh, way more expensive to not risk uh, forcing us to annul the item to keep uh, those side. So you can choose to risk it, and then anytime you risk it, you'll have to annul. And if that annul fails, well, you're gonna have to recraft something that has an average craft co craft cost of maybe 500 to a thousand divine orbs alone. That's obviously not worth the risks. So what you do is you take the more uh, expensive process of crafting it, which is meta blocking slam slam, and then let's not even go into the details it's just very annoying and it's just a block and two exalt slams rinse repeat till you hit it basically and that is just not a fun experience to craft with and a slight 100 experience between third and fourth pass the crucible pass any idea why i have no idea pop another crucible light, i guess Yeah, Roots is in charge of the guild stuff. So I think we had so many people in it that uh, we made it a subscriber guild only, right? So Roots take it being in charge of that. Nice work, Roots. Yeah, that's the kid. I did read that, sorry. Has been a helmet. Do you have any up-to-date absolution on craft? Uh, the up-to-date crafts that I have should be in my written guide. Always type exclamation mark crafting. Uh, when League hypes tends to die down, I normally work on getting more and more crafting guides out. So always type exclamation mark guide and check out if there's any crafting guides in there. And if you have any feedback or any recommendations or... Uh, requests for content for that let me know um i'll put it into a big list and see what i have time to get in so if it's not there then it's either in the making uh, or planned to be made or it's not in the list at all gold by divines How far have we played? I think we had, uh, what, two and a half hours. So two hours and 43 minutes, and we're going to finish uh, Act 5 soon. So now we have a little bit faster pace, and this is normally how minion leveling go. Uh, it's not the fastest to level with in the game, obviously, but it is um, very comfortable, as you might have noticed. The amount of minions we have right now is just so comfortable. I barely invested into life. I have 1400 HP. Normally, I would want to have about 1800 to 2000 HP before I kill uh, the first uh, Kitava, which we are soon going to be doing. So probably going to hit another two, maybe three levels before we get to that point. If my memory serves me right. Thank you, Roots. So first we go in here to let us three so we can pick that shit up. At least we got good music, which the YouTube video won't even be able to hear. Because it's not saved on the VOD, so when uh, Kikis gets the footage for this... Then he's gonna upload this four or five hour long video. 
There uh, won't even be any, um... There won't even be music. So you'll have to fix that himself. <laughs> Gotta love these, dude. I like the idea that somebody chat mentioned earlier with getting a soul eater one of these. That would be so cool. There we go. And two more points and then we'll get uh, resolute techniques and we'll never miss an attack again. Do they do damage or they just big? Uh, they do damage, but they're very slow. So they have hard hits, but they're slow hits. My first orb of binding. That's actually really good. Especially if you do it on a rare one, they hit hard. Like hard, hard. A lot of blue packs here. Love to see it. Shit, I'll take that one, sorry. Still six okay. nearby allies uh allies on death or well, we don't need that we can do this though simple i mean there's not really not much more to say at this point of the gameplay i'm trying to give new and newer players some comments uh of what i'm doing um sorry let me try to uh, focus on that a little bit is, is it really hard to say anything else that it's, other than i'm just shield charging and hitting with that uh, with my dominating low like that's all i'm doing and then i'm using the the ball version when i have three charges if i used it before that that's because i fucked up um, I guess quest-wise, what I'm doing right now is I will be taking this up and then I will log out, log back in and hand it in. Uh, let's see, find the last Gustavus form. This is one more. Tree who follows you around profit from minion damage on minion attack speed. I think he counts as an ally and not as a minion. That was my understanding of uh, Huck as a follower. And therefore, the minion damage stuff should not scale him. But I will say with reservation that I might be wrong because I don't actually know. I just realized that if you have a Soul Eater rare... And you make him big... You can actually sustain him throughout the entire clearing. <laughs> Thank you. Like you can you actually do that. Once not remember. Normally here I take the cobalt jewels because they could roll some minion damage. Normally it doesn't, obviously. I normally take the granite flask in here as well, because now I don't really need to have um a two mana flask. So what I do instead, I just replace one of those with a granite flask for extra armor, which is very important that we talked about before. And what we're going to do in this stage is we're going to sell off the random shit. And what we're going to do now is... Actually, I could hand in the div cards. So now we're going to use those. Um, so we're going to spec into residue techniques. Now we're going to take two more points in here. But as you can see, I do need these 20 dexterity to use my weapon. That can be solved by using a benchcraft. So, for example, I can put dexterity on a benchcraft here. I want to show you that because that's something that's going to be more and more important to keep in mind when you start moving in towards the Act 6 stage 
So by utilizing your benchcraft, I can take my gloves, for example, and I can put dexterity on this for one alt uh, augmentation. And by doing this, we get 19 dex. I can then double check if I can remove these two points, which I can. Lower my attack speed a little bit. I can still equip this because I have 73 dexterity by simply utilizing the benchcraft. Those two nodes I can now put in the aura reservation. And we know that we're going to draw Peril of Purity. So I'll be taking that out already if I can find it. There it is. And now what we're going to do instead is we're going to bring our alteration that we have. And we're going to go to Act 3 again. Uh, I'm going to check if we can buy it from the vendors. I'm pretty sure you can't with the witch, actually. But let's double check just in case. Because these gems will be leveled. I need some help. Well, thanks so much, Sure, for the five months, man. I appreciate that, dude. Uh, I don't see a determination. So what we'll do is we're going to go to the library. Again, a really good uh, reason as to why we do this quest when we're leveling. He's getting bigger with HH buffs. If he, if he has a rare modifier that allows him to get buffs from rares, then yes, absolutely. That like it's really crazy how uh, how cool they are, the um, this modifier actually is. Uh, so now we're gonna teleport back to the reliquary and then go back out because we're going towards Kitabo. You think there is a value in eighteen hundred armor Aegis due to Crucible? Absolutely. Most people running with it, they want the armor on the Aegis because that's how you scale the uh, the replenish of that weapon or shield. Sorry. I think it's going to be fun to play around with uh, Dominating Blow. We're going to see if we can make some uh, higher body version out of it as well. Uh, like crazy body maybe, if I can afford it. I got to check how much currency I have. I don't think I have that much. Uh, now we're going down for these nodes because it gives me accuracy. But most importantly, I get some life nodes. I'm trying to get there. I mentioned before that normally I want to have about 1800 life uh, to do Kitava uh, comfortably. This build will be more than fine because they're gonna he's going to attack my minions. I don't have any life on my chest. I have 32 HP here. Nothing on my belt. Blue. There's no life on my helmet. There's a tiny bit of life on my shield. There's no life here. I can benchcraft that on the benchcraft in base. No life here. No life there. Like the gear I have is absolutely dog shit right now. Surprised I didn't wear any white items. Um, so as you can see, that's really all you really need. And if you do this with like leveling gear, whew, baby. And our resistances are very comfortable. We even overcapped in fire. And the reason I'm not benchcrafting my things is because once I'm done with this boss here, we're going to get to the point where I will be losing a lot of resistances. 30% LRS and Chaos Rest is going to go down. Uh, so what's going to happen at that point is that I will now need to fix that. And then I might have to change a gear piece or two to compensate my resistance lack. Now, that can be solved very easily when you're leveling with a build like this by removing the, ter the determination R that we just put in and using a purity of elements instead. That gives you ailment immunity, but also gives you a ton of elemental resistances. So if you're feeling that like it's too much pressure in your gear, that is a really good backup solution. 15% life mastery. Yes, we're going to take the 50 plus flat, flat life mastery as well. I haven't taken that yet because we don't really need it. We really don't need it. Like, that's the perk of having minions like this. They're all just tanking for me. And since I'm convocating aggressively by throwing my minions to me, it's all you really need to go. You get a suffix open. Look at this thing. With a tier one? Shit. Um, you have two choices. Benchcraft or three choices. Benchcraft and sell it. Uh, prefix can't be changed. And then a null is the other option. So two options. If you remove the benchcraft, bench it again and a null. Uh, if you remove the attack cast speed, use a Veil Chaos Orb. And if that happens, you want to make sure that you only have the... That you only have the... Um, uh, veiled suffix as a suffix modifier. And then... Bench block with any of the dot multis that it's cold, fire, lightning, or whatever, cold fire, uh, chaos, and physical. And then you unveil and pray for the minion attack cast speed. If you don't hit it, rinse, repeat the process until you do. The problem with the veil of chaos is you might fill the suffixes, which will make it so that you have to annul it, and you might brick the entire item, losing the plus two or uh, losing the minion damage, for example. 
Um, with that said, once you've achieved that point where you get the attack gas speed and you have two open suffixes, you will benchcraft damage per power charge and then slam it with a redeemer or exalted work and pray you get the aura effect and then bench trigger and you're done. Oh, I thought you said it had another suffix open. Oh, and now it's... Sorry, I was blind. Well, you start with annulling it and then you do what I said. Unless it bricks. A three class on this bad boy to make 10 APS. We'll see. The flame of hope may flicker, but it cannot be extinguished. I go for either all all resistance or all attributes, 35 effect, energy shield, and a T1 attack cast speed um, clusters on the high body version for the enemy weapon. On. Remember. <clears throat> if you're going to go for the very big version of this. Okay, so now you do what I said, uh, said broken. Nice work, dude. So now I lost resistance. As you see here, I'm down negative 6% lightning rest. So at this point, what I can do is I can um, get a purity of elements in instead of determination. And I think that is exactly what I'll be doing. Um, just alleviate some resistance pressure as I'm leveling this build. Not something you... Oh, I misclicked. Uh, not something you have to do, but it is a smooth way to do it till your gear uh, can handle it. I don't know... Which would be better? Absolution should be the be better call for the sake of speed. But I mean, right now, this is fucking juicy. But it's a playstyle difference as well. Absolution is kind of meta to level with them. As a ball version, it's very slow, but I do like it. Yes, it looks cool. Same thing with Absolution. It's more of a clear speed increase than anything. So now we're using the purity of elements, and as you can see, my resistance is better. I will drop that later, so when gear is covering. But right now, our gear is very bad, and then purity of elements can tackle and handle that, because I don't really need uh, anything else to cover, because you know, so of the uh, damage output that we have from these minions is, as you can tell, very, very good. We'll clear this area. Once you've done this, I can buy all the gems from... Um, once I've done this, I can buy all the gems from Act 6 instead, and I no longer have to worry about the quest we did earlier in Act 3. We don't have to care about that anymore. We're all good. Something that I would like to do is move this aura down here, and now I can actually add minion life to my zombies. But as you might have noticed, I haven't really cared about that. The reason I haven't cared about it is very simple. They're not dying, so I don't care. Why use a socket for something that is not needed to keep them alive if they're never dying, right? That's basically the, the gist of it. But later, they're going to die if I don't have that. So I'm going to give them minion life. And that's only if I have the sockets for it. And mainly, the minion life is not that, not necessarily for the zombies. It's more for the enemy guardian and the specters later, actually. But the zombies will be in that setup. Plus one to office, uh, plus one to minions. Uh... You can, but it's easier to craft plus one to all spell skills and plus one to minions. Because the only way you can hit a plus one minion is a convening calling or convoking one. That is a minion shield. With life. That's a lot of damage. Hello? I'm gonna keep that. That's a pretty fucking cool shield. Holy shit. I don't think I want to use it. That feels a bit unethical, actually. Eh? There's two monsters somewhere. Eh. 
Oh, come on. Really? Do you have a similar Reaper build? I do not know. I do not. Instead of running around like that, if that happens, I normally just open up a new area so I can get some experience whilst I do it. Normally that goes pretty smoothly, but apparently not this time. Alright, let's double check every goddamn corner this time. Do that way. Nothing over there. We're good. Ugh. I should probably stand up for a little bit. Get some blood pumping. We're heading down here now. Get that bad boy. Hey, what's up, man? What's up, dear man? Yeah, this entire uh, stream session that we're doing right now is ending up on uh, YouTube. We're gonna um, upload most of this unedited. As a play with me kind of video. It's gonna be about five hours long-ish, I think. Something like that. We clear this. Double check so I didn't miss anything. I don't see any enemies. We're good. Eight monsters remaining. That should be it, right? There we go. That's a bit easier. Can't see anything. Okay. When well, can't see crap when they're up. I think they're pretty cool. I like that you can't see anything. <laughs> oh man, I think they're really cool because of them being so big. Farewell. So I want to get two reds on this. Uh, but what I could do is I could drop my determination. Right. Now. I just really need that right now. Humanity needs us. And now, by handing in this quest, I now have uh, some extra respect points. But most importantly, I can buy gems from her here in Act 6 now. Lily Roth can also now be brought into your hideout. So we don't have to worry about that anymore. So Act 3 is no longer needed. And then we move on. And I would check our resistance. It's very important that fire and cold is sorted. Lightning is a little bit bad right now, and that's perfectly fine. That's okay. And now we're gonna keep going. We get some beasts in here, nothing that matters. Ready, it is time to hunt. Higher level domination, thank you. Blue pack, we do wanna kill that. Don't have to spend too much time on killing enemies at this point, because now it's all about just bum rushing your shit. Once your gear covers your resistances, we will remove the uh we will remove uh, the uh, curative elements, and we're gonna add um, determination instead. Get the blue pack, pop in the boxes. Always good. Maybe we get some stones. No, nothing. Moving on. Gonna find the uh, the unique guy. Here she is, the dishonored queen. Pop out our Volska minions here, and he's dead. There's a four link up there, blue, 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 green. Not what we need, so we're gonna leave it. And at this point, we just follow the left side wall to get to this area over here. Bigger equals better. In Path of Exile, it's been for the longest of time that the, the less you see on the screen, the better your build is. Vol Domination, or it's called... Dom it's called Vol Domination. Yeah, the Vol DB is supplying this so when you go through a build guys and whatnot you don't see shit on the screen that's already an indicator that god damn that build must be great and vol db is sorting that by itself visual clutter is a damage multiplier that is a good way to describe it yes so as you can see here because of our stone golem and our vitality aura 
in combination with um, with vitality, but we're not using vitality right now. So even without it, as you can see, we can sit in this fire beam. This is thanks to the resistances. Now I am boom, which is very commonly happening with this build, and that is perfectly fine because we don't need to have our domination hits happening consistently. It's okay. We only need to hit them once, and then they need to die within two seconds or something uh, for us to get our minion summoned. So. Very straightforward. And comfortable. Blue packs to see how fast these guys are dying. Something that we could look into adding would now be a all haste and stuff like that. But these requires us to get that gem. And we're not going to be going out of our way to make those things happen. Like I said before, we're sticking to very low budget, least starting bullshit. Even using purative elements to help with resistances if you need it. Other than that, it's uh, just chilling. Such a straightforward and easy build to play. This is one of the best leveling or builds in the game to leech start with for minions. Because of how little it requires to get going and easy it is to understand. Compared to many other mini builds that are a bit more advanced, if you will. So as you can see, I'm not staying till uh, the entire pack of enemies is dead. I'm just killing the majority of packs I'm hitting. Once I've reached that point, I'm just moving on to the next pack. Because my minions will kill things as I start moving away from them. And I don't have to worry too much about it. And that way I can keep up a steady pace with that and still get a lot of experience like I talked about before. Uh, this build is able to, or medium builds in general, have a tendency of killing things that you're deciding to skip because it's not worth spending your time on them. Mini builds have a tendency of killing extra things, which means I'm now level 48 in a level 47 area. So we went from being almost two levels behind the zone to now being above the zone in levels. And this is because of how mini builds normally operate. Stay on with the 21 months reset. Thank you, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So close to two years. Have a great day. What are you maining in D4, Necromancer? Yeah, so I'll soon two years, man. Thanks so much. And likewise, sir. Likewise. Thanks again for the support, man. Let's see, must be good luck. He's got a mage by the short allocation. Five way carry. Wait, what? Jesus, dude. Congratulations, man. That's big. Don't forget to pay me your royalties, by the way. Coming in here, stealing my luck. Is that why I never saw movie speed boots for the longest time? No, that's that's not good. That's not good, broken. You do that again. Briefly can't be changed. APS is super important. Briefly can't be changed into um Unless you don't want to risk it. If you don't want to risk it, then you benchcraft damage per power charge and then a redeemer exalted. If you don't want to risk it. Because it's always a risk, right? But APS is very, very important. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Shields versus two-handed for DB. Definitely want to use a shield. You use utility minions to do the killing blows for you. So you don't have to worry too much about that. Oh, my lightning rest is not capped. Kill it. All right, I have a lightning rare. I want to see what happens if I can get him big. What will then happen? Here. Does he not pop lightning for me? Interesting. Very interesting. I thought he'd pop uh, lightning for me. Or did I accidentally get the other rare and that one got big instead? I don't know. Yeah, but I'm not Captain Lightning Rest. I have to be very careful. We are going in here. The reason we're doing this is so that we can take a big spin around here and pick up the uh, resistances on our shield. Once we have that, it's very likely that we're going to be able to remove um, 
that we're gonna be able to remove um, security elements if the gear is just a little bit better rest than what we have right now. Let's just kill this thing as well. It died pretty easily. Two stone, give me HP on it. No. Keep you selling. Can I get a seventh zombie? I cannot. My dumb they ended up around 7 million this league. I get around 50 with more investment. The vault version just seemed not worth using. Why would the vault version not be worth using? Are you comparing it to alt quality? Because if you go alt quality, you want an alt quality vault version. That just means corrupting a uh, alt quality version. That's a lot of lightning damage, dude. You gotta kill it. Woo! What is this? Will clash. Absolutely terrible. It's not even looted. There we go. I need some minions. Hey, 21, 23. Ah. Uh, that's a shame, dude. Gotta get another one up, dude. Luckily, there are the faceter lenses, so you can level the gem up with uh, by buying those rather than buying rather than buying uh, one and leveling it up manually. Not you. For my life and my work, I shall not suffer this humiliation again. See this damage? You shall be remade. He has not created for the new uh, army as masteries. What do you mean? Well, I don't want to move away. He's going to bounce away if I do. There we go. We see this damage in absolute dog shit gear. We're just absolutely decimating the content right now. Beautiful. Valerian, what's up, dude? My fire rest is good enough. So what we're going to do now is we're going to head over to do Abrath. Which means we need to find the side path for this. There it is. And then we're going to go find this. It. Look for the pathway. That should be a dead end. It is. Nessa. Anywhere else? Here it is. Death blood bosses. Uh, you don't. Uh, there is a modifier on the the chest, but on the ability that uh, gets you a twenty five percent chance on hitting a unique enemy to spawn a, a sentinel for you. So that's how you summon them versus single target boss fights, which is why it's very important to make sure you don't miss anything. That's why we take the Resolute Techniques Keystone. And after that, it's just literally all about attack speed. Because the faster you attack, the faster you can summon minions. Since on average, every fourth attack summons one, right? We want to make sure that that happens as often as possible. Well, he got clapped. Oh, they're big. They are massive, baby. Massive. Next area, right? 
some more big ones out. Pick this up. Next zone. Easy, easy. Around this over resolute skin. Uh, possibly you'd have to PUB it. You'd have to PUB it. I did that with uh, my uh, Diallo's bit of a version. I did actually. It started off as a meme. We had 22 regular Sentinels. It was absolutely insane. It's fun as fuck. It took ages to like 10, 10 or 12 seconds to get all your minions out on a single target, though. And that was with like 14 attacks per second. Yeah, 22. Plus three Vol versions. Plus three rares. No, sorry, plus one rare. Two rares from the Helmet and Chan, actually. And then three blue on that. So that's 25, 26, 29 minions. 29 Sentinels is what we uh, can do with that build right now. It was... Uh, it, it's, it's really fun. Great for clearing. Uh, but, yeah, a little overkill. Uh, like this. Uh, yes, now you will benchcraft damage per power charge and redeemer slam it. GG, by the way. That's nice to see. Very nice to see. But yeah, damage per power charge, benchcraft, and then uh, redeemer slam. Enjoy. Good luck. Good luck to you. See this fucking damage? Woo! Baby! Christ. Squire, Megalin, Claw for DV? No. You want the defensive layers in this game because of the uh, the state of aspirational content in Path of Exile demands that you have layers of defense. Um, which wasn't really the case in the past, but it is now. Uh, so I got a double red. I was supposed to do something with a double red. What was that? I was going to move something. Right. Now I know what it is. We're going to snag this helmet. Which is slightly worse. But it has Chaos Rest. So that's nice. We're going to move the Pride. And we're going to put the Stone Golem and the Maim Support. Now we have that on our Zombies as well. Uh, and then we get to use this shield instead. Because that was a nice shield. Stay sharp out there. First Major Find. Oh, that is nice. Uh, for sure it would be hard to find worse helmet than this one. That's a plus two. That's a really good helmet, yeah. Very nice. So now we got the accuracy and the grave pack, the grave pack, and more dexterity. Now I'm gonna go all the way around here to get the resistances on sanctuary, so I can drop that aura. Good fighting. That's the next step, and, and uh, that's yeah. it. It's very straightforward. Stone golem maim. Uh, we have stone golem maim right now. Yes, we can use a carrying golem instead. It doesn't really matter. It's perfectly fine. Well, we're using um. Zombies with it as well. Put that uh, pride back up, get our minions rolling, and then we keep running. Onslaught and kill. You know, that's actually not too bad for... Um... Never mind. It's pretty bad. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. Good one though. Still, even even with the fail slime, it's still really good. Yeah, the shield's great for damage output, but uh, most importantly, it's the defensive layer recovery block, which is insanely good on it. You see how fast we're getting our minions out, and we don't have to care too much because all we do right now is just shield charging and convocating and hitting a couple of times, like once or twice, and then everything is dead since our minions are dealing with it. It's absolutely beautiful to uh, to play the game like this. Used by Vault version here as we get some big ones. Ten Divines? There should be more than that. There's no shot that's ten Divines, dude. I sold a better one for 14 just a few hours ago. Double check the prices, dude. You might want to double check the price on that. Oh, that's what you invested. Yeah, there we go. There we go. If anything, it should be worth money or, or you want to use it. This is really good. There's the bright beak I was talking about that we can use for this build. 
Hey, just for the sake of it, I, I'm now hitting 0 0.46. If I use this, I have 0 0.35. This is my attack speed instead. Shield char is 0 0.27 versus 0 0.27. So it's about it's the same there, right? So you can use Bright Peak for uh, even faster attacks. So it looks like this. Let me show you. So that attack speed allows you to summon the minions much faster than if you use the claw. But um yeah. We're not gonna we're not you're not gonna use any of the twink here. Jesus. What is this build? This is the uh, low budget dominating blow build that I have. I'm showcasing the one of the two low budget versions. This is the fist variant. There is a poison variant as well. And uh, outside of that, it's uh, I'm just showing you the campaign. This will all be uploaded as an entire more or less unedited video on YouTube as well. So if you missed the start of this, this will be on YouTube momentarily. And uh, outside of that, we um, I'm going to play this and see if I can make some fun things with like a medium body version and a higher body version. And then if it's fun, which I definitely think this is. Uh, it's very likely I'll be looking into um, very likely that I'll look into some um, giga version with it. I'm thinking an explodey AG for clear rather than profane would be the play. At least that's my initial thoughts around what to do. Go around? Do I? Yeah. I do have to go around. Okay. The Giga version? Yeah, but we'll take one step at a time. I mean, I'm definitely gonna be doing it. The The real question is more about how it's going to look, right? So there's that. Do you superior superior poison minion build? Which one? I have a couple of poison builds. Enemy weapon, SRS, dominion blow. Like, which one did you run? Oh, enemy weapon. Okay. Uh, a massive that does partially cost for life. Life? Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that's a really big one for dark pipe as well. That shit can help a lot. Especially if you have a bunch of uh, life region to compensate for it as well. The Giga version goes CI, so I can't use it on that version, which is why I kind of neglected going for it. But yeah, absolutely. Definitely a good choice. And it works. It works great. So we're at the point where I have the choice of switching between Stone Golem and a Carrying Golem. The reason we're not going Carrying Golem is simply because we don't need the damage. The damage is insane with a build like this. Uh, so that's one of the main reasons why we're sticking to uh, sorry, Stone Golem. Because it gives a taunt ability to further have a higher probability of enemies attacking my minions rather than me. And it gives me life regen. Right now we're regenerating 120 life per second. And we have a 1600 life. So it's kind of a big deal. It is kind of a big deal, baby. Now we're retaining 200 life. <laughs> there is a Giga version in the PUB. Oh, sorry, in the build guide already, actually. So if you type information my guide and check it out, there should be a high body version in there already. But what I'm thinking is that I need to play around with it to see if there's any changes to that that we were going to make. Like trying out Diala's Fantastical, maybe not do that. Maybe incorporate Herald of Purity instead. Stuff like that. I haven't really decided exactly how I'm going to do it. So I'll have to PUB. But I think we're going to do that later in the week, actually. The first things first, I think it's important to showcase how these things look in low body. Because the high body version can always be solved by just shoving as much currency as possible into it. There's, that's not really an issue to do. But seeing how this shit performs on a super low budget, that's where the real fun's at, in my opinion. Because everyone can play this. Will the Poison DB be Necro as well? Yes, it will be Necro. Necro, 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 Necro. Oh, it's just too good, man. What can I say? What can I say? All right, we're three and a half hours in. We are at the end of Act 6. Not the fastest, but very smooth and very effective. No need to be at risk of dying if you exclude the death I had on the Roa in Mudflash that one. 
Other than that, we haven't had a... Uh, well, actually, we did have one... Not a close call, but it, it was kind of rough. That um, essence that I face tanked when I didn't need to. That one was rough. Resistance is thanks to the purity of elements is good. Not optimal, but good. So our next step right now is getting better resistance on our gear. So I will be identifying like this pair of gloves right there. Great pair of gloves. There's life resistance. There's even a suffix open to put more rests on it. So that is a pair of gloves that I will be looking into using. My current glove gives me jack shit. And I'm good on dexterity thanks to the tree going down for dexterity notes now. So I don't have to worry about that either. You click it. Thank you. So these pair of gloves could work. What I would need to do is put some quality on them and then use some jewelers to try to get some more sockets out of it. Can we do double red and a blue? I think we can because they don't need to be linked. That means I can put these jewels in here and I can take the determination and I can just do this change, which apparently I can't because of faster attacks. So what we're going to do to solve that is benchcraft dexterity. Fast attacks are going to need quite a lot of decks on this build, actually. I think we need 121 dexterity in the end. So we're going to treat this the same way we've done before. We use the benchcraft to solve this issue. But since we are looking at improving our gear to the point where we can utilize a better resistances, we also want to benchcraft rest on good enough pieces. This one is pretty damn good. We're going to put the dexterity on it and we do it like this. And we're good for now. Uh, the belt is god awful. We can literally purchase better belts from... Um, the vendors and just alcorp them but in a leak start scenario you're not going to want to spend your alks but what you could do is buy some shit ones or find the white ones and use your essences let's see if you can get something decent out of that so definitely options to go around but if you look at my resistances now with pure development they're capped i'm not capped without it so we're still going to use this for a little while longer because of us getting a lot of rest from here we're going to take the block attack route down there to solve that issue. And all of these things will just smoothly connect into a really, really nice, well-rounded circle in the end for this build, if you will. And now we're 52, so what I should be doing is leveling up my bone offering. Normally, I don't really care too much about that because it's like a future problem later. Uh, so I'd rather just use my flesh offering and go from there comfortable all right well there there it is my second death i didn't pay attention second death from chaos damage of all things as well oh shit oh nice fast i hope you have fun with that dude Hyper, hyper. Chrome recipe, I probably should have looted. These golems, they smack for a lot of damage. So this is one of the areas where you need a lot of cold resistance, but also a bit, bit of armor. We don't really have that much of neither, which is rather normal for new, new and newer players to end up with when they're here. So be a little bit careful with these guys that slam. If you can avoid standing right next to uh, right next to one of those golems, just don't. Especially the rare ones. So I normally try to hit them a little bit and then just step the fuck away from them, basically. So courageous, such a fine example of womanhood. The portal's looking funny. I knew you would so. disappoint me, or my husband. You see, His Majesty could never be satiated on his wedding day by one bride alone. Thank you. My new sister. I shall always treasure your company. I'm gonna smack this guy up. As you can see, not a problem. Already faced. I only have the three big ones right now. This build is insane, man. Holy shit, I love it. The best part with this is how fun it is to play. Oh, there goes my minions, and now we're in a position where I have to hit this guy with my normal attacks or the absolution attacks. Not absolution, dominating low. And I only had one minion there, and it's still almost immediately can spaced him over. This is again with a melee splash support. I just want you to know that. That is with melee splash. 
So we will face tank this. We got one. I'll make him big immediately because I had a charge to make this a bit smoother. Ads just spawning now. I have nine minions out. He's already faced. The only one is big though. He has Lily with a Raider Rooney. How you doing? That's it. We can log out to make this faster as well. Welcome to the stream, Lilies. Minions, I guess. Clearly. Welcome, welcome. Like five and a half liters of welcome. That's a lot of welcome, by the way. So welcome in. Thank you so much. Farewell. How's the league going so far? You having fun with stand? Sorry, I mean Crucible. <clears throat> I'm not cooking any more items. No, nope. no, neither am I. I got the items I needed on my build and then I stopped engaging with the lead mechanic. <laughs> the crew, the geodes are like the funniest shit ever though. I like, I pop it out. Fucking uh, Optimus Prime is giving me some story. And um, outside of some story shit he's telling me, I'm just running through, skipping everything, touching the last, uh, the, the, the crucible thingy. And then I'm leaving the area. Like, what's the fucking point? I do hope they make it core, though. I really do. She found the build. Dark Pet Spectres or DB. Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't call anything else the build. I'm just saying. Granted, I, I will. I will admit that there might be a slight bias from my side to those three builds. But only maybe. Only maybe. Prefer this over enemy weapon. A very different play styles. I think this build is really fun to play. And I think with Evolve version, I'm more inclined to make a higher body version out of this. Because it's really fun to play. We're going to upload uh, this entire uh, section, by the way, to uh, to YouTube. So, Lily, just so you know, though, your raid is going to be forever engraved on my YouTube channel. That's kind of professional right there. Or maybe you knew, and that's why you raided. Hmm. Pretty smart. So let me let me paint the picture for you, Lily. Let me paint a picture. There's a, a 24 second vol soul prevention or soul gain prevention on uh, on DB. Then it stacks up to three charges, and it will automatically target the most the rarest of your sentinels. The duration on a generic tree for these guys is uh, almost 50 seconds. That's just the generic baseline that you'll reach with these. But the cooldown for soul prevention is 24 seconds. If you use one, when you have three big sentinels out, it will refresh the duration of the lowest duration one. Mm -hmm. Following so far. Good, good, good. Now imagine a... Um, imagine a dominating Vol Sentinel... With Soul Eater. Permanent Soul Eater, by the way. That, that's all I wanted to say. Just, just let that image sink in for a few seconds. So if you get that early, you can have a minion that is already huge and then feed him with an entire map's worth of souls. <laughs> Granted that you're going to steal souls for to keep him alive, though, because of how soul gain works, but still. It's absolutely insane. 
I really want to see it though. You see, I, uh, dude, dude, you'd have a minion that is probably bigger than your screen. Like it would, it can very. Like if you manage to get that early in a map with a good, a good amount of pack size, you can very easily make that guy get thousand souls easily. And it's not even, it's not even like that's a hard thing to do either. That's the crazy part. It's not even hard to achieve that. A thousand souls from Soul Eater? That's a lot. As I said, they'll gain Soul Eater. So the way the Sentinel works is that you get normal Sentinels when you're killing normal monsters. And you get normal Sentinels when you're hitting a chance on unique enemies. Uh, that's capped on nine on the baseline version of the gem. Goodbye. Then you get, um, uh, then you get up to three magical ones, so magic enemies. You can have up to three magic sentinels. Then you can have one rare, two with a helmet enchant, up at any given time. Now the vol version allows you to uh, make. Um, the rarest uh, minion that you have become a big one and now that is separated from those caps so that means if you have a rare one you can make that a big one and then get another rare and with the helmet attack you can actually have three rares and then you can make all three rares that you get you can actually have, actually have three big ones and then another two rares you can have five rares either way so the way it works is that if you kill a magic enemy they will get those modifiers and the same thing applies to the rare sentinels so the rare sentinel that you have will get whatever mods that rare enemy had. So the way to give them Soul Eater is if you kill a rare enemy with Soul Eater, you will now have you will now have a rare Sentinel with Soul Eater, Hello to you. <laughs> which is insane. Obviously. I would always recommend uh, linking your and socketing your items without using the benchcraft boards. The average to do it yourself is lower than what the benchcraft costs. Obviously, you can get unlucky, but it's still. So I kill that rare right there. It's this guy here. He's already yellow, as you can see. Uh, that is my rare sentinel who has all the mods that rare had. Then reckon recipe jewel works to corrupt 23. It does not work with corrupted now. So what was the build uh, you guys were talking about? What, what build are you playing, Lily? Chat said you found the build. Which build was it? Wow. Seriously? I missed the edge up here? Okay, dude. Here's a pack of blues. So as you can see, you now have three blue sentinels. They are taking those modifiers. Same thing there. The rare I had, I just made him big. So now I got a big rare one. Totem explode. Was that the I saw Sis playing something like that. Who was it that made the build though? Because that seemed really cool. Quickening a fortress count and jewel can be obtained through Vault Crushing. Uh yes, correct. Yeah, it's from the crucible trees, right? With the Sumas ability, you're supposed to have three primordial eyes with the uh, second pass on the animus stone. Uh, I would recommend checking the PUBs. I don't know them by heart without checking. I have so many bill guys, I'd literally have to double check some of them before answering those specific questions. If the guy, the PUB has it, then the answer is yes. If the PUB doesn't have it, the answer is obviously no. Oh, wow. Didn't even get a new minion yet. Totem Explosions. Now, I've seen it in action. It looks really fun to play. It really does. A glove can I put AG besides Curse Glove? Is that is good? Uh, southbound gloves. Just for extra HP. Uh... You can have Hunter Influence for a Nerve or Intimidate. You can have uh, Eldritch Influence, like either World Searing Exarch, again for Intimidate or a Nerve, as an example. 
Price check in this helmet? I don't do price checks. I think it's important for people that play in Trade League to learn how to price check their own items. Because the only way you're going to sell things is if you price them. And you know yourself that if you're trying to buy an item, you're not going to look for items that are not priced. You will always look for one that is priced. So if you want to sell items, you should price all your items. And you're not going to ask someone to price check your 200 items that you have for sale. So my recommendation is learn how to price. You can type exclamation mark price by speaking of price because I keep repeating the word price all the time. So it's to make sure that you learn how to price that into the game and uh, understanding the value of the items by pricing them. You can do so by typing exclamation mark price in the chat and that will give you a link to the price tool that I'm using, which is Awaken Pee Trade. And there's also a price checking little YouTube video I made the other day that's going to help you get better at learning how to do it. TLDR, type exclamation mark price. In case that wasn't clear. I leveled up. Get out of those. If I can open up my inventory like that. More resistances. Cover up next level. Good shit. That was pretty clean though. The wall was pretty clean. A little wrap thing. Wrapping is easy. All you have to do is rhyme a little bit. Like, yo, yo, yo. Look at me. I'm up on a stage. It's like you suffocate from my rage. I said, look down in your fucking cage. It's just, you just gotta rhyme a little bit. That's all you need to do. It's all you need to do. Little tutorial, yeah. It gives me seven ads as punishment. Oh shit, I just started playing as well. Okay. <laughs> oh man. I should teach him to fucking sub. Coming in here. Free fucking entertainment. Complaining about the ads, just fucking sub already. Man, I play ads once per hour, the very bare minimum of ads I can, just to not have pre rolls on this channel. You have no right to complain about it. Entertainment. Okay, J Roy. Okay, man. Okay, dude. Here I am. Rocking like a hurricane and I'm getting shit on. That's not okay, dude. Ranakesh. This is just best gems for our college solo target PUB can't calculate it. Eh. I would recommend strongly that you check out a guy called Casual Dan on the PUB Vault. He has a really good our college build guide. Last league I played it and I played his version of it. It was really nice. I had great success with that build, so I can definitely recommend it. I don't have a build guide for that myself, actually, so I'd rather recommend someone who is uh, religiously playing the build as if his life depended on it, and that would be casual that. So do check it out. Been playing the past week. Yep, there you have it. Well, this is Big Minion. Basically, I'm playing a female character, and these absolutions, they like boys. But you see my helmet? I look like a boy in this helmet. So I summon them and sometimes they get really big. But my character can only handle three at a time. You know what I mean. Okay, damage output to be honest, considering the gear we have. Absolution Crucible node is uh, worth chasing. Absolution or the Dominating Blow uh, Crucible nodes are terrible. Thank you, Candy Bombers, for the 500 biddies. Appreciate it. Want one thing and it's disgusting DPS. <laughs> it's true though. Um, now the um, the um. 
I completely lost where I was going. Um, they're right, the Crucible modifiers, uh, notable. Uh, it doesn't say that it applies to our Sentinels. The Sentinels is the actual minions. The Absolution and the Dominating Blow, they are the ability that we as a player uses. So those trees, or the Crucible node, what it does, it increases the damage that we are doing. The problem is we don't give a shit about doing damage. We just want to hit. And um, our minions are the ones doing the damage. So those Crucible modifiers, they are dipshit crazy. Like, absolutely fucking terrible. Was that all of them? Uh, no, that wasn't all of them. That was all of them. DPS is beautiful. It is indeed. I would arguably say so as well, sir. Now we're getting more resistances. Uh, as we spec into that, we want to double check if we are able to turn off the few developments. We can go to termination instead. We are unable to do so right now. It will be later with a little bit better gear and the remaining nodes in the sanctuary. Get more minions. Like some cooldown reduction on that fucking uh, convocation. What level are we? 55. We're fucking over level. I'm even going the wrong way. Well, as you can see, the damage is more than enough. This is just whew, beautiful. Probably not being able to survive with this build. Tier 14, any suggestions? Make sure you have a life recovery and block shield. Make sure you have a proper flask for a granite. Granite. Granite and a basalt flask. And um, good enough armor. Make sure you have all the auras you're supposed to be running, such as the. Um, such as the. Um, Determination, very important. And Tempest Shield as well. Very, very important. And then you want to make sure you have your elemental resistance as a cap. The attributes that you need to make sure you can wear the gear and the skill gems, of course. And uh, if you have any possibility of getting chaos resistance, that is obviously preferable to have. Not a mandatory, but definitely helpful. It would be a little later in terms of the priority list of modifiers that you're looking to get, but it's definitely a preferable stat to have. That's a lot of fucking life region for that guy, dude. Holy shit. God damn it. I mean, now is like the best time ever to get into a Dominion of Low. The vault scale of this is fucking juicy. Jaws are open wide. How long have we played right now? We've been chilling and explaining. Three hours, 46 minutes, and we're at the end of Act 7. It's not too shabby. I think we're ending up in around five hours, uh, including all the uh, breaks we've been having to explain things, right? Seems pretty good, to be honest. It's not super fast. It's not racing fast, but it's, it's a decent pace, I think. Metal music part of the build. Uh, I mean, obviously, if you want to play something like this, you kind of have to listen to rock and metal. That's part of the deal. Part of the deal. Dominating Blow is melee, correct. Uh, I'm using a claw because it has the best uh, attacks per second. And later, we're having two reasons as to why we're using a claw. One is obviously the attack per second. That is to minimize the amount of attacks I need to do, or time, rather. It's just the same amount of attacks, but 
the minimum amount of time I have to spend hitting a unique targets to get all of my minions out as fast as possible. The other reason for a claw is the Gemini claw, one of the best claw bases in the game. Uh, very commonly dropped later on. Uh, will be giving you both life and mana on hits, which will self-sustain all of the mana issues that you might run into. The claw will sort that by itself by just giving you mana on hits. So any problems you might encounter is literally solved or uh, at least alleviated by wearing a claw. You can use Whirling Blades if you prefer that over Shield Charge, yes. Both options uh, are there. I currently leveled with Shield Charge. The reason for that is very simple. Uh, I don't want to be locked into using a claw. I managed to get one from the vendors, so therefore I'm using uh, the claw. But I started with shield charge because it doesn't matter if you have a uh, that or not. All you need is an actual shield and your weapon doesn't matter. We're gonna get a mana siphon now. Watch this, boys. Boom. Link in chat as a poor gem work. Yes, it does. Ah, papa. No, no, it does not. Socket the gems, and the skill is not a socket the gem. It's not a socket the skill, so that does not work in our college, no. Because it's a skill provided by the, uh, the, the item, it's not actually a supported skill. So therefore, it does not work. Binding. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Dude, why one of those guys just hit him for like 70% of his HP with one hit? Yeah, I love this. Absolutely beautiful, man. Absolutely nuts. Yeah, the uh, MTX is crazy good for as well, for sure. He's big. I mean, like I said before, imagine this with a Soul Eater or Sentinel instead. And imagine sustaining it. Now imagine that. Imagine that. Because if you sustain that, you can get uh, you can get a all a soul eater sentinel to like a thousand plus souls easily. Easily. can do like a tree with uh, eldritch battery or divine blessing shenanigans that would be really cool actually how bad would it be to get like a skin of the lord just with the correct colors for eldritch battery might be a little overkill but maybe not worth it actually I love the PUB some stuff, but I think it's fun. Nah, I'm done checking things on stream, dude. There's just a bunch of scalpers in the chat, bro. Last time I did this, people just went nuts, and everything I had to buy cost a shitload before I even purchased it. So I'll 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 fucking PUB this off stream. Buy the shit before and God damn. Are you giving a soul leader? Rare Sentinels uh, and Magic Sentinels, they are taking the mods that the enemy that I summoned them from had. 
So if you kill a Soul Eater, a rare, my minion will have Soul Eater as well. That's why you saw one of my rares earlier have a Mana Siphoner uh, Radius effect. So if you kill a rare with Soul Eater, well, your minions will now have Soul Eater. Or that one will have Soul Eater, rather. I'm thinking about like a Grey Bind uh, AoE stack to explode the AG. Maybe even doing it through a Hungry Loop or something. I think that could be really cool to do. I think that could work really well with a build like this. Alright, what's our play? We have now played for less than four hours with all the extra time spent explaining things and we're in Act 8. I think that that is actually really good. Considering the amount of time we're wasting on explaining things and uh, checking things. We did some uh, hunts for uh, chromes earlier on the vendors just to show how that worked. Keep your wits about you. Fix the gems, did the library. Now we have this, by the way, and uh, the next nodes would be in here. I'm going to start taking the mastery because now we're going to want some extra HP. So now we're going to do the extra life. We can do that earlier. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It depends on how comfortable you are. Um, we could do this. We can start picking up the minion masteries. I will take the convocation reduced cooldown recovery. The reason for that is to, since most of our gameplay is about convocating our minions on top of enemies, having that approach is very, very comfortable. Um, so as you can see, my auras is getting better. Uh, I will check if I can drop my um, purity of elements and how much we're lacking, sorry. So dropping purity of elements puts me at a point where I'm almost capped in lightning rest. So I will actually completely remove... Where the fuck is it? There. Gone! And now we get their termination, which will increase the armor of me and my minions. So this is the new play. Uh, get some zombies. We do this. And now we are tankier. And uh, that's it. That's, that's what we did. Pretty comfortable, I'd say. Uh, what else are we specking? A little bit more HP, get a little tankier, that could be nice. We have some resistance nodes through barbarism in the tree, so we're gonna go for that as well. Normally it doesn't really matter too much in what order you take the nodes um, outside of the first like 40 levels. Skill tree a bit weird, probably it's possible to save points by going from bottom mini cluster to cluster jewel sockets. Library definitely a time waster. I think it's important for new and newer players to do it because it makes the leveling so much smoother for those players. Uh, but yes, it's definitely a waste of time in, in many cases. But uh, I actually prefer to do it myself on a league launch. Also, if you're doing this a second character, the twin carry you can do in this is insanely cool. What's wrong with the skill tree? So the same point by going from the bottom mini cluster to the cluster jewel sockets. What do you mean? Like here? To so go from bottom minion cluster to cluster jewel sockets. From grave pack? Do you mean like connecting here? We're going to take these nodes. These three comes in later. So you have to take this node either way. And when you're leveling, it's very important that you bomb rush these very early. They're very important. So not going through here delays these nodes by like 15 levels. By going through here instead. You don't, you don't want to do that. And you don't look at trees. Uh, no, I don't. Um, close yet so far away. Oh. That looked fucking juicy. What the fuck? 
Jesus. Might be worth corrupting with a crazy vassal and using a thing to teardrop and try to get plus two. A little crazy for that budget, but yeah. not bad though. Is that all absolution? Yes, it is. Any more dexterity now. Schmack, 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 schmack. <laughs> that is so stupid. Oh my god, man. Keep in mind, we're using a four link right now. Just please remember that. We are not using any twink gear. This is this is just DB. Link starting DB. I have a five link, but we're not using it. We're using a four link. I definitely think like an explodey AD would be really fun to do. Feels like it would be like a really good build like this to do with on as well. This best craft overall. Um, probably. Very likely, that's a nice dead end. Well, I mean, we're at the point where we're just seal charging through the condo right now. That's all we do. That is all we are doing right now. Level 57. Weapon is absolute meme. Oh, this? I don't get anything from this. I can benchcraft increase attack speed and it would even be better than what I'm wearing. I'm gonna use that weapon to like yellow red tier maps easily. Like when I say that this build does not need much at all, if anything, I mean, it will basically need nothing. It's crazy. Absolutely not the Rooney. What we could do with a level is actually uh, give ourselves uh, minion accuracy uh, to give our minions better attack uh, hit chance. We can do that early if you want to. Not really needed, but alleviate some uh, potential misses. I was thinking these big guys, you don't want them to miss. <laughs> Budget head under Vol Dom, yeah, basically. Basically, basically, basically. It's very comfortable to play this build. I think that's the best part about it. It's just super comfortable to play. I think maybe I'll spend some time um, with Dominating Low, see if I can make like some Giga version out of it, just for fun. I think that could be fun to do. Yes, it's so it's so uh, like out of the ordinary kind of a build. You don't see this very often. I know for a fact I can push up a hundred million with this build. If I want to do really nuts, like really nuts, I know that's possible. I wonder how comfortable it would be though. Definitely gonna go pure fist as well, not go poison with it. It does mean that APS Crucible mods will be goated. Here's a tip for the, those of you still levels with me. Look for the corpses. 
that will be an indicator of where you need to go in this area. Like I mentioned earlier in the leveling process, there's a lot of tells and throughout the different areas that you'll encounter that will give you an indicator of where you need to go to progress to the next area. For this build, that would be, or for this area, that would be the um, the corpses. So we're just looking for the doorways that has a corpse right next to it. I can't see there. I don't think there is one. Nothing there. So we're not going to go in. It's a waste of time. Here's a corpse. You saw that? Well, half a corpse, actually. That's a half a corpse, at least. That'll do. Puts this here. Plastic cloud. Woo! She'll stretch right over that. Next area, no corpse there. So we'll check out the right hand side then. I heard currency. I've already left. Here's a corpse right next to that. So that means this should be a straight line. There it is. And now this should be the exit, right? It is. There you go. Easy peasy. You'll learn these things the more you play the campaign. Like, I know what, I know most people, including myself, we don't like the campaign. God damn it, it's so annoying to go through. However, the more you practice it and the faster you get at doing it, you don't have to sit and, you know, explain things like I've done throughout this playthrough and the time I wasted. You can easily, without stressing, without playing a meta build, without racing, pull your game playthrough and do builds like this in three and a half to four hours. And I'm not exaggerating. You can very easily achieve three and a half, four hours, uh, ten act campaign playthroughs by just practicing and getting better at these things. So if you hate doing the campaign, do it more. It might sound weird, but once you've done that, you're gonna spend so little time doing this in the future. Instead of dreading it every time you have to do it. So it definitely is worth the time to do that. To get out of this pain. Normally, when a level character is either, um, I, I mostly just put them with the twin carry and just run through the content much faster than this. But I wanted to showcase this in a low body state, though. Playing three years and never heard about corpse tech. There's there's some pretty cool tech. I can tell you that. There's some really cool tech. Um, there is uh, in the uh, temple, for example, it, it depends where your front foot, if what kind of tile that foot is placed on, will tell you if it's top left, top right, or bottom left, or bottom right. Uh, it's a bit overkill for me. I know it works. It's been confirmed. It's just I don't think I don't think most people even give a shit about it because it's so fucking annoying to learn. Uh, I don't know if it's stronger than the Spectres. Uh, I think that the high budget version can be. Oh, those greens? They're mine. That The poison thing is... Yep. <laughs> That's my Sentinel doing that. Okay. Kind of funny. <laughs> Welcome to the crew line. Well, well, well. Frost583 with a prime sub for two months. Thanks so much, dude. Now you get it so big. Um, My character is practicing to dance, uh, to twerk. And apparently that gets some of my sentinels very big sometimes. Or, you know, you can always just use the vol of dominating blow ability on it. So it is the vol version of the skill. So I'm going to make three big ones here, for example. Best case scenario, you save three charges, you pop it twice, kill, the, kill uh, next to a rare enemy, and then kill the rare enemy, and you get a third one, and then you can get uh, two rares. Playing with content, dude, it's my pleasure, man. I'm just happy people are enjoying it. I can't do this full-time if it wasn't for people like yourself supporting it, so thank you, sir. Dancing fucking dervish. Shit rolls though. Right, I was gonna look at better gear. How about these boots? No. Now I have to start getting into the modifier priority list that is listed in the build guide. 
the written version, of course, and that is, for example, to have proper life rules on all of my gear. I don't have that. That's a shame. That could have been good. Bring me back something nice. Eh? Bring me back something nice. Quarter. Watch yourself. All right, what do we have here? Barbarism. And now I can almost do whatever the fuck I want, actually, with the tree. That's pretty comfortable. Let's uh, let's get big dick defense for our minions. But before that, we go for a cruel prep. And then we go for grave intentions to make them really tanky. Really tanky. So we're going to go on the left-hand side. Schmack, schmack, schmack. Got our minions out. T tree. Dude, I wonder how big a rare proximity shield guy would be, actually. I wonder how big the the, the radius would be on that. That'd be fun to check, actually. There's some of the rares that have a haste aura and stuff like that as well. If you get that, you and your minions will be given the haste. And that's even juicier. Whew. Actually, I think I have a spare Divergent AG we could do some real fun stuff with for this build. So you stacks make the ball dominating blow minions massive. Uh yeah. Imagine, like I said before, if you get it early in a map, you can if you sustain it properly, you can get that to over a thousand minion uh, assaults. And if you do that. You know the good old headhunter stuffs where you were a major character bigger than the entire screen? Uh, don't know Lucky actually. That's a good question. I don't know the answer to that one. Sorry. Um, but you can get him to... You can get your character to be bigger than the screen. And you can do that with, uh, the ball dominating blow as well. So you can have one minion being bigger than anything on the screen. Uh, no, 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 no. Definitely not. No, no, no. You need the tier one attacking caster for the minions. For the poison enemy weapon build. I'm assuming that's the one you're making for. You want the all attributes to all the ROS, but you definitely want the attack speed. Because with 35% scaling, um, what happens is that... Um, what happens is if you have uh, 3% um, damage scaling multiplied by 1.35, that would be... Uh, 3 multiplied by 1.35 is 4.05. Uh, uh, and decimals rounds down. Uh, since decimals rounds down, that gives you 4% APS per node. But if you have a 2%er, 2 times 1.35 is uh, uh, 2.7. Uh, and 2.7 is still rounding down. Which then, which then means uh, that you'll end up in a position where it rounds down to 2%. So you're 2% tier 2 attack speed with a 35 scaling. Nothing happens to it. Whereas the 3% actually gets an additional percent. So a tier 1 versus a tier 2 is twice as big. Walking PUE database? It's, it's simple math. It's the same thing as mind over matter calculations. That's just uh, basic algebra, right? And geometry? 
geometry. I mean, it's, it's just simple things, right? Not geometry, but um, lost the word for it. Uh, but if like if you have 40% mind of a matter, it's not 40% more effective HP. It's, um. 40% mind over matter is 66.67% uh, uh, EHP, for example. That's that's the easy math. Because you take four, 40 divided by 6. It's a 4 divided by 6. That is 0 0.66667. As an example. And the old school mind over matter, which was 30%. Um, the 30% MOM was 3 divided by 7, which was 0 0.4. Two five eight or eight five or something like that. Assuming you could sustain it with that amount of unreserved mana and or energy shield if you had Eldritch Battery. Hello. Uh, uh, sorry, I had something in my throat there. <clears throat> First actual close call if you exclude uh, the two deaths we had. Most people don't like to sit around and calculate when they want to play a game. I just like min-maxing, so I'd rather know the numbers and play in a more optimized way. That's how my build guides are designed as well. Uh, and you get a weapon with a tree that applies all increases dominion to you when using dominion alone? And no. No. Not worth it. Not worth it. Wait, who do I need to talk to? Bargain? Thank you. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. What was I specking? More life nodes. Thank you. What the hell are you doing? My dominating blow bill guy that we have on the website. Type some information guide. Check it out. What I'm doing right now will be uploaded to YouTube in one big ass video for like four or five hours. Five hour long, actually. Yeah, we just broke four hours. Plus, there was a little bit of an intro. So, this is already going to be uh, about a five and a half hour video. It's uh, basically the video will be serving as a purpose to show some tips and tricks and allowing people to play along as I do it. In the start of the video uh, or in the start of the stream, I also started talking about the recommendations for different gear pieces you can do to twink your character leveling if it's not your first character off the league. The massive minions are vol dominating blow minions. They're absolutely fucking cracked, bait. They're insane. Absolutely insane. Watch this guy here. Watch this boss here. Oh, he's dead already. Okay. Wait, why do I have... Now, that is pride. It looks like my talc. I'm getting confused. Well, it looks fun. You can see that. Oh, this is a very fun build to play. Especially with the fact that it requires nothing to get started. That's why it's such a good leak starter. The collaboration I did with Cicerone was actually to promote this specific build because of how insanely effective it is to leak start with for new and newer players. It's really fun to min-max as well because it offers so many different possibilities and outcomes that you can play around with. But this is the build I showcased with um, with Cicerone on the collab we did. But this time, this time, baby, I'm taking it to a whole new level. Time we're taking it to a whole new level, baby. I'm gonna do a higher body version with like, um, very likely explode the AG setup one way or another. I think that would be the play. That would be the play. You have a good night, little thing. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it as always, man. Will blow be better than Spectres? I don't know. I don't know till I'm done with the high body version. I think that Spectres are more comfortable to play in uh, low budget for. Well, actually, no, that's the lie. I think they're pretty both equally uh, equal in terms of play style and efficiency on low budget, even medium budget for that matter. Single target is much more like bosses are much more smoother on specters uh, on the lower and medium body end than Dominion Blow will ever be. 
higher budget, I can't tell till I'm done with it. Because if the numbers are crazy enough, then this could be better than Spectre's yes. But I don't want to say that it is until I've tried it out. Because if I can't get the single target to be good enough, then you see these flower pots? There's two here. There's one here. You go to the side where there's one. Um, so we'll, we'll see. Um, I'll have to double check it though. But the play style is very different. So it kind of depends on it. When you say better... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that I can make the clearing these faster on the Dominion Blow, obviously, with an Explode AT for sure. Definitely think I can do that, and it's cool as fuck to play with. But it's very likely that the Spectres will outperform in terms of um, uh, single targets. At least for the sake of playstyle. It's too early to tell, though. Nah, pure physical is just too good these days. I have a poison variant because a lot of people wanted me to make a poison version, but the pure fist uh, should outperform it, or is outperforming the lower budget, but should in the higher budget as well. You figuring out the specters are good again made Delvers happy? Oh, I bet. I bet. Polyphia, right? Yeah. Nasty. The song is nasty. God damn. Recommend a skelly Medius with five link. I would already already have anomalous faster proj. Well, you would switch your GMP for uh, for the faster proj for single targets. Uh, when you're clearing, you use the GMP, right? Or volley if you're having a lower budget version. Uh, outside of that, that means that you would skip using hyperthermia on the five link. You no longer use uh, the general, the usual Shaper Elder helmet that we used to use for most minion builds. Higher budget is no longer used by any other minion build but Absolution and Zoomancer these days. Can I get a rare guy? Hello? There, thank you. Now we can go do the boss. Skelly Mages viable for everything? Uh, yes, but uh, keep in mind that Skelly Mages are not a meta build. They are perfectly fine to play with. They are performing way better than they used to not long ago. But they are still not meta, so they will definitely not perform as well as Absolution, Zoom, and Spectres, uh, Poison Enemy Weapon, uh, Dominant Blow. These builds will perform better. Not saying that they are bad, because they're definitely not. They're really good. But they're not as good as the other options. But they're at least playable now. I league started with Mage Skeletons because I missed the playstyle. And they did really well. I was farming uh, a high-end game uh, tier 16 maps. And uh, I did uh, the initial end game pinnacle bosses with it in a 5 -way. So that was really comfortable to play, actually. Had a lot of fun with it. As expected. And then I went over to Spectres. And then we went to Poison Enemy Weapon. And now we're doing Dominating Love. Look at these bad boys, dude. Woo! A little bit of speed on him and uh whew. Yeah, damn. Yeah, damn. Level are we now? 61 in blood aqueduct, so we're kind of on par. I like it, I like it, I like it. I'll drop something back there. What was I specking right now? RMR, Grave Intentions. Let's go for the RMR notes then. Actually, let's get the life first and then RMR, I guess. I need to squeeze in a couple of more auras into this. Thorn Vines. Jesus. Wait, is that that guy doing it? Give me that fucking effect, bro. Thank you. Yeah, how does it feel? Giga slowing the enemies now. Suck it. Bonus of Ulr, yep, sir. Don't need that. The clear feels bad in both ways. No, you don't need... You need Pierce. And Pierce is okay to keep. Pierce is okay to keep. It actually has uh, damage increase. 
And for faster, for the returning projectile or anomalous faster prods, you need to pierce, not sniper's mark. You need to pierce. Uh, let's see. We have reached uh, Act 9 in 4 hours and 22 minutes. With the extra time of explaining things. That's pretty good. So you will change volley in the Mace Kelly version to... Um, faster than almost projectile. That is how that is played. This is a local band, actually. Used to party with them many years ago. Back when I was doing music. Yeah, damn. Soil work. Good shit. You need to be weaker and playing your pure spectacle bill. I'm an act say just wanted to ask if you're a good uh, starter in uh, this league or you would recommend playing another. No, it's perfectly fine. Make sure you follow the bill guide. And if you're uh, doing pure spectres with that build, you can actually get them yet very early. Uh, as long as you keep them alive. And that's fine to play with even as early as during the campaign. If you ask somebody in my global channel in games, and if you type slash global 6666, you can ask for the uh, spectres in there, and I'm sure we have plenty of people with them that can share them to you. To get you started. <laughs> Using fast approach and Mace Kelly, only the anomalous version if you have it. Only the anomalous if you have it. Ooh, maybe a new belt? Maybe a new belt? Oh, that is good! <laughs> That's what the French call omelette de dommage. Actually, they don't, because it's just HP, so it's omelette de HP. No, that doesn't sound as good. Uh, oh, there's a suffix open for more reps. Not bad, not bad. No, we don't. Freck, you don't speak on behalf of all the French people, okay? Aren't you French Canadian? Aren't you Canadian? French Canadian, by the way? I'm French and it's omelette du fromage. No, it's not omelette du fromage, okay? It really is. You guys, you guys better pay attention. Okay? This is very simple. Very simple. No, it's it's d d it's a damash. Damash. I I. I I know fromage is cheese, okay? Je parle petit français. Je préfère l'anglais, okay? So it's it's still omelette a dommage, okay? That's what it is. C'est c'est ce que je je dis que how do you fucking say that? C'est c'est ce que je dis que c'est or something like that. It is what I say it is. It is what I say it is. My French is shit, though. Says, Fuck, how do you say it? Says, says, okay. I don't even know how to say it. Sorry. Aren't you French Canadian, Freck? Doesn't count. Okay. I live closer to true France than you do. Okay. Exactly. You're, you're, that's that's not that's not true French man. That's French Canadian. Big difference. Takes me two hours with a plane to get to fucking Paris, man. Two hours. Down so low. Do, do, do. Where the fuck is this fucking blade? I could drive there in that time. I don't know how fast, how long it would take me to drive there, actually. I live in uh, southern Sweden, though, so I would have to take the ferry down to Germany, I guess. And then drive through Germany over. Might not take that long to drive, actually. 
it takes me an hour to get to the airport from here so that should take me about three hours from where i am right now of just act active traveling time for three hours to get to paris probably less a whip and an autobahn that's true that's true that's actually true here we don't just speak the language we also have a brain wow wow dude yo freck i i did tell you before that we're being nice today okay this entire shit's going up on youtube Mount a bridge to Denmark, then drive to Paris. But how long would it take to drive to Paris from um, from Malmo, Zodiac? Because it takes me about Have you ever heard 50 minutes to drive to Malmo, approximately. Be careful. Approximately. Pass through an RV Autobahn, isn't that great there? That's out of my expertise. Oh, I forgot to pick up the quest item. Google says 15 hours. Wait, 15 hours drive? No, we're no, no, no. If I'm going to Paris, I'm taking the plane. I'm not driving for 15 fucking hours, man. It's like two blitzkriegs past the um, past the German border. What the fuck? Okay, boys, y'all need to, y'all need to, uh, you know, tone it down just a couple of notches here now, okay? Jesus, man. <laughs> and demonetized, yeah. This is just going up on YouTube, man. All of it. I'm not going to ask Kikis to edit away fucking five hours of contents now so it's all going up on youtube so people can play along and they get to see how the stream works and they get to experience you guys for some reason that's 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 the scary parts coiled wand what that's a lot of them where were they on the launch well they didn't exist for me then evidently you know how to make it to Stockholm from Dortmund in 48 hours on bike? That depends. I can sit on a bike and then attach the bike at the back of a car. I can still sit on the bike. But it's gonna go it's gonna take me like five and a half, six hours. Assuming I can hang on. That's faster than twenty four hours. Or forty eight hours, I'm just saying. Way faster. The bike have an engine? No. But it doesn't need to because it would be attached to the car. Why would I need an engine for that? That that makes no sense. There's no way your ass will survive 20 hours? No. Okay. This this is this is the problem, Frank. You're not listening. You're not listening. I would I would paint it in paint for you, but I'm busy trying to get this video out for the people that needs to see this to how to level this build up in a comfortable way. I would sit on my ass on the bike, but the bike would be attached to the car. The wheels wouldn't even need to touch the fucking ground. And then it would take me five and a half or six hours with the pedal to the metal. But about six and a half hours if you want to drive legally. I mean, you should you should drive legally. Don't don't speed. That's 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 not good for you. Okay. Ay ay ay! There we go. It's dead. Thirty-seven hours drive from Finland to France. Jesus Christ! Who in his right mind would do that, though? You, you killed. That sounds insane. I still haven't taken these life notes, or these extra notes to deepens, or the jewels, or the block notes here. 
Let's get the RMR and then we'll go Grave Intentions. <sighs> For a chill playthrough, this is actually going pretty well. Still six Sombroni, so that's fine. Don't want to miss a thing. Foothills. Late to the party, can you tell me how SRS got nerfed this Lee? Nerfed? Um, they made breaches a higher level and therefore much rarer. So getting united or severed is harder to get. That, I guess that would be the nerf. There's still more than a fine. You can use uh, severed and use uh, poison on uh, hit jewels instead to compensate and uh, use a chance to poison support and still pull it up without spending a ton of currency to make it happen. So it's not really a really not a problem. I'll be honest. Really isn't a problem. If you want to check out the the Poison SRS build made by Baller Mage, I have written the uh, I've made the written version for his guide. All you need to do is type exclamation mark guide to check it out if you want to do it. That would be the best uh, Poison SRS build in my opinion available. I do have to update the high budget PUB in there as well and talk about the severed variant so i'll be checking that out in the coming days as well because i haven't updated that baller made a video on it do check that out as well but the written guide service is a good purpose for the low budget styles so if you haven't checked it out already do so all of my guides are always available in that is it aerosmith for listening to yes it is this is aerosmith in diddy Oh, that sounds good. Uh, how's the... Man, maybe I should get something to eat. Right. I. By the way, for those of you who missed it, we have a schedule change on the stream uh, that we're trying out from today and forward. Uh, since Hannah got uh, postpartum depression after the birth, which is... I don't know what's happening. She She's at her parents' place. She's getting professional health for it. Apparently, it's a common thing after giving birth to be depressed. But I don't know. It's way beyond my uh, experiences. So, it's my lucky day. Jesus Christ. That happened, at least. So she's not home. So um, we'll see how my stream start will be tomorrow. Because I, after the stream, what I do is I drive over to uh, her parents' place to spend time with my family. But the schedule change normally would mean that I will only have late streams uh, on Sundays and Wednesdays. So tomorrow, the schedule is to be live at, at 1,500 hours CEST, like we normally have on the day streams. So that'll be four times a week and two late streams. So that's the schedule change. This is all in the Discord server, by the way, in the schedule channel. So do check that out. I just want to point it out because normally I'd be live in the evening tomorrow, but I won't be. I'll be live in the afternoon instead. European time. Oh, she'll be all right. Thank you. Yeah, me too. It's... Luckily, we have uh, her parents are amazing, so um, she's staying with them, so she has company 24-7, because yeah. she's on parental leave. Uh, I am not. I, uh, I've i got uh, things I gotta get done, especially during league launches. So, uh, But I do want to spend time with my daughter, obviously, so um, I'm going to go there tonight, spend a couple hours with her, then go home and sleep. And since I am doing that, and... <laughs> Not gonna get much sleep now, am I? We'll uh, we'll see how we do it. I'll keep you guys posted if there's gonna be any delays, obviously. Plus, um, we have an appointment tomorrow morning, actually, as well. We'll find out. I'll find out how how it's gonna go one way or another. It'll be fine. Just want to point out that the schedule change has been made, though. I'm gonna craft my cluster. Uh, no, I'm not crafting clusters. Nope. 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 Fuck that. Go buy them instead. Fuck crafting clusters roots. I ain't doing that shit. Like, well, I wouldn't even craft them for cock yet. I literally wouldn't even craft them for that. 
We need some bonding time. The fuck? Or I have my family to deal with the postpartum. Now. Thank you, by the way. <clears throat> Your low and mid mage Skelly do well end game boss without swap gems and six link. Uh, it can be, but I would rather do the swap for high end game single target. Like, you'd never switch for bossing in maps. You only do it versus, like, the big bosses, like Uber Elder Shape or Eater World, Zelda, Searing Exarch, Maven, Cortex. Like, those bosses, you would actually bother switching that one gem. It's one gem, by the way. That's the only fight you would bother doing it in. So, it's really not that big of a deal. It's similar with this build. For this build, for those bosses, you switch Splash for Multi Strike. It's the same thing. But it's only versus those bosses. Everything else, fuck it. Just use Splash. You don't need that much damage versus those. Schmack. Schmack. Dun, 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 dun. God damn, these guys are big dude. Oops, wrong way. I was gonna do the Boston. Hello. Hello. King of Rock. Dio? This is Dio, right? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I saw him live, actually, many years ago, the year before he passed. But he was playing with um, Black Sabbath. Um, Heaven and Hell was the band. It was basically Black Sabbath minus all C plus Dio. That was really cool. That was an awesome experience. That's incredible, you know, or was, but yeah. Look at these big fuckers, man. Pew, 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 pew. I ain't fucking moving, man. I don't want to fight a move from this storm. My dude just have to learn how to tank it. That's right. That's right. Welcome to the Kisnar with the 14 months primal. Thanks so much for support, man. Appreciate that, dude. Thank you, thank you. I can help. So many subs. 2.7 thousand subscribers. Whoosh. We are trying to break sub records of this channel, by the way. You know what's funny? We reached a new record on uh, the written. Uh, oh, my bill guides, by the way. My bill guides, this Lee launch, has millions. <laughs> That's plural. Millions of views. And it's only been, what? Three weeks. So gazzy, Insane. You owe me a candlelight dinner. Thank you so much, Chris. Falling for the 76 months. Uh, yeah, about that. Well, we'll have to do a rain check on that one. Millions. It's pretty crazy, actually. Let's get that accuracy in here just in case, actually. Um, it's pretty insane. And we also... We also... Uh, broke that record is both for YouTube and on the written guides actually it's insane I guess be evolved uh, as a good manager. I mean if you should do with the fact that he's a dick. Yeah, he's pretty good at his, at his job though Sorry roots And we are literally 8,000 followers away on the twitch stream to reach a hundred K it's insane. And we're pretty close on YouTube as well. And that's, I don't know what's happening. You guys are crazy. So the only thing we haven't broken records on already, and it's, it's what, 10 more days of this month, is Twitch subscribers. So that's why we're pushing it. We're lacking uh, like 1.5k subs or something. We need to hit 
No, more than that. Sorry. Um, more than that. Sorry. I can't count. Math is hard. I do like to do a, you know, a little bit of quick math, though, but math is hard. Um, bro, I was reading the chat. All right. <laughs> Quest for <laughs> jumping in. Five gears, man. Thank you so much, dude. I appreciate that, man. We had a, the record we broke last time was um, 5,041 back in August 2022. That was insane. We'll see if we uh, if that happens. It's only 10 days left, though. I got hit by a corpse explosion from the spider. That shit hurts. You'll see uh, these red beams, those things. That's the ones that exploded the corpses. I was standing in them whilst I was reading chats. That's why I died. Like a stupid noob. But it happens. It happens. We're just chilling. This is supposed to be a chill, loving experience. And I think we have achieved that. So I am very happy with the performance so far. We're not racing or anything. We're just having a good time. New to POE. Definitely new to POE, yes. I've only played this for a little bit. Just started learning it. Seems like a good game. Seems like a good game. Seems pretty alright. You know. Seems to be very good for casual players. You know these big dudes? Uh, my siblings. Now nah, it's the evolved version of the dominating blow. <laughs> Got a great armor base for respectable. Is it necessary to switch ES still, or would you say going surrender instead of ES be viable? If you're going for the big dick version, that one is designed entirely of going CI. Uh, if you, you can stay alive, there's no problems with staying alive. But it will be a different version of the build, obviously. If you follow my high body build guides, as my POVs for those, just keep in mind that just because I've promoted and are displaying a build in a certain way, that doesn't mean that that is the only way you can play it. So look at my guides more as guidelines. If you want to make some changes that fits your personal playstyle or preference better, just make the change. Test it out. If it's shit, you always have something to fall back on, right? If it's good, well, there you go. You just won the game. You just made something that is better for you than what I was showing you. My shit will work. And it's performing. Doesn't mean that it is the best for you to play. Keep in mind that Path of Exile is an ARPG. And ARPG games are expecting you to do the same thing over and over and over and over again. Expecting a different result, which is the very definition of insanity. And if you're doing that, make sure at least you have a good time whilst you're doing the shit. Path of Exile is already really good at distracting you from the fact that it is an ARPG game. With all the extra mechanics you can do. So it feels different it doesn't feel like you're endlessly grinding is that when you start feeling that that's when you start getting bored of the, of the league and you come back next week instead and if you make sure that whatever build you decide to play is enjoyable to farm with then you won't really notice that you're doing the same thing over and over again that's what separates path of exile from the other competitors in in the rpg genre right now genre that's a great perspective to each to their own in the end. That's just my, my side of things. My two cents of the topic. Fuck is this piece of now? Three doors down. Fleetwood Mac. Slipknot. Now we're talking. Ah, oh, dude. I've been so hooked on uh, Bring Me the Horizons. Uh, latest album. No, not latest album. It's, too, it's old now. Jesus. When did that come out, actually? Let's see if I can find it. Oh, I had it up already. 2013? Oh my god. Bring Me the Horizon Semp Eternal album is 10 years old. 10 years. In Azkaban. No, not really, but Jesus Christ, 10 years? Man, I was hooking this shit up on an IV and pouring it into my veins when I went to school, man. Holy shit. It's already been 10 years. Fuck. There. Take this one. Hello? Can you open? Oh, there's one more. Sorry. 
You were born in the late 1900s? Yes. I am... Uh, I'm born 91, so I am 32? Yeah, 32. My birthday is the day after my daughter was born, so... Pretty, pretty cool gift I got this year. 91, yeah. The fucking ancient. You don't have to feel ancient. Roots is in the channel. He's 196 years old, man. Jesus Christ. Roots in the channel sent his grandson into the First World War. Okay. You don't have to feel ancient when he's around. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Roots the lich. <laughs> Ah, uh, man, age is just a fucking number. People give it way too much fucking uh, weight in their lives. Boom! Smack him! Smack! I said smack! Harder! Faster! Scooter! Let's get the RMR then, I guess. Have we done a uh, pure frost bearers build this league? I am the one who made the build. I'm the one who made the build that everyone's playing for frost bearers. Fruit snacks. So the answer is yes. Yes, I did. I was the one who brought it back to the game. Did you play it? Yes. YouTube guide up and everything and I re oh. rekindled my written guide for it and everything. To you. I don't know what else to say, man. No man. What else am I supposed to say? Isn't there well? No? <laughs> yes, I did. It's all there, man. Fox a Rooney with a Raid Rooney. What's up, man? How you doing, dude? I am uh, making a five hour long YouTube video right now. How you doing? We're doing a play with me playthrough, uh, more of a casual approach of the dominating blow. We have done it, uh, we've been pausing and showing things every now and then, 4 hour 50 minutes. So we're going to land on about a little over 5 hours uh, playthrough for this, with all the information included. 5 hour long video! So we're not going to edit it, let me just put it that way. There's not going to be much edit at all. I might have like a little bit of a... Um, Quick recap at the end, I guess. A little talk about it kind of thing. How you doing, man? How's the uh, how's the righteous fire side of things? And how are you enjoying the league so far, by the way? This may anyway, the present live my desecrated corpse is doing as an effect the life my specters still have. Nope. Corpses has nothing to do. The life of your corpse has, has no impact on uh, the specters that you're summoning. Are going well? As expected. As expected. League is okay. I'd definitely like to see them expand more crucible. Uh, I feel you on that. I really hope they make this core though, because I think I think this uh, mechanic is great for the game. I really do. It's amazing. Just not as a standalone league mechanic in the way they have it right now. But God damn. No incentives to do anything in the geodes at all either, which is also fucking weird. You open it up, you run past everything, and that's it. We're gonna get tab out Act 9, so also have a base skeletons. Uh sure. Absolutely. We'll see a problem with that. Master God for sure. But it's like to me, I know they play tested things, right? But they must have received the feedback from the playtester saying, Hello? Uh, there's no point in killing these things other than listening to Optimus Prime talk shit to me whilst I run through this gauntlet of nothing and then click on the little thingy and then leave the map. Ah, no. XP? They don't even give any shit, dude. Three and a half seconds in a tier 16 map is more experience than that entire map. 
You have a good one, man. Thanks for reading, dude. I'll talk to you later. They do now? Oh, they changed it? Hallelujah. They give experience. So the problem with giving experience is that most new and newer players, they either reach uh, level 100, which is the vast minority of people, or they reach a point where they take such a long time for them to level that they are going to die and losing more experience than they gain for their time invested. That is the most common things that happens for new and newer players. So to give them experience in the maps means that that will only be beneficial up till they've reached that point where they're just not going to level anymore. That's why my build guys stop at level 92. Because after that, you might actually have to think about making sure you don't die. And most new and newer players, they are not going to be able to do that reliably enough so I can have a guy that goes above that level. And that's actually why my guy stops at 92. Because it's a very reasonable and fast uh, stage, if you will. 93, 94 is kind of slow. 95 plus is a shit show. Most people do five-way carries and shit for experience in the end. Come on, let's go, boys. Big boys. All right, you don't have to stand inside the beam, okay? Six arms still. Play with three years and just hit 95 for the first time. Well, there you have it. There you have it. Is this a guardian? Absolutely not. Necromancers are just way more stable and reliable for these type of defensive layers than uh, the guardian will ever have. Guardian have a pending buff similar to the pendulum uh, sentence you note till they finally really re rework that note from the element. This is awful. Oh, Where's the master line of disc? I don't even remember. They reworked those. There is a couple still in the game. Uh, basically, the uh, the block is not always capped, and then there it is for a few seconds, and then it's not capped anymore. And if you play a necromancer, the shit's gonna be capped. Okay, you have reliable, trustworthy defensive layers. You don't have that in the Guardian. <clears throat> now that the I've hit 100 a couple of times, but it's like, at some point, it's just no point. Like, you get such little benefit from it, and if you're playing a bunch of different builds, it can't be ours too. I've accidentally hit it with a couple of builds, actually, because of how tanky they are. So the more you farm, the more experience you get, right? That's a good feeling. Should I go Sanctum of Thoughts? Uh, 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 no. 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 Let's go Grave Intentions for the minion survivability, actually. We're almost done, actually. I'm just gonna go to the chamber for the innocent fight, and then uh, Kitava, and we're done. That would be the entire playthrough of this character. No bad at all, actually. No bad, no bad, no bad. Comfortable. Alright. I gotta change the music though. God damn it. Uh, how about this one? Sam Paternal album, actually. Good one. What else do we have? Empire, let them sing. House of Wolves. Oh. Good shit, good shit. Alright, let's pick up the waypoint and uh, see how it goes. For those of you who missed it, I'll, I'll say this again since we got raided by Pox. Welcome in, everybody. We are currently doing a Dominating Blow playthrough where I'm doing giga low budget. Um, the only thing I took was a Vol Dominating skill because I wanted to test the Vol Domination. Uh, pretty juicy, I'd say. It's fun as fuck. Uh, but outside of that, everything is soul self on bullshit on the ground. Uh, the playthrough, I've been uh, giving a lot of tips and tricks uh, along the way. I kind of slowed down on it uh, as we got further into the campaign because the only thing you're doing this late in the campaign is literally nothing you're just shield charging and convocation and just hitting things it's not much to say um that's it like it's just a small small things there's more tips to go through in the early stages of the campaign though 
Um, outside of that, we will stop this at, at one, once we kill the Kitava Act 10, and then I will do like a TLDR recap, and then all of that, and everything you're watching right now, even me talking about this right now, will be uploaded to YouTube. That's, that's basically what I'm doing. Uh, and if you think that I look really tired and exhausted, that is because I am. I recently became a father. And sadly, uh, that is uh, extremely energy consuming. And uh, sadly, my fiance, she ended up with postpartum depression, which is apparently really common. So she is currently with her at her parents' place with um, our daughter. So I don't get to sleep much because every time I'm done with the stream, I, uh, I go over there, spend some time with them, and then I come home to sleep. So it's, uh, it's just uh, kind of rough right now. Let me just say it that way. It's kind of rough. So if I'm grumpy or if I'm tired, that's why. Okay, that is the reason. That is the reason. It's it's really common apparently. So uh, she's uh, she's getting professional help for it. I have no idea. I have no experience with it. I've never heard of it before. Guess I'm a man. <laughs> I guess. So I have no fucking idea. But um, hopefully soon th things will get better sooner rather than later. That's really rough. It is what it is. I'm, I'm like the kind of guy that, you know, if you can do something about something, then you do it. Like I myself, I, I have a uh, manic depression, which is that these days called uh, bipolar. I have an uh, undefined bipolar, as it's called. And um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm very vocal and open about uh, mental health issues. And I've never heard of postpartum depression. Never heard of it. But apparently it's common. So, yeah. If I can't do anything about it, it's not, like... There's not much to say. Uh, but in these situations, there is professional help, right? Um, but she's getting that, so she can't do more than she's already done. So now it's just a work in progress to get better, right? So I can't do anything. That's it. So here we are. Hey, Mr. Deep Sog dropping in a 10 bomb in the channel. Holy shit. Jesus Christ. So many subs, dude. How many do we have right now? 2.7 thousand subscribers. Absolutely insane. Someone do math for me. Not meth, because that's bad for you, okay? Someone do math for me. The record of subscribers was that we've had on this channel was 5,041. How many subs away from that are we right now? Because we currently have... It hasn't updated on screen right now. It is 2,707 subscribers right now. How many do we need? Well, actually, we need to, we need to hit 5,042 to break the record. Now, it's not halfway. 2.7 times 2, uh, times 2 is like 5.4. That's, that's, that's 400 more than we need. Two thousand three hundred and thirty-four in ten days. Five point four. No, five thousand and forty-one. To break the record, we need to have five thousand and forty-two subscribers during this month because the subs shows the amount of subs we've had for the last thirty days. Pretty cool, actually. Two thousand three hundred thirty-five. You guys think we can hit that in ten days? That seems a bit crazy. Yeah, even Roost dropped in a family, yeah. Jesus Christ. Might be a little bit too much for us to handle, though. That's a lot of subs in 10 days. Let's wait for PV2 and Rangers with Lynx pets, all new ROMs and minion builds to get more subscribers. Rangers? Wait, what are we? Rangers with Lynx pets? That would be something. Don't forget the werewolves. That'd be fun, dude. The Exalcon's coming up around the corner as well, right? It's like once in a blue moon. <laughs> wow. My heart rate went up. Didn't your doesn't your heart rate go up by, just by standing up there? It's... You know, I've pitched the idea to uh, to Chris Wilson and Bex. Uh, that I would like to have a uh, minion panel at Exalcon where I interview the appropriate dev or devs uh, regarding minions such as PvE2. 
The only answer I gotten was that it was too soon to plan it, but uh, they they said they'd get back. To it. They haven't, and Nexacon's pretty soon, so I have no idea what's happening. Langolier with the two months primal. Well, thank you so much for support, man. Appreciate that, dude. Dude, it's your ranger, the Rue Ascendancy. It better have a cat as a pet. I'm just saying. It better have a cat in that case. If Rue's gonna play it, it needs a cat, okay? Let's get the big boys out. Hello. I like how they step out of like a big ass fucking gate when you summon them. It's actually looking really cool. I do like that. I hope we can see minion damage DPS in the game. Uh, I don't think that will ever happen, actually. I really don't think that will ever happen. You have to keep in mind that PUE 2 is not a separate new game. It is the same game with a massive change in graphics and mechanics like sockets and links going away into the gems and stuff like that like massive changes but it's the same game literally the same game with a separate campaign that is what's happening and that's great that's great it's not that's not that's not a bad thing but it also means that maybe you shouldn't expect to see minion damage numbers in game or target dummy because it, if it's not gonna happen in period one I seriously doubt that they will just change their minds all of a sudden for PUE 2. But, you know, crazier things have happened. Like Roos. So not Roos. Like Roots. Roots still being alive at 194 years old. So, I mean, it's pretty nuts. Pretty nuts. Actually, I'll take that back. Them including DPS numbers accurately for minions in game is crazier than that. So, no, I haven't seen crazy things happen, actually. I'll take it back. I'll Wait, is this region or something? What's wrong with you? It's the Soul Eater! Give me! I need to kill this guy. I need to test it. Come here! Come here. I'm out of flash charges. Give it to me. No, no, no. Don't die now. Don't die now. Don't die now. Give me the vol skills so I can make you big. No, that's a rare. Don't kill the rare. Please don't kill the rare. I need to make him big before he... Ah, give me souls! Anyone! No, he's... He's taking my souls, the motherfucker! That's a rare... No! <laughs> no, I needed my charge first! God damn it! He's taking my souls! Did I get him? Please tell me I got him. No, I didn't get him. God damn it. What's happening? Okay, so the thing is, if you get a soul eater, if you get a soul eater and then you make him big, he lasts for a longer time and you can refresh him. Hey. Okay. You can literally refresh his ass. That means you can have a soul eater vol this. sentinel active for a very long time you don't use behead support uh, i've been thinking about using it when you have the vol version i don't think it's worth using on the non-vol version uh, i think it would be nice to have instead of um instead of uh, ruthless for example which would be a sixth link i think that would be really nice for the sake of clearing that is for the sake of clearing. At least in my opinion. Is it confirmed that uh, the behead will work for them though? 
I should never double check that if that would work. Is that confirmed? I'm assuming it would. And it tips for dark pact. Uh, make sure you read the, and follow the build guide. It would be the best tip I can give you. It is likely that behead does not work. No, always try it. I think it would be more of a high-end thing, though. I don't think I'd have that as a recommendation in the build guide in general. I really don't think I would do that. For high end, absolutely would be um, interesting to to include for sure. What bill is this? This is dominating blow. Dominating blow. The problem with Behead, though, is that it only yields extra damage versus enemies that are on um, low life, right? So that does present us with a similar approach to um, um, the punishment question when it comes to Mate Scout, for example. It's the same thing there. So it is worth something in the ballpark of like 30% damage or something. But if you look at like Ruthless, 49, yeah. So Ruthless, for example, uh, has a, uh, the Ruthless Blow is 98% more melee damage. And that's every third attack. And you're multi-striking it. So 3.17 APS. That's once every second they will do that. But I guess, I mean, you get melee strike range. Maybe melee the behead would be better than Ruthless. I mean, I, I, this is 3.1. If I take that away and I check this box, that's 3.5. The problem is that the damage would be 2225, 0, 12.5, plus. That's way too much. Hold on. 2225012.5 plus 3492584.5 divided by 2. So that's an average of 2.9, 2.8 million. Uh, whereas Ruthless would just be, um, Ruthless would just be, uh, more stable damage output. No, I definitely think that I would keep this as a, um, I would keep it, uh, as a, uh, the way it is. But for higher body versions and we go crazy with it, absolutely we can, uh, look into it. For sure. Pox already left, Ruth, sorry. You he already Good left, diamond. mates. Good tidings to you. A daddy innocence maps Luigi made of all version LV and ruthless. He destroys everything. Oh, I bet. I bet. Oh, we're done actually. We're done. So, uh, five hours and eight minutes uh, to do a non meta leveling of minions uh, from Act 1 all the way to Act 10. Did I get everything? Oh, oh I'm getting that. Indomitable spirits. Oh, no. I missed. Okay. So I missed uh, one thing. I missed uh, the spirit in the mines in Act 4. I actually completely missed that. Uh, all right. Uh, that's fine. Uh, I guess we're going to get two skill points from this. And that's 23. And we get a 24th from the spirit that I forgot to pick up. Uh, so five hours. And we did spend some time going through uh, the stuffs. I want to do a quick recap TLDR uh, of what we've done and uh, I'm guessing most of you guys who did this uh, playing along with this video or here on stream if you guys use leveling gear I guess you guys already done uh, this was the physical version of the build guide uh, there's a poison variant low budget as well but I did the fist version uh, and if we look at the skill trees the uh, early stage we had a holy flame totem decoy in the first act we used the frost blink and later flame dash and um like that, sorry. Uh, and then what we did was we used Summer Rain Spirits with Infernal Legion Minion Damage. And then we used, free, before that, we had Freezing Pulse, Arc Insurgent, and Frost Bomb. And then in Act 2, we were using Absolution Minion Damage, and we had added Lightning. But first, we had the Phantasm support. Then we had a Flame Dash, and we had Herald of Purity with similar Skitterbots. And we used this for quite some time. And then we added 
uh, we added zombies with our Vitality Aura in the early stage, and later we turned off Vitality Aura thanks to the Sacrifice Notes. Um, so we did use that. And then we moved over to Dominating Blow from Act 3. In the build guide, it's recommended to just literally stick to Absolution. That's why we said in Act 3, when you do the Library Quest, you can get yourself Physical Lightning. And getting an Absolution and leveling with that is just way better than using um, a summon, uh, the Vault Domination. However, I prefer to play with the ability that I'm supposed to use in the end game. That's why we did this test. So the playthrough we've done on this, this video, we went over to a four link uh, domination. And we only went over to this uh, when we had a four link. So I waited till I've reached that. And then I switched to the Vault Domination. And we used a melee splash. We never ever switched this to multi-strike, which you can do for extra single target damage output. And I kept a minion damage support and a melee physical support. Now, we accidentally found a five link, but we only used four links. The other auras we did was that during the act six, when we first killed the first, the initial step of the Kitava was that we lost a lot of resistances. So we used the purity of elements with the help of the aura reservation nodes. And not this, but actually only these here. And we did that till we could spec our way down through the discipline and training to get all the way around here to pick up the sanctuary. Once we had these nodes, uh, the gear we had was enough, thanks to the Commander Darkness and the gear pieces, to switch away from the Purity of Elements so we could start using Determination. Now, at the end of the tree here, I actually managed to move myself towards Grave Intentions. We're level 67, and I did pick up more Reservation Mastery, which means that if I go to my hideout, we can clearly see that I have quite a lot of mana left over. But as I mentioned before, it's very tricky to make sure you have enough mana to play with this. So we have 290 mana unreserved, and every time I attack, it actually is regening more than I'm spending right now. But if you go into a 5 or 6 link later, that might be not be the case. But right now, I could add the remaining auras that I'm lacking. Because as you progress like this, you will start to mix and match the auras and, and the gear links that you're using for the end game as early as Act 4, Act 5. So if I look at my end game, I could start using a level 1 precision. I could have a, a Tempest Shield running. I could even look into... Uh, running something like um, a Defiance Banner if I wanted to. Uh, that is currently not in this version, though. Um, so I could use that uh, the Tempest Shield, get some more block. I could have changed into Bone Offering later, but that's not something I would care about until you pick up the Mistress of Sacrifice. All of this is in the written guide, of course, more in detail. I just wanted to show you the leveling process that I went through and how it felt to play uh, with absolutely no gear. We used a Stone Golem the entirety of the process just to get that extra life region as a layer of defense it's just been really comfortable to play this build and uh, i like it but i don't want to prolong this video this was a play with me kind of approach with leveling the campaign act one to ten all the links for the build guides anime guardian guides and everything you'll ever find is linked in the guide hub in the descriptions below so do check that out if you like this type of video i know it's a five hour fucking long video insane if you watched all of it let me know in the comments down below how you like it. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more content. I'll catch you guys in the next one. So till then, stay safe and keep rocking.